I feel like you've probably answered this before, but it was some random thought. Have you seen Team America rags? I can't remember what you said about that. Oh, well, wait. Ask me when we're live so that the people get to we are. know the... Oh, my goodness gracious. That's a good thing, because I was going to say something really r questionable. What was the question? Have you seen Team America? Will Police? No, no, no. I That's haven't. That's going to be in EFAP movies for the ages, I think. I, I think I, you know, yeah, I'd like to see before. it. It's because I'm always shocked, so I never want to jump into it without realizing. It is stuff. shocking. It is. Springy. You, what? Speaking of things that we've talked about before, I'm going to show you a meme, and the meme perturbed me. It upset me a bit. Mm. And I think you'll be able to find out why this th this meme um, it kind of kind of upset me a little bit. Ah, uh, yeah, it's the Tom Nook bit, right? Yeah, that, I I don't like it. I don't. That's not fair. I, I, I interest free loans. <laughs> I, I Tom Nook <laughs> is a hero, and I don't enjoy having Mister Nook's name slandered he like just, this. He, he is essentially responsible for building the community that you become a part of in Animal Crossing. Tom Nook <laughs> offers you interest-free loans that are basically you don't have to pay back if you don't want no, to. You don't. If you don't want to there's, make a house, but if you there's want to make no a house. collateral if you don't pay them back. You know, you don't have to offer anything at all whatsoever. Uh, so he does all this stuff overnight while you're sleeping, doesn't even bug you, and boom. Massive home renovations completed for you, and oh, yeah, damn. it's it's overnight. Yeah, mm -hmm. you go to bed, you wake up, boom, it's done. You didn't even know. And he, I I believe he raises his two um, nephews, right? Uh, and he have yeah, two... I mean, he, yeah, and they help him in his shop, and then it gets bigger and bigger. Is because that's the thing that as people say, is like, ah, see that look at that look at that capitalism on display there as he builds this bigger uh bigger um shopping way, center it's like yeah but doom guy would not doom guy would not be in a position where he would have enraged tom nook to this degree not that tom nook would ever do this but that would really? never happen doom guy would be working no, real hard to earn the place that he gotten uh, as an opportunity to i think so. doom guy would appreciate so, yeah. yeah what uh tom these two would be friends you know, they, you know, they've they got Master that. Chief and Doom Guy being like, ah, oh, you Doom son Guy's of a bitch. A hero. Fun. It's like, yeah, that would be Tom hero. Nook as well. They'd be shaking hands. Like, okay. You're a legend in these parts, you know? <laughs> They're both defenders of the community, just yeah. in different ways. I'm just imagining that the way that it works is it's the same shot from the movie, and it's Tom Nook just looking like Tom Nook, but then when it cuts to the handshake, all of a sudden he's muscular. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's got a real head instead of like, I don't know, Ugh. I guess like a nub. Yeah, the otherwise, power I like the hand, meme. Yeah. I like the yeah, meme. Otherwise it's a, it's yeah, it's a nice meme otherwise, but the, yeah. Yeah, but the, the, the Tom Nook slander really drags the, drags the vibe down, drags it's the meme down. Stop. Interest free it stop. When One of the best things that could ever happen to you in your Animal Crossing village is when Tom Nook's store gets upgraded because you've patronized him enough, and you now have more things to buy, right? You have a larger selection of things that he offers you now. It's one of the best things. He goes from like a little wooden shack to like a proper store with little he's got his, he, he goes from having like a uniform uh, or, or like he starts like with an apron and then he ends up getting a uniform and his nephew start helping out and it becomes like a family business and yes. Yeah, well, even in, uh, in, in New Horizons, he creates like a little company for, you know, setting up the uh, the town on the island. OK, he's a very okay. industrious, hardworking man. And That's I'm tired, right. He is I'm tired of the hate. He As is the be. one of the greatest Tanuki slash raccoons in gaming history. It's one kind of, of a people. funny thing of like, oh, he's a Tanuki or a raccoon. They're not the same. <laughs> Depend. Yeah, it depends on where you're. Uh, where where you buy the game. Mm -hmm. the he's he's a he's he's a fluid species. You know. So massive. So, what are we talking about today, Mahler? Well, this is no big spoiler to chat if they watch any other shows that I'm a part of. Uh, we're talking about a movie that uh, there was some level, some significant level of anticipation for. It is um, sort of a capstone to several other films that I happen to care a lot about, as does, uh, I know, Fringy Rags probably to a lesser degree, but still somewhat, right? You, uh, Yeah. You know, I, I can't remember your familiarity with the Fox universe exactly. I know you've seen several, but... Um, I you think know. I've seen all but one. I think I've seen all but one. Dark Phoenix is the one I didn't see. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't see that one. But I don't think anyone did. So um, there, there you go. 
I was I've been told it's not required viewing for anything, really. Well, uh this one this one popped out after a few trailers and uh the the hopes of what it may or may not be were uh, revealed to the world and my god, yeah. it's doing wonderfully what? in the box office and critically to a degree. I guess it depends huh. on exactly what you're looking for in terms of good results. Um, but uh, revitalizing somewhat a dying corpse that is the uh, the MCU to an ex I mean, you know, most people's commentary is it won't make a single difference, but in some ways it makes all the difference because of the future of the MCU and um, what what will be taken as a result of this film being incredibly just just successful, financially viable. Be watchable, engaged with, memeable, appealing to every last thing everyone truly, 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 truly wants. Yeah, sounds great. Um, I uh, I wasn't as fond of it as as most people. Oh my uh, yeah, Why shocking. Why do you like things? I don't know. Everything I hate, which is funny because we're currently experiencing some. Uh, uh, heat for liking House of the Dragon <laughs> when that's getting uh, blasted. But House by... of the Dragon's good. I, I agree. I do think it's good also. The next episode of that is recorded and will be out Wednesday for those concerned. And uh, the last one will be recorded probably the same day, offline, because we will. Uh, the last episode will be out by then. For those curious about the coverage of that. Though for this... Uh, I've managed to, on some streams, express some uh, d difficulties, disdain for some of the choices in this film, and I suppose today we're going to spend the next however many hours with you, chat, you precious, wonderful people, explaining exactly how we came to feel whatever it is that we felt. Should not be a spoiler that um, Fringy and, and Rags were not pleased with this film either you guys may choose your own words i suppose to describe it but i was just i gonna... uh i was i was disappointed i uh <laughs> i actually i really like the first two deadpool movies i really like them uh the first one in particular i think it's a really entertaining movie and also a really strong movie um like that they made they made a lot of really um good decisions in terms of how to structure that um and what kind of approach to take in the balancing of comedy and drama uh i really like that movie and also really like the second one so i uh i went into this one um i don't know like a, a kind of weirdly optimistic because on the one hand it is another marvel movie and um it, it i mean it, you know it has been a pretty remarkable streak of, of terrible releases from the mcu over the last few years but at the same time, hey, look, it's, you know, this is another Deadpool. I like those Deadpool movies, but uh, yes, I was uh, quite disappointed. I, too, was uh, very disappointed. I liked the first Deadpool. Got a lot of laughs out of me. I thought it was an interesting uh, movie in terms of its presentation and its vibe very unlike anything else that i had seen superhero wise it was very unapologetically itself uh so i walked away with deadpool quite positive uh deadpool 2 it was okay i didn't like it as much as the first deadpool but there were still a lot of things to like about the second deadpool so when i heard that this uh third one was coming out i'm like oh okay let's uh you know we'll give it a look i'm not like a deadpool fan or anything i thought the movies were all right um I mean, I watched this one, and I, uh, I, I, I can't say that I enjoyed it. I, I think that it committed a grave number of errors, uh, and it did a lot of things wrong that many other things we criticize do. And uh, I, was, I was very disappointed, um, and it unfortunately did not take long at all for me to feel that this movie was not very respectful to the first two Deadpool movies, among other movies. So, there you go. The hive mind strikes again. <laughs> well, to be clear, gonna... I watched this. I watched this um, without knowing anything about it. I didn't know anything about the plot. I, I didn't know anything about what other people really thought about it. Um, I kind of went in, and I, I you know, I, I felt how I felt. So we didn't. I didn't get primed or anything. 
Just to be, just to well, be clear, I know to the shock of literally it. nobody, uh, myself, Fringy and Rags have already discussed at length many of the things that have happened in this film because we are actually friends outside of this show. We do. I'm sorry. I know it's a um, horrifying realization. Yes. I've also expressed a lot of my issues on other shows, so a lot of people know exactly what we're going to talk about, at least somewhat. But you know this show. We're going to delve into if they everything know the extended in detail. Lore. Yes. The expanded universe. So. I suppose we should just get started. I will try and get a bit yeah, more peppy, uh, but it's um this film I'm upsets excited. me, so I'm gonna um, I, anger yeah, I'm elicits not, I'm, energy. Uh, that's good for you, Rags. <laughs> yes. Anger, does anger make you lethargic? Does it drain your energy? Does it not fill you with oh, well, passion? I am and... right. I'm currently in uh, sadness. Could yeah. very well turn into anger. Uh, the more we talk about it, yeah, it's, it's not going to be a surprise. Turn that frown. We'll, we'll keep it a frown, but actually, I'm I don't know. Eyebrows upside yeah. down. Yeah, you see, like how my eyebrows are. Change them mm -hmm. into yeah. fringies. Fringies is closer to what we got going. Mm -hmm. Your Mahler's more neutral. We'll, I'm more um, like, hey. We will start where the movie starts chronologically. It does a whole jump forward, jump back thing uh, okay. for the sake of understanding. From the get-go, exactly. Treat this almost, the way I'll describe this first scene, as All right. not even the film. It's someone pitching their idea for Deadpool 3 to you, right? That They give you a couple of things. And so they say to you, okay, Deadpool Does 2 this ended. Does person sound like Ryan Reynolds? Yeah, maybe. I don't even know how much he has control over the writing in these things. He might have a lot. He might have little. I really have no idea, but... Oh. Um, they say, because I, I, we, the, the three of us um, fully rewatched. Deadpool 1 and 2 before Deadpool 3, so they're, they're very much on the mind. And I uh, love me some use of your sequel to take advantage of what's been set before, both simultaneously not... Which is what Deadpool 2 did. Yes, it was it what does. a lot of good sequels do. They, they go, yeah. hey, that first one, that was great. Let's make another one that also bounces off the first one while also not destroying it. That'd be... It was a different idea. Yeah, yes. even though I think the first two Deadpools, um, to varying degrees, it's going to be subjective to a you know to a lot of people, well, subjective to everybody, but to varying degrees, they are comedies, they are funny movies, but they are actually movies that do have a heart and a theme and like characters going on journeys and learning things. They are deeper than just, "Hi, I'm a wise cracking gun shooting sword slashing guy." They they actually are like proper movies with points so I, I do not want that to be forgotten when we talk about deadpool one and two or when you think back on it in your memory yes i i thoroughly enjoy one and two and so it's nice to to expect a lot of respect to be given to the to those films so anyway two ends with deadpool getting cable's device to tra travel through time repaired by uh negasonic teenage warhead and her friend they uh they sort it out, and we, we're going to be getting to do some stuff with it. One might assume it's all memes, but it's absolutely canon what happens in that ending. He goes back and uh, saves his girlfriend, first and foremost. Uh, then he yeah. saves Peter. Then he does some meme things, but I mean, I guess they did happen. Yeah, like, then he saves the Jews. Yeah. Well, yeah. True. Well, they never show him actually do the act. That's right? true. They, they don't. That would be... But and, I, they, and now, instead is, of laughing about that, I, I need to be clear, because like, it might be relevant with how we discuss consequences of actions and timelines and stuff. He goes back to kill baby Hitler, but then he reconsiders, uh, well, rather, just considers. He's, he's, he's having difficulty with it. Um, and then they, they cut before we see exactly what happens. Now, what I was going to say, of course, is that uh, he, he kills Ryan Reynolds before he can start Phil Big Green Lantern. It's very funny. <laughs> and he kills his old version of Deadpool from X-Men Origins Wolverine uh, and says, hey, me and you, Wolverine, we, we should team up in future. I'm going to ask you in future and you got to say yes, okay? The fun little thing. Mm -hmm. It's always something you wanted. And uh, I guess here we are. So with all of that in mind, what happened next? This film actually takes on immediately after Deadpool 2 and says that he uses the device to travel to... Uh, the Sacred Timeline, 616, the MCU, as it's referred to these days. The Sacred uh, Timeline. Mm. Um, oh, I hate that. There's, there's the, so much the, to discuss oh. here for a decision to be made, but I guess before we can go further, it's like, so why? And it's like, well, to be clear, the, the reason is he wants to join the Avengers. 
now, now aren't there okay. you go ahead pringy well so the first thought is what you just made x-force like yep. that was like the point of your movie was that you you found a family True. in x-force they had a team. They were a cool but team, too. The, fir the first thing that you did was that you wanted to go to specifically the Marvel Universe to become an Avenger? What? Oh, and to be clear, no. yeah, they call it 616 from MOM and yes, everything. We, we know about the yeah. comics. And the, well, remember, they call it that from, um, that was the thing that Mysterio, who made it up, yeah, said, it made was, it up. said it was. It was, it was, it was a really catchy lie. But it what? was true. For the, for the sake of the well, conversation, for not confusing anybody, true. from now on we will call it the sacred timeline. That's the clearest. It's just that the movie has uh, descriptions where it says, you know, 616. Well, it actually highlights the problem um, by calling it the sacred timeline anyway, which is absolutely what they refer to it as. But yes. Uh, sh how should we do this? Should I summarize the scene? Or should we go piece by piece? Yeah. I have a fun fact. Yes. Did you know that in Lilo and Stitch, Stitch is Experiment 626? Oh. Yes. Which is a similar number to 616, it is similar. but somewhat it is. different. Okay, well... That's it. That's all I got. Yeah, explain the scene from beginning to end, I think. Well, so funnily enough, um, I'm tempted to go so chronologically that we actually explain why he wants to join the Avengers right now. I don't think it's going to ruin sure. our assessment of this film in any way, shape, or form. Um, we'll probably need to, yeah, it's probably good to say it now because it will color... Well, yeah, it, it'll we assess things it'll be mentioned here, but we'll be seeing the scene about 40 minutes into the film, so we'll just say it now, which is that uh, his girlfriend, Vanessa, feels he needs to do more, he needs to act more, he needs to, he needs to matter. It's a very odd conversation that we see, and uh, well, parts of it, uh, well, we're, we're to believe, not even real, because they're being messed with by someone else, but... The broad thing seems to be that he believes, as is stated in the scene with Happy Hogan, that he's uh, he's concerned he's going to lose his girl if he doesn't do something that matters. Well, is that's a problem. Strange, considering the many things he's done so far that have mattered considerably. Yes. In the first movie I don't know, and in like the second he was, movie. He was in the habit of doing really important things. <laughs> yeah, he saves her life in the first movie and, and then that he goes back in movie. time to save her life a, again that was the point of that movie remember it was the line it he said you know the right girl will bring out the hero in you that was mm -hmm. that was the arc it was it unfathomably gets him from confusing hero to like hero yeah it's it's getting deadpool into being a hero was the first movie he is He's not like a standard hero. He's obviously very. Oh no! The amount of collateral damage he caused in Deadpool Two is is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> he, is, uh, he is very much an anti-hero, but he will do some selfless things. He has limits. He there are things that he will and won't do. Um, I think that you know it's it's played as a comedic scene, but you know we were talking about you know killing baby Hitler was. I think it's interesting that in that scene, as funny as it is, he has to really hype himself up and really push himself to kill a baby, specifically baby Hitler. And he has to, he can't just do it. Even he knows it's like, oh, this is like, oh, killing a baby is, ooh, that's a line yeah. that, uh, uh, there, it, there are things he will and won't do. Deadpool is a character. He is a person. Wade Wilson has his lines that he will and won't cross. Well, you can go all the way back. He's... To the beginning, chronologically, of Deadpool 1, where he's doing a mercenary job, and he completes it, and it's to get a stalker away from a girl, and she says, you're my hero, and he's like, ah, no, no, don't, don't say that, don't do that. Because it's like, how much of this is for the money, and how much is this, because he wants to actually do things that are for the, for the good of people, and um, a lot of Deadpool 1 is kind of weird to watch at this point with where Deadpool's at, because a significant portion of that film is about the man Wade Wilson, and he is a man, as in like a full person, a character. Uh, he's not a clown. Um, he, he's got like feelings and reactions and values to lots of different things, but he's also pretty ruthless, rough, and at times very reckless, right? There's, there's so much about him and the girlfriend that in the first one, the argument is made that what, of what makes their relationship so passionate between them is that they're the two pieces the uh, well the piece the other needed right it completes them they are as she says your crazy matches my crazy it's supposed to be like they're both kind of chaotic and insane and they are perfect for each other um, someone out there for everybody 
Yes. But um, unfortunately, as the films progress, she gets progressively less screen time, uh, to the point that in this film, she is barely in it. Uh, barely in it. And she's essentially she's an not a character in this person. one, unfortunately. Yeah, which which is a big problem when she is. I mean, even though she wasn't in the uh, second movie for very long either, she was meant to be like kind of the core driving um, motivator for uh, Deadpool in both. Yeah, films. she's referenced constantly. So, but uh, not, not much Vanessa in this film at all. We're supposed to believe that yes, he literally changed the course of time to save her and uh, his people for X-Force, which is confirmed with uh, Shatterstar is still alive, so not just Peter. And, um, yeah. you know, all these efforts made, and of course what happened with Russell and uh, everything else, Cable to the point of sacrificing his ability to be with his family to save Deadpool. These are all Spider, events that took yeah, place. Oh, Cable. I can't wait to see him. He was really cool in Dead Man really 2. We need to see him, yeah. Yeah, it, he had a neat power set. He had a great actor. Um, I, I'm really curious what he's going to do. Because I remember yeah. at the end of Deadpool 2, he said that he is going to work to make sure that the world doesn't become yeah, a bad place in the future. Yeah, part of X-Force. Of X-Force. And man, Colossus, he's such a wholesome lad. Can't wait yeah, to see him. Yeah, really awesome to see Deadpool. Colossus back yeah. as well, yes. Really, really like Colossus. Uh, so, you know, you, you, there's a couple of other things I want to make clear before we move on as well. Like, the the relationship between them um, to see what would have happened. Deadpool 2, I think, because I, I, I've seen the sentiment. It's like, why um, why would you consider anything other than what happened to Deadpool 2 to be... It's, it's fridging. She got killed, and the plot is supposed to push him in directions and stuff. But uh, we've never subscribed to that. We, we shredded the, uh, the fridging video from... I forget who it was that we covered, but uh, the notion Something. of a character dies and then another character goes on a, a journey or gets pushed to an action as a result of it is just the idea that it's called fridging and therefore bad sort of shit is just so, just lacks any interesting. There's so many things that applies to that no one would ever apply it to. Well, the reality is, is that uh, when it comes to writing a story, most of the time, everything but the main character is orchestrated and designed to support the main character, whether that means that the characters are dying or not. You know, what individually happens to them, they're ultimately there to serve something that is more important. Um, yeah, it's she, their construction and how they're woven into the protagonist's story that helps to determine whether or not they the feel way, artificial. That was it. That yeah. was the one. So uh, yes. her dying in Deadpool 2 causes him, and they get a few what I consider to be strong chemistry scenes before it happens, and um, the scene immediately after she dies is one of the more emotionally effective in all of the Deadpool movies. And uh, the rest of the film asks a lot of questions as to who he is and what he does next if she's gone, and obviously she's still in his head in a lot of ways trying to get through an idea and uh, I think Deadpool 2 actually makes really strong use of it. Um, I, I don't consider what happens to her particularly unfair or, or uh, you know, in, in whatever way you want to try and argue fridging. And then uh, to tragic. the argument that it's all undone by the end, making the film redundant, it's like, well, arguably, a lot of what the film is 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 still absolutely meaningful because it's what he did and what he wants to do when with the idea that she's gone. And all of that gets a conusion, there's definitive answer to that, and then she can come back thanks to his device. You yes, know what I mean? But like he the, is still the way that he was. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's still, still that he man. He's still transformed. Yeah. He still went on his arc. The reason That's why right. I hate this because a lot Deadpool more... Deadpool goes on arcs. Is that she, Deadpool's a character. She doesn't behave in even the most basic way, uh, the way that Vanessa does in Deadpool 1 or 2, and she doesn't have the values of Vanessa. She's uh, unironically very close to a cardboard cutout, like, she doesn't yeah. do anything that's... If they have one scene where they get to interact near the beginning and one at the end, and both of them come across like they've never met each other before. Yeah, um, where, where's the chemistry? Where's the goofing around? It's, it's legitimately bizarre, yeah, going from... Especially because I watched Deadpool recently. Going from that to watching her in this, it's it's just not... It's a bit it's not sad. Comparable. It, it is sad. Because they had a really fun and interesting dynamic. It's um, And now it's gone... The core of the film in the, the first one, they they recognized yeah. they needed to make right. that relationship really, really, you know, matter so that we get the the thrust of the plot with him. We want to go save her, sort of thing. Um, and get back to her and, and heal his his wounds so that they can have the relationship they had before, all that sort of stuff. But yes, in this one, all we're told so far 
is that she's considering breaking up with him unless he fucking joins a hero team like the Avengers. The, the sheer problems like, with this. <laughs> it's... What? If there's anything the MCU has taught me, it's that you can only be a hero if you're if you're a part of the he Avengers. He's a team! He's X-Force! He, he created one that he is still it. alive. <laughs> like, what? Well, they're not cool enough, you see. I guess. And then, of course, the question is, if he really, really, for whatever reason, doesn't want to do X-Force, why would his next port of call not be the X-Men? Of which he was a trainee yeah. for a day. You know which what I mean? Existed like in that universe and had not yet been uh, destroyed yet at that point in the timeline why wouldn't he i mean that was what colossus was trying to make him do but the whole idea was that he needed to create one for himself because x-force is meant to be his family it's not just like a team that he hangs out with they're meant to represent the family that he Ugh, uh, people uh, are... that he needed to create some people are like that's not what she said she uh left him once he didn't come back from it it's how wade interpreted it it's like it, it's so go you have to you have to go scene by scene folks all right you have to wait but in this scene, he says that to Happy, that he's worried about losing his girl unless he matters, and he can't think of any better way to do it than joining the Avengers. The uh, yeah, misinterpretation what of what she says and her reaction to what he reacts to with the rejection, we get in there. It's going to be piece by piece, all right? You're going to give it time. Um, but believe me, I've gone over this film in autistic detail. I know all the lines. <laughs> I guess I know how the story goes. It's why I don't like it. Um, so with that... Uh, there's several decisions he could have made that, that this doesn't make any fucking sense, nor does her request to do that make any sense, considering the events of the prior films and her values as a character, so all of this has been upended. I don't know what the fuck they're doing, and if someone said this as a premise for Deadpool 3, I'd be like, oh, uh, do you mind watching Deadpool 1 and 2 before you give me a pitch for Deadpool 3? Because that, that, obviously... Mm -hmm. it's just he clearly sequel. didn't, yeah. This is in no way, yeah. Um, so, wh why in the world... Would he try to join the Avengers, and then why in the world would he travel to a different dimension to join the Avengers? Yeah, because what's I, wrong with the universe. Avengers in his universe? And also, there's uh, an well, infinite the amount of that, Avengers to choose that, from. If, so, if there's no Avengers in his universe, which there isn't, you know, like we know that there isn't one in the Fox X Men universe, why wouldn't he just try another one? I mean, yeah. are we seriously implying that there's only like one Avenger from his view? this universe is no more important than any other universe because it, it ain't it, or at least it, it ought not be that was because the tba arbitrarily decided that it mattered uh more than all the other ones but like he could just keep going to different ones but i mean why would he even do that it's like okay oh i'm off to work in a different universe see ya like surely he would want to remain in his own universe with yeah, his friend when he has an investment uh, especially in when his, he yeah. especially when he later makes it very clear how important all of those people are to him yeah. He just wants to regularly disappear to a different universe. To, is like, his plan... Yeah, his plan is to say, Vanessa, I've joined an alternative version of the Avengers. Oh, I mean, okay, so the Avengers are a group of superheroes. No, they're not like mine. They're, they're, a, grou they're a group of super cool... Mm -hmm. Well, he used to be super cool superheroes from in, in a different universe. So I'm going to go work with them. And you well, I mean, me can now, we right? deal with uh, something that I don't think anybody even wants to bother with, which is... Vanessa, I've gone to a different universe, dimension, timeline, whatever, to join the Avengers. The Avengers is, and then she cuts him off and says, I'm sorry, you went to a different universe? And he's like, oh, yeah. uh, yeah? Oh, yeah, there's different universes, yeah. Well, not only are there different universes, I have a device that can take me in and out whenever I want, and it's like, oh, you could probably solve all of the things. This is incredible technology. Like, what? This changes literally everything about everything ever. Well, yeah, even... they, if this was another Deadpool movie, they would have a big conversation between the two about the potential of his power and what he could be using it for, and she would be his, um, I, his moral center, core backbone, you know, to get him to do those things if he didn't already. I think the the MC was would. so fucked at this point that people just casually <laughs> flipping universes. It's like, yeah, of course that's normal. What? Would anyone really even yeah. question any of that? It's like, yeah, I guess not, or something. And then he um he destroys it after the rejection as well, which makes me think about all of the things that could have been done with that device, including but not limited to allowing Cable to go back to his family. Yeah, you'd, you'd yep, have thought but... Deadpool would want to offer that. But... Or Deadpool knows mm -hmm. that, oh shit, if someone dies, this is my way to undo that potentially. Look, if I've got that device, I ain't breaking it. 
No, there's. I'm gonna there's... get it. I'm getting it laminated just to make sure it's so all right. There is infinite good that can be done with that device, as opposed to it allows me to join a team in a different universe to fight crime. Like I, I don't even know but, what Mahler, to say. Consider, consider that Deadpool's a wacky guy. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, so it's like the we're dealing with this first sentences of the, the this story, and it's already completely fucking collapsed for world building and character. It's just like it, yeah, fuck I, me. I this, mean, yeah, this movie collapses problem, fast. Um, this is uh, like based on what we saw in the first two films. How is this not like an outright reversal of the arcs that he went on in both of those films? So. Um, the conversation he has with Happy is filled with cringe. Uh, this was a scene that I think most people agreed the jokes were just, man. Not landing. Like, I masturbate with Hulk hands. It's called smash debating. And, you know, there's just like a sense of, all right. Well, mm -hmm. lewd humor is good humor, as they say. Ugh. Um, yeah, and then he's like, "What's what's your superpower, Happy? Is it to parallel park?" First off, oh, not everyone can do that. Not everyone can do that. Not everyone can do that. But not not that funny. Um, but so this is all subjective, guys. This is all subjective. Maybe these these really work for other people, right? That's what it's all yeah, about. Yeah, that's uh, nothing you can deny for sure. A lot of these jokes will or will not work, um, maybe we'll try and delve into why I feel like some of them definitely don't, or definitely do work, you know, in, in, t in terms of writing jokes. Uh, but, you know, if you found the movie funny, it's totally fine. I, I just typically did not. I was, um, uh, I was hoping for more. I wasn't getting it. Um, anyway, uh, Wade says he, he cares, and he wants to use that feeling for something important. He wants to matter, he wants to show his girl that he matters, he wants to be an Avenger, because what they do matters, and if he doesn't do something quick, he's uh, not sure it'll work out between him and his girl, and he doesn't want to be a one-trick pony for the rest of his life, which, as we've gone over... One-trick pony. <laughs> none of that makes any sense with who we know Wade nope. Wilson is. I I got no clue. I can't help you. If nope. I this is weird. Um this this is just outright bizarre. We uh we are very very uh, early into the movie. We've had the 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 amount of you remember at the beginning well, of uh Thor Love and Thunder how we had like how quick the villain like becomes a terrible villain like contradictory. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a different version of that where I don't know how quickly in a movie other than this We've had our protagonist essentially turn and morph into a completely different character where all of his traits and his journeys have been undermined from his previous two films. This yes. is lightning fast. And almost yeah, like that is the it's, case it's despite so the fact they're using intense amounts of continuity from the prior films. Yeah. Oh yeah, they rely on This is on not a different Deadpool. This no. is the Deadpool from the first two films, but it, it it is also, I mean, I know that we don't need to spend much time on it, but isn't it just funny that if they said, yeah, Come on in, Wade. That he would have caused an incursion and destroyed the. Yeah, we're lucky. Well, no, he already happen. did. He's already there. I mean, I was going to say, it's, it's like for every second you're in a universe where you know belong, and you're rolling a dice, and for every time it hits like a six, you start an incursion. So he keeps rolling a one, two, yeah. three, four, or five. We're lucky, right? Because he's out of there before yep. he rolls that six. But um, right. well, as far as we know, as far as we know, yeah, maybe the world is getting torn no apart. Clue. We don't know what's um, happening a mile down the road. We got no clue. Uh, Happy rejects him outright, and um, I don't know exactly how much information he knows, but Happy is rejecting a man with who's essentially immortal, right? Hyper healing, really strong agility, strength, and he can travel the multiverse. Well, I mean, Deadpool, when, when we find out what the cringe Avengers team is going to be, it'll be that Deadpool is far more powerful than the majority of the people on that team. Yes. Um, so it just feels really odd that Happy is not more concerned about someone like Deadpool, and his advice is, why don't you aim for the middle, and we'll keep an eye on you. Both yeah, statements, like, ridiculous. First of all, what are you gonna, if, you're, very... if you think his problem, Deadpool now, is that he's vain, and he wants all of this for glory and to feel like he matters, which I'm actually on hap uh, with Happy somewhat, it's like that shouldn't be the reason a little bit. that you want to yeah. be a hero, is just you just want to matter, it should be a little bit more meaningful than that, and you need to work on that yourself, sort of thing. But I mean, it's just yeah, somewhat... Yeah, he says, like, you, you can't be in it. 
it's not because you need to be on the Avengers. It's because people need you to be on the Avengers, essentially. So, and then uh, which um, what does he mean? Keep an I eye mean, on saying him. That... How? Yeah, oh, he's going wow. to a different yeah, universe, my good man. And what do you mean, shoot for the middle? And also, like, I mean, if he's already explained all of his accomplishments, surely you should be very impressed already. <laughs> like, Deadpool has already accomplished some pretty crazy things. Well, what do you? Who the fuck do you have to be to get into the Avengers exactly? Well, if I he mean, just gets let, turned away instantly. Well, he's going to get turned away, but all of the cringe people that have been introduced in yeah. Phase Four and Five, they're going to be part of the Avengers when they have not accomplished as much as he has. And also, wouldn't it be weird as well? It's like, wait, so you're you're a mutant? What's that? There's a lot of questions that are worth asking. He mentioned the X Men. That probably... That's not even in Six One Six yet or like, Secret Timeline. You should be like, what? That? Yeah, yeah. X Men, what? It's insane. And the second he actually understands anything meaningful about anything Deadpool's talking about, he'd be like, okay, I need to call people. I need to call everyone right now. Yeah. Nope. Mm -hmm. and, uh, nope. Yeah. So, um, another thing Wade says is that sadly, all of X Force perished. The police said it was gravity, but the truth is they didn't test well, especially Cable. Man. I, I like I like the, I just find that if that's true, how fucking disappointing is that? <laughs> like Well geez. the problem is, Fringy, we would normally be in the position of saying, wow, they retconned it so that all of X Force died. And it's like, no. They, no, they retconned, retconned it so that all of X Force lived. They they retconned it and then retconned again, because in this very film, I don't know why they took the effort to make sure Shatterstar made it. Like, yeah, a, Deadpool no 2 didn't mention what happened to Shatterstar, but this film says Shatterstar made it. Shatterstar, for anyone who doesn't know, is the member of their team that was an alien, and he thought himself as better than humans in every single way. He kind of annoyed Deadpool, right? And on his arrival, as part of the X-Force deployment, he went into helicopter blades and got splattered everywhere. It was like green blood. And uh, Deadpool tried to stop it, but it, he couldn't get through to him. Now, if you're telling me that Shatterstar's alive... That means Deadpool had to go yeah, back in time. He saved all of them. Well, I was going to say, Deadpool has to go back in time, and he can't just go back in time and yell, don't do XYZ thing to Shatterstar, because we saw that's actually what happened in the first run. So what he'd have to do is go all the way back to the airplane to stop him. And if he's stopping him there, yeah. he's stopping all of them. And that means yes. X-Force lived. They live. X -Force so, lived. And, and, and more relevantly, that obviously, you know, Cable and Domino, they were alive at the end of the film. So, like, got it's it, got it. to... this is going to be the first hour. It's going to be awkward, all right, chat, but we'll get there. Yeah. So, for example, you guys are overthinking it. They died on the mission. He went back in time and saved them after the mission. No, he's what the line I'm giving you is from the first scene in this film in continuity. He said they died, but they're not dead. Yeah, they're they're alive. So they if you're going alive. for a, if you're going for a job interview, you're probably not going to describe it as an event. Like, wh why would you describe it as before the retcon? But I mean, it doesn't even address it. Like, X Force existed at the end of the film, as we saw it anyway. X Force was the team at the end. It was Deadpool, Cable, uh, Domino. Yes, uh, the that was X Force. Post credits or whatever show him saving Peter. Now, it was up to yeah. you whether or not you thought he saved the rest of them, but this film at least confirms he saved Shatterstar. The well, one that like, like the least. The, the original impression I got is he just wanted to save Peter and he didn't care as much about him. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's what I thought that, that was. I thought that was the point, but I guess not. That was the joke. Which, by the way, I would have had a, I think I would have had a problem with. I think that's I, fair. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. The thing is, it's it's left it's left open enough, right? Because they're not going to want to play scenes infinitely. But uh, I do like the focus on Peter. It's kind of funny in Deadpool too. Yeah, yeah Peter's um, wholesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes, the 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 nature of the team is flip flopping all around. And if he's going for a job interview where he's trying to do nothing but impress, why wouldn't he say X Force is alive and well and a team I constructed and I'm a part of? And, and you know what? I don't even know why I'm here. I should just be with them. Yeah, he'd be like, why did I even come here? Man, it's almost like writers dragged me here. It's, it's literally the bobbing back and forth of, like, what the fuck do we even want to be true is is down to... Uh, sometimes it'll be down to, like, plot issues, but sometimes it's just down to whether or not they want to tell a particular joke. Um, I was getting but so I mean, confused, man. I was like, wait, X-Force, they're dead? And it's like, no. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm really well, unfortunately uh, the real reason is they just didn't feel like using those characters. Yeah. Um but unfortunately you're kind of like obliged to because they were survived at the end of the film and were established to be a team going forward. Yeah, for anybody wondering, um, he doesn't get much over attention, but Shadow Stars at his uh, party at the beginning. Yeah, no cable. No cable. He's just not around. He's also, just, or, or Domino. I was actually going to say, it's, it's incredible that X-Force get this full mention, and some of them are actually like visible when uh, Domino, Cable, and Russell don't even... Like, one of them gets like a line, but that's it. Uh, shocking. It's, yeah, it's weird, because Domino is... It's weird. Domino and Cable, I really like the both of them. I think Domino's got... I like her personality. I think she has really cool, interesting, and unique sort of power. Of course, we talked about Cable and how likable he is. The fact that we don't get either of them is legitimately... It's a huge missed opportunity. Mm. Especially because, like, particularly with Cable, he has a vested interest in this universe. Because it's going to be his one day. Well, Where so, is he? Well, What's he doing? We, yeah. we can be completely honest here, right? Deadpool 1 has what could be considered B-lister or C-lister or D-lister like entries because they can't get access to higher things. They even have comments about it in a meta way. Yeah, they have jokes Deadpool about it. Deadpool yeah. 2, you can maybe have a bit more because you, you got some more leverage and uh, you built on the team that you started in the first one as well. And then Deadpool 3 literally got so fucking stuffed with S-tier cameos that all those characters you built up get shoved out. There's no room for them. Yep. I Which don't want to play with really, you anymore. It's the Andy which, meme. It's the yep. Toy Story it's meme. It's really lame because, you know, in Deadpool 2, it's like uh, getting Cable, right? It's like Cable is, you know, an, on a meta level worth more than Colossus. Uh, but yeah. Colossus is still a part of Deadpool 2 in a way that's, like, not insignificant. It's meaningful. Because it's not just a matter of casting aside. I mean, even, um, Dopender, the taxi driver, gets to be a part of Deadpool 2. He gets a line in this. <laughs> he lost yeah. his accent, too. That's kind of weird. That's strange. Hmm. Very, very odd. Uh, he and, uh, X-23 lost their accents. Interesting. I mean, she lost a whole-ass language. She just doesn't even... Uh, we'll get to her. She's very strange in terms of what we're even supposed to think she is in this film, where she came from exactly. But, um, you know, moving forward, um, as a result of being rejected by the Sacred Timelines Avengers, Wade stops being Deadpool outright. Uh, Sorry, what? Uh, uh, what do you mean? Uh, he, what do you mean he stops being Deadpool? Um, He's a hero. Uh, we had to. We had to. Uh, You're misinterpreting the scene. De probably. Uh, Deadpool 2 began with him making clear to the audience, right, that they wanted to compromise somewhat on the first film in terms of he had a strict goal that was all about Vanessa. So how do we move that on? Deadpool 2 was like, well, I'll go after and kill the worst of the worst that a lot of people won't even consider touching. Like Avengers will fight a big demon monster cyborg thing that's come from outer space. I'm going to go kill like a mob boss in the middle of some distant country. And uh, he'll do it for money, and it'll satisfy him on all, all level of like heroism. It's like, okay, sure, that's that's like the operation. You, you get what I'm trying to say. They don't want to make him into Captain America. They, they always want to stick to the anti-hero aspect and making him a bit rough around mm -hmm. the edges, that sort of thing. And so, yeah, um, his the denial of access to the Avengers uh, shoves him all the way back to uh, he he becomes a car salesman. Uh, uh, I mean, oh man, that I mean, you can uh, see uh, getting assassinated real quick, huh? Yeah, we, uh, we already uh, thought it was weird he even wanted to join the Avengers. We already thought it was weird out of all the options he had if he wanted to that he would even choose to do that. And now we're being told that with access to the infinite multiverse, he tried one time with the main Avengers, which he wouldn't even know is the case, by the yeah. way. The ones he that we the know. Avengers. And then, uh, and then, and then that was it. And he gave up, and he stopped being Deadpool. And uh, he stopped being Deadpool stopped being for six years. For six years. Six. Yep. He committed to this. This was wasn't some spur of the moment decision. It wasn't a pout. It wasn't an emotional moment. This is something that he did and committed to. See, like, and, and what we're talking about here is the first. I want to say two, three minutes, five minutes at most. Of the continuity, because obviously we're not doing the... We, we haven't yet hit the opening scene. 
I'm just saying that this is um, this is a lot of changes, and all of them are to facilitate the story they want to tell. It's um, these are all gonna this is all gonna lead into. And you might think to yourself like, oh, oh so it was you, like, and, and of course you have to mention at this point as well that yes, his girlfriend Vanessa left him. Yeah, what? Uh, Vanessa left him. She's got a new job and she's dating someone else. Why would she leave him? They've they've gone through so much together. He's Wade Wilson. He's done so much for her. He went back in time to save her life. He he sacrificed himself to save a child. And I, what? Um, because what, what are her standards? Because he stopped being Deadpool. That was enough for her to give up on him. And so I guess the implication is she couldn't convince him to get back into being a hero. He I wouldn't don't think do so, it. No. So he wanted to be an Avenger for her. I guess, but when, but that would mean that when he got rejected from the Avengers and she would obviously say, we'll just be a hero in the ways that you've been being a hero from the last two movies. He wouldn't accept that and stopped being a hero entirely. So she left him as a result of that. There is, I've seen commentary on this, um, though I haven't caught it necessarily. Maybe it was an implication that the, uh, they lost their baby. Which, Did uh... they even mention it? They'd mentioned they mentioned wanting to movie. name a baby, but I thought that they were just planning to try and have one in Deadpool 2, not that they actually... Oh, um... absolutely. She took out her IUD. Yes. I almost said IED, which is definitely not something <laughs> you want up there. That's actually but, the joke um... in the movie. <laughs> he says it's oh, is a it? bomb. Oh, yeah. I, oh, okay. I forgot. But, um, oh, okay. Um, uh, I in didn't... that case, it's a pretty good joke. But yeah, they, they were good. yeah she took it out. It was like, the, uh, it was like a present. To be like, we're, we're ready to have a baby. They were excited about it. They were talking about names and everything. It was a whole joke. Yeah, so I... And he was, I, I, he was like, excited. They were both thrilled to do it. I don't think... Well, so this is, this is where it gets complicated. Some people have said that there's, there's subtle implications of a miscarriage. I, I didn't catch them. If there's some quote or, or maybe a look or something that people are referencing, I'll have to see in future. But um, I would more so highlight that aspect as just... Man, she was planning on having a kid with him, and then she left him because he felt so down after being rejected by a team of heroes when he wanted to matter. You know what I mean? It's like, hmm. Uh. Vanessa, top tier right now. Don't know what the fuck has happened uh, with the two significant characters from the Deadpool franchise, but um, they're in trouble. Lots of things in trouble here, uh, but yes, uh, Peter. He works with Peter as a car salesman, and he, he he's like, "You you should be Deadpool," and he's like, "Nah, I don't want to be Deadpool." I feel like Peter would want to be a hero too, kind of like it's. Yeah, um, he's got his Deadpool outfit in his locker. He's waiting for the day where he can be Deadpool, but I, I guess he wants to wait for Deadpool to be years. Deadpool. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. What a tragedy. So not off to a fantastic beginning, but don't worry, because the TVA are about to join the plotline. Yay! Yay! I love the, when the TVA the show up and ruin TV, everything. That's, they always, that's the entire history of the TVA is the ruination of everything. Yeah. They have been nothing yep. but a massively negative influence over the entirety of the MCU. They mm -hmm. offer nothing positive. They are a tumor on the story and the continuity. And the uh, they are a substantial part of this film. Yep. Yeah, because we kind of went over. He has his little birthday party, and that's where you find out the information on Vanessa. Yeah, he gets some online, and that's it for him. Yes, Colossus watches the Great British Bake Off. That's that's the line he has for the movie. As for, like, I mean, we can joke, but like, it it pisses me off to no end that Colossus got completely sidelined. Uh, yep, we had two movies not... of development with him as a very uh, important character, and um, he's gone. He's out of here. Well, I mean, I mean, you, you, we talk about the good choices that were made. Having Colossus be there as a foil to Deadpool is a really good pairing because Colossus is so wholesome. And yes. Deadpool yeah, he's is a not. wholesome hero, and, then of course and he wants Cable... to bring out the good in Wade. Cable fills a different role in that he is also a foil, but much more of the straight man kind of foil. Uh, but now he's completed his arc, so it'd be interesting to see what uh, mm -hmm. kind of foil he would be to him now, but unfortunately he is not in this film. Yeah, I suppose um, we should probably just say that overtly, yes. Cable does not, you know, he's just not in it, no lines, yeah. no nothing. Cable's he's referenced once, and that's it. it. Uh, Russell isn't in it. 
no, despite all the, of these the people meaning he created that was meant to serve as his family, it's not in the story. Yes. The 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 importance, the meaning behind finding a family in Deadpool Two is just crushed at the opening of this. Yeah. Um mm -hmm. and you might be Go saying, on. like, well no, because that's the family he's trying to fight for, right? And it's like, dude, fucking half of them aren't even there. And they've just been removed, deleted. So I guess what I'm saying is like, uh, literally in the script, he's fighting for a family. But I'd say, spiritually speaking and respectfully, it shat all over that concept by removing so many family members that he would care about. <sighs> Not great. Um, yeah, it's it sucks when you get to the third installment of a trilogy and uh, you feel like you've not wasted your time, but you feel like you've had the rug pulled out from underneath you. Like, oh, you're expecting to see more of these characters we've been developing and setting up, and oh, no, they're not in it. Instead, we have other things. You're like, oh, uh, that's that's disappointing. That's that's a real shame, actually. And even even at one point says like, I'm standing in a room with every single person I love. As if to just annoy me. Because, <laughs> like, thanks for that line. It's all of them, yeah. That's everybody. Uh... So, yes, he gets kidnapped by the TVA. Um, there are jokes between all of these things. Um, I, I don't know. We're probably not going to review all of the jokes. Uh, I, I just, I, I don't know if it, it, I'll give it, like, this opportunity if you guys want to mention anything about particularly liking or disliking any of them. I'm, I'm just. Uh, um, well, you know. I mean, to be honest. I, I I think I chuckled reasonably twice in this movie. And I specifically remember one of the jokes. I forget what the other one was, but I think it was it was twice. Um I think that the comedy in this movie is really bad. Um I uh was definitely not not enjoying the comedy in this. Whereas the first one was really funny, and I thought the second one, it was alright. But this one was oof. This one was pretty, uh, pretty Ew. painful. The someone said, the "Hits, uh, dear God, don't show more a naked gun or airplane. Do not disgrace those films by even mentioning them anywhere near this fucking miserable piece of shit." Good yeah, God, these mo those movies are amazing. They're funny as all goddamn hell. They know exactly what yeah. they're doing. They do it to an expert degree to the point of inspiring, you know, infinitely funny people after it. This film. It's like the culmination of the rotting semen under the floor from the place where this shit would have maybe been made. Like, it's just, I just don't need, please, just keep them, keep them separated. Um, Incredibly unfunny movie. Good lord. Anyway. Impressively unfunny, actually, to have that many jokes constantly like a machine gun and to have so few of them land. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess we should mention, for some, uh, some people have said, like, you're not mentioning uh, the guy from, the, the bartender, right, uh, TJ Miller. So, oh yeah, we at least know with him it would have been like legal shit that they wouldn't have been able to get him back, right? He was dealing with um, court stuff, as far as I'm aware. Didn't he get hyper cancelled? And I, I, I hesitate to say cancelled. I think he, he didn't. He actually have like court shit to deal with. I don't know if anyone knows more about I, it. But... I do not know. No, I'm not sure. um, I'd have to check. I'm just saying that um, at least that one, it might have been that they weren't even like able to bring him back. I don't actually know. I'd have to look into it. Um, I just know that legal things happened. But no, if if they if everything was clear on that and they were allowed to bring him back, he would also be a overtly missing piece as well. Um, Ryan and Miller hate each other apparently. Oh geez, well maybe oh, <laughs> maybe this. Stinks. Yeah, okay then. That's a shame. I really liked. Uh, that is a shame. He's too. quite funny. Uh, yeah, he is. Do do. Where are we then? Yes. Yeah, so the TVA kidnapped Wade. Um, I think this is going to be a moment where. God, I don't know if I can summarize this. There's like a thousand issues we'd have to go through if I summarized it quickly. Uh, hey. We could do scene by scene. Ugh, I don't know if that's going to be even more complicated because the, the reason why this is hard is because you either do it all at once, or you, you which is going to be like a calamity of an avalanche of points to make, or you do it scene by scene, but you don't have all the information established yet. So, you know, there's some questions that could be answered but get need more questions. Um... Uh, I think we'll have to go for the summarize it all. I think so. Is this, Fair, yeah. This is going to be tough, right. but um, Wade wakes up in the TVA. They, they tell him what the place is, what it does, and that his universe 
is in trouble, uh, or rather, the, the, what they start with is that he's being moved to the sacred timeline because he's needed for an important future event. And he's very excited about that because remember that's what he uh, he wanted. He told Happy yeah, what's that the was matter? Like one thing, yeah. yeah. And so uh, Mr. He Paradox, wants, he is who he's talking to, yeah. says you'll finally get what you want. You'll finally be able to matter. He's like, oh my god, this is exciting, hundred percent. I'm on board. Where do I sign? Let me get my costume. And they uh, they suit him up. They give him adamantium blades. And he's he's the Deadpool you you know and love. And then they tell him uh, he can't commute because there's going to be no universe for him to go back to. The universe with all of his loved ones are, is going to be obliterated very soon uh, because Mr. Paradox has been tasked by the TVA to oversee the destruction of what we're going to call the Fox timeline because it's going to get way too complicated if I use the numbers. The Fox timeline is dying because Logan died in Logan and it was such an epic and monumental emotional sacrifice that to lose him is to lose an anchor being. And without an anchor being, a universe inevitably dies. And so if the Fox universe is going to die anyway, they want Mr. Paradox to oversee it, and they want him to take Deadpool from the Fox universe, move him into the Sacred Timeline, and oversee the destruction of the Fox one. And Mr. Paradox wants to prove that the, the TVA were wrong in that they've established this new set of rules where they want to allow timelines to slowly fizzle out he thinks you should cut them off immediately, mercy kill them, and that uh, they've stopped doing it, but that he's going to find a way to do it with a new technology called a Time Ripper. And um, yes, yeah, so that's what he tells Deadpool to accept to get into the new timeline. Well, and that the, and, and that the Time Ripper is a ticking clock. Yes, the Time well, Ripper needs like it, it has to wind up. It doesn't just do it instantly. Does he say seventy-two hours in that? In that? Yeah, seventy-two scene? hours. So seventy-two three why days. Why three why days. Why does the quite through the pruning device that just did it instantly well, well we, we got so much to wait for a why does the tva uh, need to wait for something yeah, to wind continue, up when they have continue if there's yeah. more that you needed to say oh well uh so the end of the scene is deadpool obviously recognizing the stakes and then saying well i'm gonna steal your time traveling device i'm gonna punch you in the face and i'm gonna leave to find a wolverine to replace that anchor being to prevent the destruction of my timeline There'll be more to discuss in terms of the nonsense, but we'll probably stop there and just look at what's happened up to that point. Okay, so I would say, first of all, anchor beings, what the fuck? <laughs> what? It's like, well, it's like a canon event. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 um, it's a really bad idea is what it is. So well, you have now made it to where there is one person in every universe who is so important that when they die, their universe ends. And that this, in this case, is tied to Wolverine, which means that his sacrifice at the end of Logan ensures the destruction of his timeline. Yeah, that that entire cosmos is now gone. And, and like, what? What? Why? Why is that the way it works? I don't the know why they make these things up. Why? And, and why? How do they? How do they anchor the universe before they're born? Oh wait, the the MCU has shown us that the timeline is like all t like a whole bunch of time exists before and after, right? Like it's. It's like a line that you can jump to at different points, including before and after the anchor being existed. Um, what does that mean in terms of the timeline's existence? Like, what does it mean that, like, oh, chronologically, this person has died now as us time-traveling entities, which means that in an X amount of actual quantifiable time that the universe is going to be destroyed? That sounds stupid. Oh, let me address quickly. Everyone's saying it's meta. Um, this is called writing. So what's going to happen is through this, the stakes will be established and character decisions that are supposed to be meaningful will be derived from this being the stakes in the writing. So saying yeah, this, it yeah. references mm. how a Fox universe is over doesn't mean anything. That's, that's like saying, also... oh, it, it represents the folly of man or something. It's like, I don't give a shit. We're talking about what this is in the text and then we can talk about the subtext of it. Because mm -hmm. I was, I was going to mention that like in terms of it being like a meta commentary on that like i still hate that i hate that he was the only one keeping things together and that the rest of that universe is almost like superfluous to you know him ultimately um i don't like what it's saying on a meta level well i mean mm -hmm. it's a it's a tad awkward when there are i mean obviously you know wolverine hugh jackman's wolverine is the most important character um to everybody who's watching generally and in the universe in terms of the impact that he makes in the Fox X-Men universe, but there are several films in that universe that he's not in. Um, se several? 
three. Because he's not in he's not in uh, X Men First. Oh wait, nah, never mind. <laughs> he's he's only he in, he's not in technically not in for a three. few seconds, right? Yeah. He's not in, no, he's not in three of them. But uh, but of course he's barely in X Men First Class anyway. It's it's just a fun meme. Um, there are other characters in that universe. There are other characters that people also like. Um, but you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, so um... they don't count. They're not important enough to yeah. The reason they've introduced the anchor being thing is to create a whole plot line that's going to go in particular places, and it's going to be referenced all the way up till the end. Um, as for whether or not it's supposed to represent the meaning that as soon as Logan died, the Fox universe was over, I don't even know where to begin with that. I mean, um, there's, I could... mean there's, what, there's something to be said about that on a meta level, but again, the actual writing in the universe is, yes, that universe yeah. is now going to be disintegrated and destroyed with everybody it in it. It is not meta in this story. It is so very now, real. when you are watching Logan, you have to understand, when you are watching Logan, when he dies, he has now set in motion the destruction of that universe and everybody in it. Which doesn't even yep. feel remotely appropriate, or... No. It's just... Yeah, like, like, why would it... It's never been mentioned before, why would it ever work that way? And then, of course, why wouldn't it be something they could stop... By mm -hmm. they have access to the full timeline. If you're telling me that his sacrifice being so meaningful destroys the timeline and kills everybody, which for the record, uh, Loki season two establishes they do not like people's timelines getting destroyed because it represents the deaths of infinite people or whatever the fuck. Okay. Yeah, um, exactly. Then that means that they need to stop him from doing that noble sacrifice, and the the timeline will be saved. So they just need to go in and probably zap, uh, you know, evil Logan from the end of Logan. And then uh, you can just leave. You won't have to do a noble sacrifice, and you can carry on with the kids. Yeah, Everything won't have fine. to die. Everyone lives. All those kids are gonna. Yeah, they. It's. Mm. So, the ending of Logan was good, and I don't. <laughs> just to think that. Oh yeah, all those people he sacrificed and I, so it, far. It, it, nah, they're so... gonna. They're just gonna be a cos or some horrific cosmic tragedy. That means that universe ends. Oh, why would you write that? Why? Yeah, and, and so that's what I mean. I like, understand. I feel like when you start to delve into the subtext and the matter, it starts to get really uh, gross and unwieldy, and kind of like pisses on the legend, the the legacy of of Logan, which um, we'll get more to on that mm. as this okay. conversation goes on. Um, so yeah, that is just a mechanic. That's as far as we've gotten. There's so much more to talk about, but anchor being that's a thing now. Um, they didn't want Deadpool right. to obviously. Uh, steal a temp pad and start fucking with the timelines. That's not something they wanted, but they did want to pluck him from uh, the Fox universe and put him into the sacred timeline because the higher-ups have deemed that he will be important in the future. Now remember, they have access to the full timeline. So I don't know why they wouldn't know what role he's supposed to play. Um, or why they wouldn't communicate that information or... Well, yeah, and, and then and of course, why... remember if if they don't want him to steal a temp pad, they can just go back before he steals it and know to stop him from doing that. But uh, that's at least of this, uh, you know, the issues that we've got. But the um, remember how it works from uh, Loki season one, which is all the continuity they're drawing on. Which uh, just PSA: never draw on the continuity established by Loki. Just ignore it. Don't don't do anything to do with the TVA. Just stay away. Yeah, you won't be able to make sense away. of it. No Obviously one can make sense of it. Too late. They've they've put everything in. So, um, the yeah, way it worked in Loki it. was, you have a huge thread that represents the timeline, start to finish. I don't know where it starts, maybe the fucking Big Bang or the equivalent for the um, the MCU, and it has all these little things coming off left, right, and center, and the things come off them left, right, and center. It represents the multiverse, because they that's the finale, right, of Loki 1. We, we open up to the multiverse. No longer yes. do you have one timeline <laughs> where the rest is snipped off. You now have the multiverse. And then by the time... You hit the end of the second season, they no longer snip those timelines. Everything is fucking chaotic, but Loki, the god of time and space, or whatever the fuck, he's, uh, he's keeping it he all. Grabbed them. He yeah, he grabbed them. And made him green, and he, now the timeline is fine. <laughs> he became them. Yggdrasil. That was the big... But you, you can check out our coverage yeah. of wow. Loki Season 2 oh, if you'd sense. like. Makes a lot of sense. So then... Uh, the end of the timeline is the void. It's where all timelines converge. I had to check this because a lot of people don't remember it, nor did I necessarily. They say that all the timelines, no matter what, will eventually end up at the void. So think of it as a big, like all the threads will come back together right at the end and they equal why this that would world. Be the case at all. No nope. clue why that would be the way that it should work, but whatever. No don't, clue. Yeah. They don't. just say things. They they just say things. 
By the way, I don't even think it's, it's like, could we even have the conversation? The amount of timeline shenanigans that are in the Fox universe and how they play into how the TVA works. You know what I mean? Like the stuff they do in Days of Future Past. Well, all of the, yeah, exactly. Or, um, Good yeah, Lord. Like, damn, how, did that, how do you make sense of that? What would the TVA do if, like, they needed to prune Jean because she decided to, like, make a different choice at some point in time? There's that. Know? There's also the rules of Endgame <laughs> that apply to the MCU, yeah. which obviously yes. didn't fucking apply to the Fox universe's time travel, but now they have to coexist, which is impossible. Mm -hmm. All These are all just fun details, everybody, that nobody cares to, to rip into, but well, if those I were the mean... actual only problems, this would be fine, but they're not. I'm just putting it out they're there. Not. So, uh, I guess on top of everything that we've just said, uh, what did let's let's just talk about Mister Paradox himself. His his uh, yeah. job is he's been hired to oversee the gradual destruction of a timeline which can take as much as a thousand years. Now he says that as though you would have to watch it all. So I guess he's immortal, uh, as are all the people in the TVA. I think there was something about I that. I assume in they're immortal. Yeah. yeah. And so um, he's like, why would I want to do that? Boring. I'll just kill the universe myself, which is something we used to do. He says that. They used to, they used to do it, which is true. In, in Loki Season 1, they would put a little time grenade down. It would wipe out the whole um, universe that's come off from the sacred timeline. It, it just kills it all. Yep. Uh, it's very efficient. the whole timeline. But Everyone course, in it. Loki Season 2, they were like, no, no, no. That's inhumane. We're not going to do that anymore. So we assume then that it's not necessarily... Uh, anything other than the fact that it's, it's a moral decision within the organization. And they've told him it is his district to look after the end of the Fox universe. And he's decided he's going to impress the higher-ups by ending it faster than they expected. Alre like, I've not even scratched the surface of this character. That's already nonsense. They, they told you yeah. to do the thing because they believe it's the right thing to do, not because they don't know a more efficient way. We know that there is a more efficient way. It's what we saw in exactly, Loki. and yeah, they specifically didn't want that instantly. He knows that. He he's aware. He yeah. he references it, and then he's well, like, "I'm going to get my time ripper," which I for all it way quicker. yeah, for all intents and purposes, his time ripper is just a less efficient time grenade that they had before. Yeah. But so what do you think they're going to say to you when you delete it quicker? They'll be like, oh, that's not what we told you to do. <laughs> that's, that's because actually remember, a, that's I, the whole point of us deploying you here to do this. Yeah, a countless amount of entire lives and civilizations rising and falling are going to happen between the timeline being doomed and the thousand years, however long it takes for that universe to end. And whatever uh, manner that that happens, sorry. we don't need, we don't, I don't even think, I don't even think they actually say it, but obviously allowing it to live for thousands of years is at least thousands of years worth of people being born, living, dying, creating, Which doing is, uh, basically like incalculable number of people. Yeah, it's a whole cosmos's worth of people. Yes. Um, someone just mentioned, by the way, I guess you didn't notice the reference to uh, Tony dying means the end for the MCU as an anchor being. We're talking about the story. We're not talking about like, oh, they made a reference to a thing. And I like that. I, I, I really couldn't care less if they said, fucking, don't you hate fat YouTubers who lie about their cancer? I'd be like, oh, my God, did you get that? That was a reference to book. I'd be talking about like, why the fuck did Deadpool say that? What, what was the context for that? What the fuck is he even talking about? Like, we can't let... Like, what do you think films would become if we just if said they're amazing meta. just because they agree with what we think about certain things? Which, by the way, we will get to. There's a, a certain set of lines where I started to notice a pattern with this film. Um, but we're trying to talk it's about so, the story. Something isn't, something isn't good just because it has a, a, a meta reference, just because it works in multiple ways. That doesn't automatically make it good. It doesn't automatically well, give the, it a free pass. Uh, a lot of the Marvel movies that people think are cringe have meta references about, like, the MCU. Yeah, I mean, John I Krasinski's they... Reed Richards was a reference to fan casting. That doesn't make it good. Yeah. If anything, you can argue that that made the movie worse in a you could. special way. But obviously, what we try to do first is take it for what it is in the story, and then we'll talk about yep. like what people felt about it as a result of it being a particular way, which we'll get to yep. gradually. You guys already have detected how we feel about this film. We're just trying to explain how they wrote it and what all of this is supposed to mean to generate stakes and what it's actually doing, because they very ineptly 
brokenly shoved this in. Yeah. Um, that's Deadpool wrong. 3 is, it is a movie that has characters, it has a plot, it is a sequence of events, uh, loosely or not, so it is a story. It will be engaged with as a story. They wrote it, so we're going through it. Now, um, Mr. Paradox, so like I said, that, that, that's his core motivation, it's already completely fucked, because the second they find out that he's done any of this, he is doomed. And it seems as though they actually reference the fact that he seems to be aware of that. His whole team are aware that what they're doing is not sanctioned. And for some reason, they think that if they complete the job, that would get them a promotion when all it's going to do is have the result it has at the end of the film, which is that they get reprimanded and then told that what they did was wrong and possibly go to jail. That's it. Time jail. I don't even know the how to time crime. like what else is there to say it's like they t they tell you to do like like care for someone until they reach the end of their life and then he says I could just mercy kill them and then does it and they're like yeah we knew that you could do that we have the whole facility to do that that's not what we told you to do in fact what you've just done by their new rules would act as like mass murder no absolutely it should so <laughs> I don't know what the fuck he's doing, and uh, he gets the exact result that one would expect from what he's doing in this film. Um, oh, I don't by the way, know... this, this whole thing about his, um, his motivation, a paradox, this is another kind of prime example of relying on the things that came before in order to have this exist, but also completely and totally being in contradiction. Well, wait, with but have you considered his name is Paradox, so of course his motivations don't make sense, it's meta. Oh, well, what about the stuff that does make sense? Don't yeah, because oh, well, paradoxes no, that, don't that, exist. No, that, so. that's when you need to pay attention to the writing. I see. Because, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, oh, you know, it doesn't stop there, right? So Paradox's logic is to uh, conduct the mission better than they could have imagined, and he's just going to get fucked over for that. But one part of the mission is to move Deadpool from one universe to the other. Why would part of that be to explain to Deadpool that his whole universe filled with everyone he loves is going to die, and why would you think that would work? Yeah, like, what, what do you think he's going to say to that? Oh, cool. You're just okay <laughs> with this, right? Okay, I'm going to assume you are because of how nonchalantly I just tell In you fact, that this you is know, going to happen. It's probably not a good idea to tell somebody who is very, very, very potentially impossible to kill uh, about your evil plan. He was very willing directly, to kill. That directly affects the only people in his life, like, the, 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 that will destroy a universe that includes all of the people in his life that he cares about. Someone, someone just pointed out, and I kind of agree, it's like, you haven't even stated Paradox's motivation, it's like, yeah, they don't really give it, I guess he just wants more power, he wants to, I think he says something along the lines of he wants to be the TVA. Which Whatever is like, that means. Well, you won't, that, this is the opposite of that, you're gonna get fired at best. You know what I mean? It's like, what the yeah. fuck are you doing, man? But, um, you know, to make things even worse for himself, yes, he's gonna... Instead, so you could do this. Deadpool's walking around, you open up a uh, floomy thing below him, maybe when he's sleeping, and it puts him directly into the sacred timeline, just drops him on the floor, close it, and don't say a word. That's it. He's just gotta deal with the fact that he's in a different universe now, he'll be confused, he'll try and talk to people about it, but whatever. Telling him about the TVA is already, I think, somewhat of a huge breach of the continuity of the sacred timeline. How could you have a being in there that knows full well what the TVA is and cares to help people and save people when the nature of the TVA is they control almost everything? Because, yeah, what happens listen, if, It's because um, a long time ago... This is, Kang set this up a long time ago, okay? This is all going according to plan. Deadpool 3, the meta reference, this is all part of the plan. You what happens think. if um, it gets out and then a Celestial finds out, he's like, nah, I don't like this, and then he goes there and kills all of them? That won't happen. No, but what, what would the TVA do if a Celestial showed up? How are they going to prune it with their stick? Well, hell, what, what would happen <laughs> if Deadpool just took a sword and chopped off Paradox's head? Which That's is a great question. That, that, which that, which that is be, what should have happened, by the, the way. End. Yes. That would, that, be would be, that would be in character for Deadpool to do. If someone yeah. told him that, he would just take out his sword and he would chop off his head. It, he'd brutally murder him. No, it's not even well, murder. He'd brutally kill him right on the spot. Well, I mean, Deadpool, like the TVA guys got no chance against Deadpool. Yeah, um, they're just some guys. Like, so why wouldn't he just immediately, like, put an end to this entire... He would do it. That's of course the thing. he would, yeah. He would do it. I was kind of expecting him to do it. 
Even though I already, even though this Deadpool in this movie is just a different well, Deadpool remember, um, than the ones from the first two, Paradox. I would still expect him to do that. Paradox is kind of the head of the snake with this organization. Everyone else seems very uh, submissive to his psycho ideas. So killing him might actually very well have been, especially with whether he explains his full like case to Deadpool. Foolishly, by the way, a lot of people do. It's very bad After exposition in this him film. With adamantium swords. Yes. And um, blue armor. And, and just for reference, because some people are like, wait, can he even hurt him? It's like, he, um, he breaks his nose, but he doesn't hurt him further than that. Oh. I mean, we know that we, he can hurt him because the TVA people are just people. Um, yep. just well, not just that, but we, people. in reference, uh, it's, it's always best if you can get references from the actual film because. In this film, know, he just, yeah, he, there's, he kills there's a that, bunch of TVA But there's also agents. what Cassandra does to him as well. He, you can definitely kill him yeah. if you want to. He's tangible. He's, it's um, a bit of a problem with the TVA as an institution. It's like, okay, so the TVA is meant to be super duper powerful, but in a multiverse that includes these incredibly immensely powerful beings, all of the TVA is just like regular people. Not even regular people with a handful of so them having like, you know, abilities. They're just people. They're just regular people. Yeah, with, they're kind with of shitty people to too. People. They're not even like good people. But um, yeah, well, I can't... The problem is like, what does it even mean that they're people like when they exist beyond time, but yet time progresses and they yeah, rely well, on I mean, like, It's funny because Loki, or something. Loki season two seemed to want to maybe approach answering that question and like fumbled it completely. Like the people of the yep. TVA. They're cap. They're mm -hmm. aren't they? They're captured from alternate universes or yeah, something like that. They're yeah, variants. Yeah. No, they're, they're all variants. variants. Yeah. They're all variants. Which is funny because variant doesn't even mean anything. That everything is a variant because everything, everything varies from something. Unless you just have it be well, no. The the ones in, in the six one six timeline. They're well, yeah, I mean, they're all just people. The sacred timeline being six one six. That's arbitrary from the point of view of someone like a Kang, right? It's just like that's just yeah. But the difference is that in plain text, like the yeah. omniscient hand of the writer declared that it was six one six, the sacred timeline. Uh. Um, <sighs> so yeah, uh, Mister Paradox decides to explain the entire situation his orders, how he wants to subvert those orders against their wishes in order to gain more power, basically explaining way too much, and then outfits Deadpool with his full power kit, and then explains to him he wants to kill everyone he loves, and uh, expects this to go smoothly. It's just it's just horrifically badly written. There's nothing else to really say. Um, Remember in Escape from New York, how they gave Pliskin all of his gear? And then they had all of the bullets in his magazine be blanks, so that when he tries to kill him with that first magazine, it just fires a bunch of blanks and they laugh at him. We're like, haha, we knew you were going to do that. It's, it's all blanks. Now go do the mission. I don't know why you'd reference that, Rags. I mean, I don't know why that would come up at all. Whatever, you know. Oh, it was just, it was just a fun little movie. Yeah, a fun with little that yeah. guy. Yeah. It was just a fun little movie, and I don't know. It, it was. It was it was it was kind of, it was a fun movie. I hate the TVA. It's, uh... I hate them too. I fucking hate the TVA. I actually hate the TVA. One of the worst the decisions TVA. they ever made. One of the worst um, introductions to the MCU. The amount of damage that the TVA has dealt is catastrophic. Yeah, I mean, it was it. They ruin everything. They actually do ruin everything in terms of story and stakes. They loom forever. Over every single well, thing. Well, not only did they loom over it, but their um their presence is so destructive that it has now infected previously safe um yeah. continuities. Yeah, now the Fox X Men right. universe now exists in subservience to the TBA and the MCU, and you could, I suppose, in a sense, you could say that this applies to the other Spider Man films as well. Um, I would assume so. I mean, it, also, I mean, it does, uh, essentially. <laughs> is, it was this, uh, like, idea from a lot of different people, but it's just like, it would have been so sweet if they kidnap him, they introduce the idea of the Time Ripper, and then once he, they make clear they're immoral, horrific beings that should never be in control of what they have, they are, yeah. uh, Deadpool finds a way to activate the Time Ripper to destroy specifically the TVA. It just rips and tears them out of the universe, so it's just now that all that's left is the multiverse. There is nothing that operates upon Binds it. Binds you know? them together. Yeah. yeah, each one is. Yeah. God, that would have been so Which much fucking been, better. Oh, that would have been so, so good. And Deadpool then you can use Cable's device to find Wolverine, and you can have your movie. You didn't need the TVA. It was it was such a bad idea. 
and they don't. I hate the TVA. There's a mistake a lot of people make. Is like, well, they only have the TVA to make fun of them. It's like they don't. <laughs> they, they do not. They there's a scene where he kills a bunch TVA. of them, um, but they don't make any particular reference to the TVA being a caustic, fucking idiotic, horrifying effect on the writing of anything. No, but Remember, and, Disney and like it's, Loki they, they, so much that they yeah, it's like the only one they made a season big, two for yeah. in Marvel. They think it's really great, and they think the TVA is super cool. Yeah, and they thought this was a good idea. They thought, ah, see, this is how we'll integrate Deadpool into the Marvel universe through the yeah. TVA that we've established that makes a lot of sense. People love that TVA. Oh boy, it's so good. It's just the the wonderful, beautiful glue that just. Binds all of it together. Oh, we're so clever for coming up with the TVA. They just work so well. And that's the thing. Is, uh, we're not done with them. They'll be back. Because obviously he's uh, stolen uh. the Tempad, which is a disaster, by the way, for the TVA to have a rogue element who despises the organization, is fully aware of them, with access to you a Tempad. You think you need to log in to one of those with like a password well, or no, something? Is we know Sylvie just took one. Yeah, well, to be honest, Rex, you think, you'd think they'd be able to recall them. Like, wherever they've just been yeah. taken, fuck it, they can be recalled, because they're too yeah, important. Button and, yeah. Uh, yeah, it boops out of existence. Yeah, it, or if it's not held by someone with a TVA or someone, it just breaks or it fizzles out or it just turns off or something. Mm -hmm. There's a weird part before he goes, by the way, where um, Mr. Paradox is talking about the anchor beings and Wade thinks he's the anchor being and he says, oh my god, is it me? And Paradox, like, laughs him out of the room, so to speak, right? He's, he's like, it's so hilarious, the notion that Deadpool could ever be the anchor being. There's such a weird reaction, considering he just told him he's so important that he's going to save the sacred timeline. Yeah, you, you have kind of led him to believe that you are referring to him. Like, the, the idea is, like, how could you be a fucking anchor being? It's like, you just told me that I'm going to save the most important, the primary timeline. So I'm so important, you have to move me from another timeline. Yeah. Also, from what we understand about anchor beings, they don't have to do something very, very important. No. Like, purposefully. They just have to be the anchor being. I mean, yeah, Lo like, I'm not trying to undermine thing. Logan at all. He saved some kids. Um, it was incredibly noble, and I very much enjoy how they did the scene, but he didn't save the multiverse, you know what I mean? He didn't save the universe. He didn't save a burning building filled with, like, a thousand people or whatever the fuck. He, he saved the kids, and you'd, you'd think in the grand scheme of things... Um, I mean, they'd be. They should. I mean, judging from the events of the fucking Fox universe, there should probably be a lot of anchor beings, you know. I mean, Charles. Yeah. <laughs> like. Hmm. I I don't know how it's like. I don't know how it's determined, but <laughs> it's like, it's all right then. Um. Well, and it implies that the cosmos has a will of its own, like that exists even beyond the TVA. Yeah, anchor being it's kind of like it's like the canon events in Spider Man. Well, like, it's, why, it's like what is it about ordained by God or something? Like, yeah, why is it that these works. events or this one individual is just that important? Was it what is there something in their atoms? Is there something in their molecular structure that binds a universe? Like, why? How come the universe doesn't just carry on? Like the laws of physics exist, and all this stuff is just normal. Why? 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 Why indeed? Uh, and we've kind of gone over are. all of time is happening all the time at the TVA, so none of this ever made any sense anyway in terms of things are happening mm -hmm. and they have effects on other things in real time when it's all time. You know, I don't even I, I don't even know how to bet. I think this. I think half the people in chat are gonna be like, "What the fuck did you just say?" And I'll be like, "Yeah, I know. It's it's so difficult to explain this, but that's the price. The TVA. It's it's a it's a cataclysm. It just collapses over and over and over and over and over again." Um, but this is all the rules that they assigned the TVA to to make work. And now, you know, remember, incursions, we mentioned them a couple of times. That's another thing that got established in MOM, but it's being completely ignored here. Forget. You can't move and, and course, Deadpool into the sacred timeline. You can't do that. No, because his existence there will destroy that timeline. That was a definitive... That's, that's one of the most important plot elements of MOM. It's the de definitive rule the whole film is fucking based on, and... We've already mm -hmm. forgotten it. It's and, like, and okay. It's unfortunately got to be very burdensome for them going forward with multiverse. Yes. Uh, by the way, when explaining that Wolverine is the anchor being, they're playing the fucking clip of him dying, and they have Mr. Paradox mouthing along to the words. We will uh, talk about that later. I want to talk more about, about all of it later, but... um. 
It just mm-hmm. it just bothers me. Uh, that scene is very important, and so having that fucking idiot being like, "Oh, this is what it feels like," while playing the clip on screen, and the people just being like, "Oh yeah," and then being like, "This was such a good sacrifice that it killed the universe." It's just none of it sits right. It so, feels really. Anyway. <sighs> anyway, what happens next? If we're even done talking about this. I know, right? Is it, I'm trying I mean, to catch it, everything before we move on, but we'll probably move a little never around will. as well. You, you can't. Um, Deadpool first chooses to go to the gravesite of Logan because his logic is Logan is a regenerative mutant. Like, he doesn't, he doesn't die, he regenerates. This is the opening, like, thing of the movie. It's just like it's like Deadpool's so stupid he thinks that Logan was just lying in his grave for years, just alive. But all, but also remember because the Tempad is a time and space traveling machine, that means he has traveled forward in the continuity of his world. Oh to shit! Right. Uh, fucking hell! Uh, or, that's or sometime after that because if he just went <sighs> back to his timeline, Wolverine then would be there. Wolverine would be alive. Remind, okay, so shit, you're right. Uh, the beginning uh, of the film was 2018. Six years pass, yeah. 2024, he goes to the TVA, then, he then goes to the end of Logan, which is 2029. Or maybe even later, because... Or it maybe even later. Quite, uh, quite, Good uh, fucking decay. god, I forgot about that. It's such a bad yeah. fuck-up. It's not... It, it's, it's because they don't realize that Logan actually didn't happen. Like, Deadpool films take place before Logan. Logan is the last film in the Fox X-Men timeline, which, bear in mind... There should be multiple Fox X Men timelines. The there is the the uh, like it shouldn't have been if if the Fox X Men universe works on Marvel uh, MCU rules, which it has to, if it exists in that continuity, then Days of Future Past did not delete um you know the Sentinels and everything like that. That was a timeline that still ran to the destruction of the world, and then they created an alternate timeline, which is the timeline that Deadpool lives in. But he had to travel forward in time yes, to go dig yes. up uh, Wolverine's uh, grave instead of going to 2024 <sighs> in his own timeline and finding Wolverine. Uh, or, alternatively, going earlier in time to find a healthier, more in his prime. Or just get the X-Men. Just go back in time to, like, get the X-Men when they were a complete team with, like, Charles and everybody. There should be even Cyborg. more timelines if we're going by the rules of Endgame, and then there should be way less timelines if all of these would have been pruned, Loki timeline why you know what I mean, like season one, all this should have been taken care of before, but then it depends on if it's in real time, which it is and isn't, and they've done nothing to uh, attempt to clear this up, they've only added uh, even more uh, rules and make it even, make even less sense. But you can go forward, yes, but why would he? Okay, well yeah, so let's, let's, let's run this in slow motion, he's like... Logan died, he lo- they lost their anchor being, I need to get him back. So, obviously, because Deadpool is fucking retarded, he says, he's in his grave, which means I just need to dig him out of the grave, and that'll be him. He even says he thinks he's alive and then is annoyed to find out he's not. I have no idea why the fuck they made it that way, other than to have the, the gratuitous sort of digging the grave up. Um, could have written it for any... You could have written it better than that, is what I'm saying. He just thinks he's alive. But, if he is in the TVA in 20... 20- 24 he then yeah. chose in the tempad to move to 2029 or further in order to dig up logan's corpse on the one hand why would you do that yeah. instead of going in 2024 in which apparently logan would have been alive walking around doing things um which is the timeline he was in or rather you so you choose to do that because that's the timeline you're currently in so you're just moving space rather than time if you're gonna move to a preferred time, why wouldn't you move to before he died? Yeah, why wouldn't you go to the 2000s, like, when it was the prime X-Men team? Why would well, you go forward after he was already... Because if he was still alive, remember, Wolverine in Logan is not peak Wolverine. He is very ill. Yeah, he's... Yeah, that's right. He's sick. Go back to him. I... And, and, and it's just like, what, do you actually think that he he's not dead? Are you, are you a fucking idiot? That's what I mean. Like, it's well, just, he's it, taking it, a, it he's, take, he's literally point. taking a dirt nap. 
I don't know what to say about this. Like, it's, it, they, they wrote him to be hyper-retarded, and then for every motivation he has, they make him choose the worst possible the, decision for all of them. The reason why, the reason why it happened is because they wanted Deadpool to dig up uh, Wolverine's grave. That's why they wanted, that's why they did it. But they probably also, I forgot... To... I had to, like, their own push back on a couple of people on different streams for this. For some reason, people think the TVA temp pads can't travel through time. They can. They, the what? TVA temp pads, I, I, that's actually, you just f have forgotten. You've completely forgotten. Like, that's like Loki, their primary is, function. Prim space that and was time. the primary function. They weren't meant to travel to different universes because the TVA's whole point was to eliminate alternate universes. They are time travel machines primarily, and then space traveling machines So secondary. confused, because... Yeah. You are like, like you like have to essentially travel through time when you go to a different universe. Um, it's and I would say if that's something that you don't remember, then you have to simply defer that you are not in a position to like one hundred percent accurately uh, discuss the plot of this film. I mean, I, I wouldn't blame. I don't think people are ready to discuss the plot of this film even when they have recently seen all these things because to keep track of every last fucking rule that has been made to cr generate Basically stakes impossible. is almost impossible, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. this is the nightmare realm of rules. Yeah. But they it's definitely can, stuff. and Deadpool definitely doesn't care about anything other than collecting a living, anchor-being Logan. So he should obviously mm -hmm. go to when he is alive from the Fox universe, and then bring him back and be like, there you go. Which, by the way, would be more interesting, because I don't know what Paradox would say to that. Yeah, like, what if I pull out the anchor? If he being if he said anchor. you can't do that, now you'll you'll undo his sacrifice or whatever. It's like yeah, and save everyone and save the universe. Yeah, which means by the way, you don't have to sit around waiting for him. He should want that. Not why only should Paradox he want that. Why doesn't not only should Paradox want that? Not only should the TVA want that? It's something that um you know like like Logan died to save those kids. Like the kids are gonna die if Logan saves them. So save him some other yeah. way. You can't let him do it because Logan, it'll kill because them all. because he is a hero, yeah, he should say, yeah, don't let me make this sacrifice. It, <laughs> that would be more heroic, oddly enough, in this yeah. scenario. So, upon discovering the corpse, all he needs to do is rewind on the tempad, even one mm -hmm. year, and you'd probably be fine. Oh, and I suppose that's probably something to mention as well. Now when you watch Logan, and you watch the, the ending of that film, which is really great, and you see the yep. long shot on the grave having had the cross turned into an X, yeah, with the X on now it, in, in canon, in continuity, when you watch that film, Deadpool goes there and digs that grave up. And everyone in that universe is going to die. Mm-hmm. It's good old one-two punch, the old razzle-dazzle. Yeah, nobody Good buys Good job, it. MCU. Even the people who like this film would never say that happened after that, even though that's the whole point of this film is yeah, that it no, happened after that. Unfortunately, it yeah, did. Uh, it did now, so yeah, sorry, it did. That's the film, guy. We didn't write it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't yeah. have written it this way, but that's what they chose to write, so... But yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um... We get the opening credits for him killing a bunch of people, and uh, opening credits for Deadpool 1, for those who don't remember, had stuff like produced by Written by the assholes, real heroes here. Written, yeah, yeah, and directed by an overpaid um, idiot. Stuff like that. Um, lots of fun memes. Very, very fun stuff that you just don't see in movies, and you're just like, ooh, neat. And, um, uh, obviously people are properly Deadpool credited too. by the time you get to the credit credits, but those are the opening credits where they get to have fun. Mm -hmm. And then Deadpool 2 does the same thing with more memes. Well, yeah, but Deadpool then... 2 changes it up. Instead of being, like, written by assholes, it's, like, reacting to the event that just happened, which is Vanessa getting shot. And it well, says, I, wait, what the I fuck? I think it's the real villains here or something. To yeah, play and it says, was, Ryan wasn't willing to give up the spotlight. Um, how could you kill her when everyone fucking liked her? Stuff like that in the opening. Which yeah. we did, because she was the, a cool character. Yes, the point being that I distinctly remember in the theater people fucking loved the uh, opening credits for Deadpool because they it's were like not expecting it. It's like a play on Bond as well, right? Deadpool 2. Yeah. It's, Good uh, stuff. Yes, that's right. Um, um, now, the thing is, when I was watching this film and um, the, the opening, uh, you know, intro started, the, the thing that really, it, when I started seeing like, oh, Ryan Reynolds, Hugh Jackman, and then listing the producers, I was like, huh, that's odd. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, not, that's not how you did it before. 
And immediately mm. I was like, ah, because this is Disney. This is corporate. This is something that they probably were told that they had to do. Um, that they weren't allowed to have it be memes because everybody wanted to have proper credit and billing and everything. That was a distinct impression I got. And I was like, damn, huh. That's hmm. a shame. Um, also, I mean, we're, you know, coming to... Uh, someone just mentioned, so you guys didn't get the joke of Disney raping corpses. Um, does the joke work when they're raping corpses? Oh, yeah, well, it does, Mahler, because they said they're doing it. Right, right. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, what did you expect? I was expecting memes. I was well, expecting I was. like the first two we, dead. Um, so, so when we mentioned I, I Deadpool one and two, that was to let people know that that was the way they used to do it. That's what Deadpool had as like a fun factor, as a uh, you know, like a like was a flair. They, they were willing to make fun of themselves such that they just did what you're not supposed to do, which is that they didn't credit properly. Instead, they did memes. Yeah. Um, but now it's like, well, no, it's too important that you need to make sure that everybody's got proper billing and crediting, you know, all the producers, editors, you know, everything in the opening credits, which there's nothing like wrong with that. I mean, it's normal, uh, it, but that's the thing. It's normal. It's not it's not as unique as it was before. Yeah, Tim Miller Deadpool would not right? approve of it. Tim Miller is one of the undertakers of Terminator, so I have issues with him. OK, um, <laughs> however, him willing to have his name be referred to as like the assholes paid too much in the opening of Deadpool one is very cool. That is a uh, thumbs up to you because a lot of people have way too much ego to allow something like that to happen. People, for example, who might put the complete full straight names in this intro uh, without fail. It's just like uh, there's a lot of decisions yeah. in Deadpool three that I would rate as corporate. And you might be like, they're mm -hmm. all corporate. And I'm like, eh, it's a scale. <laughs> like the the first yeah, one. Definitely definitely a scale, yeah. and, and is this being a thing that like happens because of course we are going chronologically, but obviously this happens at the beginning of the film. Yeah. When I saw that, it was like, oh, damn. That was that was just what I got from it. It was like, oh. Okay. Oh, all right. Well, okay. I you know, I like the memes, but I guess, yep, all right, it's all gotta be proper now. Yes. Because um, uh, Deadpool is no longer the underdog film that had to fight for its existence, that had limited access to its own continuity, that had a, a much smaller budget than, um, than uh, comparable superhero films. Now it is the big boy. Yeah, it's unfortunately it succeeded. It's other Marvel films that have come out in the last few years. Yeah, so it's... Yeah. Um, yes, in a sense, unfortunately, it succeeded. <laughs> Now oh, it's God, yeah. to, uh, started yeah. ballooning. The budget started ballooning, and it started to be more important than um, and and consequently in less of a position to be kind of irreverent, um, in a in a really earnest sense. Also, the TVA are hyper retarded in this sequence. Uh, all they need to do is open a portal below him to capture him. And but none instead, of them do. they just run at him with their little pokey things. And we not... know. Whoa, have you? Have you, because I mean, do people, have you explained what's happening in this uh, sequence? Right. Uh, well, uh, you know, Logan's corpse is dug up, and then Deadpool takes it apart piece by piece and kills the TVA with what feels at this point just like every piece of, every significant piece of the skeleton is pretty much used. Um, so, um, yeah, so when you're watching Logan, and when he says this is what it feels like, and then he dies, and then he gets buried, and you have the long shot in his grave. In continuity, his grave not only gets dug up, but his body, his corpse, is used to kill a bunch of TVA agents. Um, in canon! That's in canon. This is what's happening. That this is in is, canon. Uh, yeah. I thought that the stunt dancer for Deadpool did an excellent job of dancing to I agree. Bye Bye I, Bye. I like, I like yeah. the dancing. I like dancing the Dancing is fun. Um, Talented guy. Yes. I've seen that there was discourse on Twitter where people were saying people like the Deadpool dancing, but they didn't like the She-Hulk dancing. That's I... hypocritical. That oh. is hilarious that that was something that someone felt compelled to say. Oh, well, yeah, the Deadpool scene's way worse. What? I just meant, I meant like <laughs> the, um, I meant that it's just stupid to say that if you dislike dancing once, you have to dislike it forever. I think that's stupid. I, I can't be bothered to entertain it. I'm just like, fuck off. As if anyone's actually having the discussion to detail exactly what is wrong with the setup in She-Hulk versus Deadpool. In it. You know what I mean? It's, it's all just... Oh, it's, it feels like memes. There's a difference between a cringe CGI character doing a cringe dance compared to a full-blown choreographed dance sequence. 
But it did have Megan the They're Stallion open. in it, or the Stallion, whatever. Megan the Stallion. Yes. I don't get it. Stallions are male, by definition. I think <laughs> she's a lady. It's strange to me. Wasn't that like creative a, decision? Wasn't that a mid credits thing that scene? I can't remember anymore. It was in one. That it, was, was, uh, it was like a mid credit or post credit scene for yeah. I think like episode three or four, fairly early on. Man, imagine they made a She Hulk season two. They won't. There's no way. Uh, the, yeah, they ain't making no. Do you think they'll make a Loki season three, or do you think that's done? Uh, I, I think it's done because of like where they felt that it ended as being like yeah, done, Loki being the be... time god. I mean, they've signaled their desire. Oh, all to of this is them. Loki's fault more than the TVA. It's also their fault, but isn't it like even more Loki's um, fault because he's presiding over all of the? That's time? a great question, Rags. I have no clue what Loki's doing right now. All um, right. I'm sure you'll turn up in Avengers Doom, Doomsday. Was it? Doom Squad, yeah. Doom Squad. Doom, Doom Force. Squad. Doom Force. Uh. So Doom. yeah, this, they're very stupid. Dead Deadpool. Kills them all, um, and then, you know, what's the next port of call? And Deadpool decides to visit random Logans in random universes. Instead of just... Instead, instead of just going back in time. time. Just his own, yeah. Yep. Yeah, instead of um, back in time. Obviously, if I were with him, and we were about to go on this adventure, I'd be like, wait, uh, I think they said this guy, like, he was... Anchor Beings is, like, special or whatever, so grabbing any Logan probably wouldn't do it. This is not a thought Deadpool okay. has, but he's not allowed to because the plot wouldn't let him. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Deadpool does thoughts. Not anymore. He's uh, clearly not anymore. Not a stupid guy. Um, like that. That's not. It's, I don't think that was supposed to be the character. He's just retarded uh, with everything. But obviously, like it would be much more it was stupid before. Interesting to discuss if it weren't that a lot of the Duratata decisions facilitate the plot, right? It, it, obviously, everything is falling apart in order to get us to where they want, which is going to be Cameo City, everybody. Mm -hmm. We're on the Ooh, way. Boy. In fact, um, we're starting it's, now. It's, oh. I, uh, I think to, to preface this as a section, one of the most disappointing things in Multiverse of Madness was that sequence where you see all of these universes that could have had some time spent in them that would have been interesting to see what those worlds would look like how to maneuver through those worlds but instead it's all just crammed into a really short sequence where basically the whole point is for one or two seconds you just go oh i recognize that but then it's done yeah um anyway uh can you t what's what's this sequence uh that we're well why don't you describe it to us Looking for Wolverines. Doesn't seem to have any system to it. He's just going to visit Wolverines. The first one he visits is in a a, a bar where you can uh, axe throw, which seems kind of neat. I've been axe throwing. It's a lot of fun. You guys should do it if you haven't. Uh, I have not thrown axes. I he, Well, not like officially, mm -hmm. casually. Yeah, of course. When we weren't supposed to, when the adults weren't looking. He meets up with the Wolverine of this given universe, and it is a uh, comic accurate Wolverine, is how he's described. It's, he's very short. Um, now, the, the payoff is supposed to be seeing him short. The confusing part is uh, uh, Deadpool leaves when he sees that he's short. As he's disqualified. You can't be the anchor being if yeah you, i guess you don't, not. it's like a roller coaster well, there I is mean, a minimum well, height requirement for being the anchor in being. the comics wolverine is fairly short doesn't make him any less formidable well it's, it, that's why I mean, if I anything it makes him more terrifying because he can get into smaller spaces oh well, no, well i mean not to you know, places when you aren't expecting like him the whole idea of wolverine is that wolverine punches above like a wolverine punches above its weight wolverines are like notably ferocious and um they're really cool little critters um, that seemingly are able to, to the point that people wonder if there was a time when a Wolverine killed a bear. <laughs> like, you know, Wolverine's short, because Wolverines are kind of small, but they, they surprise you with how ferocious they are. The excuse given for the other ones is that uh, they try to kill him, but this one seems to be willing to talk at the very least, and uh, Deadpool just doesn't try. He just leaves. Uh... Well, I don't know why the others want to kill him so much, so quickly, so violently. Well, so yeah, that would be the next one. Uh, these are these are a lot of these are comic references. Uh, the next one, I think, is because you got the eye patch one, the one without the arm, uh, old man Logan. Um, all three of them try to kill him, and uh, the Henry Cavill Logan does as well. 
Yes, there was a Henry Cavill Logan. I, uh, that was the, the highlight little... cameo for a lot of people. Was, yes, this is the this is the one that I'm like, eh. and then yeah, that was like a hey. Like, yeah. We're so, gonna treat you better than those guys down the road. I hope they give him more than just. Well, I hope they give him if they give him a role that it's well written. Um, well, I hope <laughs> they I hope they treat him better than Deadpool in Deadpool Three. The thing I'm confused about is why would we assume they're doing Cavill Wolverine anytime soon when. We're, we're assuming uh, it's all but confirmed that Wolverine is going to be in both Avengers films. Well, and also when um when Kevin Feige has definitely been jumping on the bandwagon of only Hugh Jackman can play Wolverine. He will say that for now yeah, like, until they need to recast Avengers. Let's put it this way: if yeah. if it's going to be Hugh Jackman's in uh, Wolverine in, in in Avengers the next two, then production on a new film that relates to the X Men or Wolverine specifically with a recasted Wolverine, which by the way. I, I mean, as long as Hugh Jackman's willing, they'll probably always use him. The idea that we're getting a Henry Cavill Wolverine in as much as five years from now, when he's already how old? Well, like, he'd be in his 40s by then. He's, um, I mean, if he's willing to, I'm on board to try it out. It'd be really, really but fun. I, I but it's highly unlikely they would want to get a much younger actor in all likelihood. They're well, probably they make that thought, joke in Deadpool. Uh, the joke they make. They make the joke about being getting people who are really young to to be in you know to star in new franchises so that they could you know get milk for forever so that they could be used for a long time. That is a Deadpool joke. Um, but oh, the thing Henry is, Cavill is already forty. Yeah, no shot, no oh. chance. Yeah, uh, yeah, it might be. Maybe they'll grab him for um, a one-off or something. I just uh, I don't maybe. expect them to It'll recast be... Wolverine with Henry Cavill. I, I don't expect that myself. Nah, uh, it'll There's be no someone. Way. Totally new, and and remember, this is again, yeah. At, at the earliest would be twenty twenty eight, um. So, and that's the earliest, like the absolute earliest. They want to get someone younger. Yeah, because there's some suggestions like, could he do old man Wolverine? It's like, wouldn't they get Hugh Jackman for old man Wolverine? Yeah, they would. Um, and presumably they would want a Wolverine who would be willing to commit potentially for the next decade, which is going to be easier if they're in their thirties compared to if they're in their forties or fifties. Yeah. We'll see. Fun I little joke, though. Uh, in any case, yes, the other Wolverines keep killing Deadpool, and as much as um, that might be reason enough to try a different Wolverine, uh, did he explain to any of the ones that were killing him that he needs them to save the multiverse? Slash the but universe? also, like, did he never encounter a Wolverine who was just chilling at Xavier's Apparently not. Mansion? Which is like, strange. Like, probably wouldn't have been fighting him. Wait, you mean yeah. like the Wolverine that we see in multiple X-Men movies? Oh, that uh, one, yeah. yeah. Well, what's funny, Rags, is he encounters that the worst the of the worst one. Wolverines who is not willing to immediately kill him. You'd think maybe oh, it would be the other way around. Interesting. <laughs> the other yeah, thing as well I, is I, yeah. the comic reference where he's, uh, like, crucified on an X, you'd think maybe, like, like he just decides, oh, I'll leave you, but it's like, well, could, you Help could get him, him down and yeah. maybe he's, is he not worthwhile? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe that's the guy. Thanks for getting me down. Is there any way that I could repay you, my dude? <laughs> yeah. I don't... Because, uh, obviously, this scene is meant to be like, look at all these comic references. But it'd be nice if they put Pretty effort well. into any of them, in terms of contextualizing yeah. them. Well, I mean, I suppose um, uh, what what is the difference between this as a sequence of just look thing you recognize, compared to any of the many of these that we have seen in a lot of films over the last few years that people don't like? Yeah. I mean, this is kind of the equivalent it... of the, as, as was mentioned, right, the, I, don't, I don't know what you'd call it, but when they smash through a whole bunch of universes in MOM, that, that sequence. Or, uh, or, or the Flash. Yeah. It's true, that's it's, right. It's tacky, as far as I'm concerned, and it's pandering, because there's no substance behind it, they are showing you this to get you to react with a, oh, I recognize that, yes. Which is, um, fleeting, to say the the least. I will say, I, I thought the costume for the, uh, I think they, they said it was the John Byrne Wolverine, the um, the brown and yellow. I thought that was a really neat costume. I've seen people talking about hopefully they bring that back for a full, uh, you know, uh, uh, installment. Which one are you talking about? I... It's the one where they show him fighting Hulk. Oh, I think I know which one you're talking about, yeah. Um... Yeah, the the, the <laughs> and the Hulk fight doesn't get shown as well. By the way, you already see Hulk from a very awkward angle. I find it all to be um, very. What would be the word for this? Very. Uh, 
Only I was about to say it's something like the word laboratory is coming to my head. So like it's all focus tested specifically to get particular reactions. Synthetic. Yeah, that's a way to put it for sure. Um, it's very forced, very artificial, very much designed to do the thing yeah, that it absolutely artificial did. Is... Calculated is another. Yeah, that would be another way to put it. It's um, this is all very deliberate for what they were after, and they got it. Concocted, maybe. Yeah. Clinical. That's probably the word I was. Clinical. After. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Clinical's one. Yeah, clinical, artificial, synthetic. Yeah, not real. Good. Not earnest. Selection. In any case, uh, he's not having luck until he moves into a bar with a Wolverine that is going to be the one that we're going to be taking through to the rest of the movie. Exciting stuff. He's he's very depressed. He's uh, he's drinking and he's he's kind of like a, a, at a low point. We don't really know a lot about him at this point, but hey, you know whatever we'll do, we'll do. Uh, Deadpool even says he thinks like this one might be the one just because of the fact he hasn't tried to kill him yet. Again, just seems odd. Not sure why they did, but all right. But I guess they will. really want to. Yeah, I guess all the other Wolverines are just psycho killers, but not. I, Hey, it's the multiverse, right? There's a... Uh, I, uh, bad luck. Um, Just weird that they all do. So he wants him to come with him, and Wolverine's like, no. And then he puts a gun to his head, and then and then, and then Wolverine's just drinking the whole bottle he's got, being like, fuck you, and uh, I guess knocks himself out, kind of. And so Devil's like, well, I'll just take you there myself. And he notices that uh, he's wearing... A particular outfit and when he gets him back to the tva he's like look this only took or i think he says it to the camera sorry uh this only took 20 fucking years which i thought was kind of odd um and i always do in these films they've been they solved the costume problem somewhat a while ago they've been trying to incorporate more and more of the actual designs from comics the uh, visually both in costume environment Whatever have you, an aesthetic. They've. They, uh, I don't know which film we would pick in the continuity, not the continuity, the, the, the chronology of film to say that they started to not be embarrassed about their sources for aesthetic design. But um, to, to be like, it only took 20 fucking years. I, I, I thought it was an interesting, very overt, like, appreciate the fact that we're giving you this, which to me lines up with the other stuff we were talking about. It's very, very deliberate. Again, we could go with a clinical. It's like, uh, they're not going to do much for the writing, especially not going to be inspired by anything from the source material, but you'll get an outfit you like. And we know you guys like to post on social media about that, you know? Yep. Make your tweets about the costume. Get your likes. And uh, they still fail miserably at so many other costumes. I happen to know that because I do Real BBC every week and I get to hear about how much uh, costumes are being failed in different ways, shapes and forms all the time. So I, I find this to be, much like the other references we've had so far, pandering. I feel like it's them, being, them saying, look, we're the ones that did the right thing. It's like, you guys are the ones that do the wrong thing all the time. Well, you know, I mean, we, because something that you said that's interesting, I suppose what you could say is that at least this film doesn't do what a lot of the Marvel films do, which is make fun of it while still using it. Um, the go-to example I will always point to is She-Hulk making fun of the um, gold and red uh, Deadpool suit. Not Deadpool, uh, Daredevil Dear suit. Devil. Yeah. While um, they'll make fun of that while still leveraging it for marketing. Um, yeah, Deadpool me. does make fun of the suit. Am I forgetting? What What did he say? He says, I'm guessing your X-Men friends forced you to wear that. Um, uh, I don't know what would possess someone to force someone to go out dressed as a mascot for some football team, he says. Uh, Alright, never mind. <laughs> Alright, well there you go. Um, never mind. I can't remember if there's another reference to him making fun of it, but of course the suit looks awesome. Um, I way prefer it mm -hmm. to the black spandex of the original trilogy, for lack of a better way to describe them. Uh, I... They even reference it in the original trilogy. Yeah, well... that, that cause, because says, the, what would you prefer, yellow spandex? That was the insecurity or those no, times, was, uh, right? It's the... The insecurity Cyclops also, says because, that. Uh, also because the Matrix had just come out as well. Yes, the 2000s were a um, special time. But yes. The leather. <laughs> That was uh that was a time when yes there was very much a, well we got to make it cool and it can't be cool if it's yellow which is a bit unhinged. 
<laughs> for me, I right? Yellow just... is yellow is a famously uncool color. Yeah. <laughs> to make it clear, for me, I love those. Uh, not just the fact that they are respecting the source material they're adapting. That's really cool. But also the costumes just looking fucking good. These are things I wish weren't spotlighted and said to be the very fucking reason you should check out these films. It's like, no, that should just be there. That should just not even be a thing that's like it crazy. Should be, it should be expected and assumed that you're going to be... Yeah, it bugs me that, that they're almost like fast-tracking to an A rank before we've even got writing just because they have the costume correct. It's like, whoa, we're, mm. we're far away from the movie being safe with the costume being right. Um, anyway, be the thing that tips the scale. They waddle in. Wolverine falls to the ground drunk, and Deadpool says, "Here you are. I've got your anchor being." And fucking Paradox goes on a rant about how this is the worst Wolverine. This Wolverine let down his entire world. He's the stuff of legend. Some things are absolutely beyond forgiveness, and what he did is just that. Now, the first Man. question you might have, I know Rags had it, was. How do you know which Wolverine this is? There is an, just to be clear, there is an infinite amount of Wolverines. Literally uncountable. That's a, that's a really good point, Rags. It's, um, Mr. Paradox, you just saw them walk through a portal, had no idea they were even coming. He was like, what the fuck is this? And then he just drops a Wolverine to the ground. You have no idea what the situation is. And he's just like, this is absolutely the worst of the worst. It's like, what? Um, he's right, by the way, uh, which we'll get to further once we get the backstory of this Wolverine. But well, yeah. he is right in the view of the the film the film's yes. view that he's the worst. Yeah, yeah. because um, when you hear the worst Wolverine, you know your mind can go to some places of like, man, yeah, I mean, oh, geez, the things that yeah. Wolverine would do. I mean, imagine if it was, um, you know, like, uh, you remember in X-Men Apocalypse, the, uh, like, when uh, you see Wolverine escaping, like, from the Weapon X program, and he's just, like, basically totally mindless and unhinged. Be like, oh, man, I wonder if maybe that was, like, permanent. You know, that'd be kind of crazy. I guess the problem is that he wouldn't be sitting in a bar probably drinking some... <laughs> but that's kind of the idea, right? It's like, man, what could Wolverine have done that would make him the worst one? Which is a fascinating I concept. Terrible, terrible things. What, what if it was he? He kept he uh, stuck around with Sabretooth and just kept going down like a you know like an incredibly dark path or something. What if he never joined the X Men? Well, what out of what pure he, rage he, uh, he worked with Magneto? Magneto? Yeah. Yeah. What if he was like Magneto's top lieutenant? Yeah, and he was just a psycho killer, and he what was if, like, a the sexual deviant, and, yeah. specifically caused like the Sentinels to destroy the world or something. There's like so many things that it could have been that the worst Wolverine might have done. Yeah. Now, uh, Mr. Paradox says about Deadpool as a result of all the things that have just happened, because of course, Deadpool just walking back in here and saying, I have the anchor being, he needs to be very careful. He's surrounded by people who have the, uh, the Melty devices. And uh, we saw him use one in the opening, so he knows what they do. He'll, they'll have just disintegrate you. You better be careful, because he's in a room filled with those kinds of people, and he does not know if he has the leverage. Like I said, it, it was kind of stupid for him to believe this would be leverage, but he's coming in hoping it is. And Mr. Paradox says to him, My superiors deemed you special in some way, clearly not in a good way. Apparently you have some important future purpose to serve. That's the quote he gives him now. Earlier... He was quoted as saying, about Deadpool, one could say the entire sacred timeline will be saved from a grisly fate sometime in the future in relation to Deadpool. Those two lines don't feel like they uh, can coexist. Like, at first he was telling him he's going to be saving the sacred timeline from, you know, untold horrors. And now he's saying you would clearly saved for, like, something, but probably wasn't good. And then he, uh, the reason I'm setting this up is because he then goes on to kill him, Mr. Paradox. You, you, do you see what I'm getting at? Like, yeah. three different distinctly incompatible values? Yeah, what... It's a very confusing character. Yes. That's I don't know. Point. He's a paradox. <laughs> but, here's, but paradoxes can't exist. Meta. Oh, okay. Mm. What do yeah. you mean? He exists. Yeah, he exists, right? Meta. Jeez. Um, yeah, oh, uh, Wolverine. I, I, fair enough. There you go. Wolverine wakes up and uh, Deadpool is like, "Welcome to the MCU. You joined at kind of a low point." Everyone loves this line. What do you guys think? Um, that that is uh, what that. I'll tell you what that line is. That line is um, 
what what do you call it? That's um, that's when you give people a little scrap of something to 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 make them complacent. Well, like yeah, that's throwing them a um, bone. It's like throwing I mean, them a I bone. Suppose... Here's your little, here's your tiny little bone. We made a joke saying the MCU's at a low point, but that's I like mean, in a I sea of other stuff that I hate. Point, but I mean, of course, it is with the implication. Don't worry, guys. Things are going to get better from here on out. Nothing has changed about the way that we make movies or write movies, but things will get better from here on out. Yeah, it's still it's still total I mean, nudge, complete nudge. horse shit, uh, complete trash. I just, uh, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know how meaningful it is that they're like, yeah, we're kind of shit, huh? Anyway, back to doing the multiverse shit we've been doing for the last four years. Yeah, um, just making fun of it as you do it and rely on it, you're still doing the thing. You get you're no credit, you it. are awarded no points. Uh, you can't do that. It's, it, one of the things that we'll get to probably near the end, or it's something that you sort of learn as you go, it's that, um, a lot of this movie, we talked about it with the credits earlier, how it's a lot more corporate, how this movie is definitely changed. There are jokes that they don't make anymore. There are kinds of jokes that they don't make anymore. There is the little things like Dopinder doesn't have his accent anymore. Interestingly, things, there's no, there's I mean, no I can nudity. help you out if you there's want. There's no female nudity. Yeah, you yeah go for it. Go no for titties, it. no overt references to cocaine as in like seeing cocaine or any kind of drugs. They have to make sure you understand that because they were desperate. Cocaine is present in the first and second movies. They can't have it in the third. Yep. And it's like, why? And you're like, oh, fuck. Well, we're going to talk about it, right? And it's like, that'll be good enough. You have that, that. The edge is just toned the fuck down, which is obviously the broad thing of what Rags was saying there, but it comes present in a lot of the way the jokes are constructed. They are such pussies. The most they can say is the MCU is at a bit of a low point. It's like, well, that's just objective in the box office. Like, well, you're not even going to be able to get it. away with that. It's like, undeniable. Um, just compared to how scathing some of the jokes are um, towards their own timeline in the Deadpool films, right? Like, some of those jokes are pretty, you know, like, the, it's funny that they only ever see two of you here. It's almost like the studio couldn't afford another X-Man. Yeah. It's like, man, you're just, like, directly saying the studio, like, made it impossible for you to use any other characters. It's, um, it's corporate yeah, that's edge. That's kind of, like, actually it is... pretty funny. It yeah, is a it, lie. This, is, this is the boy's to, edge. Yeah, they're trying to pose as edgy without actually upsetting anybody because there's a line they cannot cross. They've got to be careful. The saying, yeah, they're saying we're not really edgy. They're saying it's a bit say, of a low man, point. It's actually been. It's like entry level. It's been absolutely terrible. It's been fucking awful. And Kevin Feige is responsible for this in large part. Anyway, back to the movie. Yeah, because yeah, obviously they wanted to reassure everybody, and they'll do this with De uh, Daredevil, by the way. They'll be like, this is definitely yes. the stuff you wanted, you supported, and you liked. And then you see it, and it's fucking mm -hmm. Skinwalker, Luke Skywalker, and you're like, oh, what is this? And you're like, that's what you like. Yeah, this is Skinwalker Deadpool. Yep. Um, he's not the real character. He's been completely undone. He's nothing at all like the first two. The humor is Skinwalker Deadpool humor. It's not actually, you know, Deadpool humor. It isn't edgy. It has the veneer of edge. It passes for Edge at a casual glance, perhaps. Mm. But yeah, this is Skinwalker Deadpool, the movie. Well, you, you, the ca that's really, honestly, the super important detail, I think. The casual glance. I think most of this movie passes a casual glance. Casual sniff. Like, oh, it seems well, yeah, okay. it's, it's because it's still got the violence in it. That's why. Yeah, but, it's but still, even that's toned down. It's, it is toned well, down. It's, really, it's the whimsical the most... violence. I suppose, well, I, I suppose th there is there is one where it's like, hmm, that's kind of gnarly. Um, yeah, there's one, yeah. I probably know which one I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but a lot of the time, yeah, it's like, like one of I, I don't know what it is in terms of like tone, but one of my one of my favorite jokes in um in the first Deadpool is when he shows up to fight Francis. Francis says, "What's my name?" He says, "I'm a fucking spell it for you," and then just later in the fight. Just like Francis going to walk over to the edge and sing his name written there in a bunch of death eyes. You know, it's like, the detail it's really I love about funny. that is the eye in Francis has the person's head cut off yeah. to make the eye, but they're also, he propped them up so you could see their ass, like he's taken down their, their yeah. pads as well. It's just, and just it's, the funny thing. It's really, it's a dark, it's really funny and it's, it's kind of, well, kind of dark, it's quite dark and it's just like really, it's, I just... You don't feel like there's anything that they'd be doing in this film that would be, you know, no. like, it, it, of course, the instance that we're talking about, it's like, yeah, I suppose it's like pretty, um, gory, but like, it's not, but it's like so divorced from reality that it doesn't have that almost like, um, it's like video game violence it, in a way. Well, it's like Mortal Kombat, right? Sense. Mortal Kombat doesn't like, you know, Mortal Kombat's violence is so absurd 
then it's like divorced you from can't reality. Take, yeah, you can't take it seriously. It's not like Saving Private Ryan violence, which is like yeah, where where it's terrible, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's visceral like, and yeah. visceral like, and oh, tangible. Boy, yeah. And this I don't know, is, that yeah, Francis this is like, feels it's like killing it's killing for violence. Long, the Francis one feels like it's a, more in the edge of like, oh, that's a bit dark. Yeah. Um, because it's more tangible. Yeah, and so the whole, you're joining at a kind of a low point to me is one of the, like, chillest, most surface level, easygoing, self-aware criticisms you could ever have. And it's coming from someone who is doing the thing. So, yes. you know, we already know, right? Bob Iger's admitted the Marvels was a fuck up, that they've already admitted. There's loads of things coming out of um, Marvel and Disney it that is. they know things are fucked, mainly because of the fact that there's a whole hell of a lot less support, engagement, and money. That, that, that's the bigger thing that they can go, oh shit, something's very, very mm -hmm. wrong. It's not like they're looking at reviews every day and, and being, you know, ch tracking the general criticisms. But at the same time. No. This this is what like fucking how how late is this? We we called well, it at Loki, which was twenty nineteen, twenty twenty. It's um we called it the so. first episode of Loki season. Yeah, one. which was twenty twenty. But the thing is, is you got to remember as well. It's always retrospectively. It is never that it is bad. Now it is always yeah. that the last project was bad, and the next one will be good. Dude, Kevin Feige said that this film was going to be like an eight compared to uh, Infinity War nine and Endgame ten in terms of significance on the impact of the MCU going forward. That means I mean, extremely significant. Yeah, it. I mean, I I think it's safe to say that by the end of this film, that ain't really the case at all. <laughs> um, that like it's it, that it's seemingly going to change the Marvel Cinematic Universe forever. Um, this, but um, it's, this but, slot, but the reason I'm bringing it up right is into the MCU. Is, it's always to it's the statements are always being made. At, you got to remember them in the context of the time that they're being made. Right now, they're trying to convince you to go watch this film. That's that's the point of these observations. You can say the Marvels is bad after it's out and it's failed because now there's nothing to be gained from it anymore. So now yeah. they can say like, well, yeah, that sucked, but they're never going to say that about, they're not going to say like, yeah, man, movies. you know, the new Captain America film, man, we've done like so many reshoots. That film's going to be a fucking mess. They're never going to say well, that to you. Remember yeah, what right. they said about Captain Marvel or the Marvels before it came out. Yeah. They said it was really fun. It's it was gonna great. Be really it's fun. amazing. It's incredible. Yeah. And so it's a triumph of blah, 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 cinema. Da, 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 da. It was Secret really, really good. Then is going to be really, this touches on and, and really my important. primary issue. And I'll start with uh, someone in chat said the low point joke was funny. You want him to do a critical drinker video in the middle of the movie. First of all, yes, because then I'd just enjoy no, like a part of it and be like, "Yeah, hey, this is a fun." No, no, minute, no, no. I guess actually that would be that, that would be amazing. Yeah. He just shows up. Yeah, you know what? Actually, <laughs> just, just play dr critical drinker videos for the rest of the runtime. That would actually make me a lot happier. But if we go with the 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 thing of like, so what what do you do to fix it then? It's like so the problem isn't necessarily the words themselves, even though, like I said, I think it's very weak. It's very pathetic compared to what they could say. It's supposed to be effective based on any kind of change in attitude or, or uh, style or, or attempt at creating the art that they do. They're not changing shit. This film yeah. is actually a big recognition that they're taking a step back. We said when No Way Home came out, there were things No Way Home did, and we're going to bring this up when we go further into this story, especially in relation to Logan, that you can do with legacy characters that don't even belong to your universe. And No Way Home gave a blueprint, and we said at the time, as did many other channels, they're going to learn the wrong lesson from this. And this is a prime example of that. And this is the movie where they say, man, we've done some bad things in the past, haven't we? Which is odd and inappropriate. And then this movie does the very things it's pretending to make fun of because that line isn't there because they are aware of any mistake that they've made or they're recognizing how they're making like shitty art. All they know is the box office is down and that there are many people in the audience who would enjoy the line. That's it. Mm -hmm. It's meant but to pander yeah, to you to make you like this film more. They have no intention of making it's anything the better. Because when when Deadpool says McAvoy or Stewart, these timelines are so confusing. He says this in a film that is just like really like not dealing with any of that shit. Well, and that's before. So it's funny, and it, and it the, feels worthwhile. Like they're still going those those films because that was 2018. He said that right, and then 2019, that 2016. 2016 yeah, because you get that, it yeah, was that before Apocalypse. It was before Apocalypse, it was before Logan, it was before Dark Phoenix. That's, see, um, so yeah, that's way more edgy. Yeah, that's edgy, because they still wanted to be successful and make money with those films at that time. This was before they got bought by Fox. Uh, before they got bought by Disney, rather. Um, a willingness to actually make fun of themselves in a way that was kind of scathing. 
Whereas here, yeah, what does it mean that he says, yeah, you're entering at a bit of a low point anyway, welcome to the film where we continue with a lot of the same bad writing decisions that have been made for the last four years. Yeah, It slots in perfectly with the rest of the MCU. This is an MCU movie through and through, and it might have the veneer of, oh, look at the blood and the violence. Look, Deadpool won't shut the fuck up. Isn't that hilarious? It's the same, it's the same slop that you've been getting for years now. Well, yeah, it's and the don't... same thing in terms of the writing. I wouldn't necessarily look. Like, some people interpret this as like, yes, but it's 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 like it's a line, even if non sincere. It's with the fans as opposed to against them. I'd be like, D how is the sincerity not something that's incredibly important in that? Like, they are going to be. A, it would be de if delivered in insincerely, they're not with you. Yeah, and also, do you think that like, do you think Kevin Feige is unhappy right now, looking at the box office revenue that's being made no. from this film that apparently makes fun of his movies? Like, come on, he's having a great week. <laughs> like, look <sighs> at all the money this film is making. Like, if that's what it takes to, if if they can make little worthless comments like that, and they can just generate money out of it, they'll do it forever. They don't give a shit. They don't have to mean anything. It's generating money. Who cares? We'll throw them a bone. Look, they said the MCU is at a low point. And they'll, mm. they'll eat it up. I mean, now we're going to take out all this, take out all that. It's not going to be about this. It's not going to be about that. We're going to revert his character. We're going to basically assassinate all this stuff. We're going to undo the last two Deadpool movies. But hey, we threw him that little bone with the MCU line. So, hey, there you go. That's, a tr that's an easy trade-off. Um, so... He says, uh, like a big old rant about how he's going to tell their bosses what they're up to. And then he discovers Deadpool through um, realizing the sort of body language of everyone in the room that nobody knows what they're doing in, down here. And he's, they're going to try and get this job done under the secrecy of, you know, the, TF the TVA not knowing. And it makes you wonder, how do the TVA not know about this? Like the the well, upper upper people like why wouldn't they know? There's so many people working on this project too. Uh, all, all of in them on in on it, and it's like why? It's, it's like the conspiracy to make people think that the Earth is a globe, right? <laughs> a lot of people are in on it. Top people, they've planted all the evidence. They've got the holographic moon. It all it all checks out. And I think that you know, paradox has that kind of power in this office the funny thing is that if we go with the continuity of loki season two even if he were successful and like he said he wants to have the full power of the tva uh, i mean loki does and you can't change that he controls all of time and space constantly so i don't even but you know what i mean and then it's like wouldn't loki the time to stop this though. shouldn't loki be stopping this and it's like well maybe loki wouldn't stop this because he knows how it ends and you'd be like well how does anything Wait, is anyone making decisions, or is Loki making everyone's decisions right now? Well, that sounds well, like listen, very well, which was one of the big things that they were fighting about in Loki season one and yep. two. Listen, Loki works in mysterious ways. Okay. Well, I, I, I mean, the, the, that's the answer to that. Then, because, like I said, TVA should probably yeah. be fully aware of this. They're not. So be it. I guess. Um. Yeah, and then. Because uh, Deadpool's retarded, he gets zapped with the melty gun stick. He d for some reason, he's just by not paradox. very concerned. Yeah, by paradox of all people. So he would the he was looking right at him, touch him with it. and uh, he just pulls it out and hits him with it, and he's gone. Well, which, the uh, plot the plot needed it to happen, so we have to we have to in severely nerf Deadpool because man, we got plot stuff to have happen, and there you go. Also, the temp pad is dropped. Uh, I guess everything's zapped with him except that. Might that be the way that it works? It zaps well, your clothes and it zaps your weapons, but not the thing that you're holding in your hand? Very curious it doesn't work because it does work on other devices that can get you out of the void. So um, we'll get there yeah. later. Mm. Anyway, uh, Wolverine's like, whoa, what the hell? Where did he go? What happened to him? And then Paradox essentially does it to Wolverine too because he yells and comes at him, but he just hits him, which... Again, to me, just feels like I guess Logan's retarded too. He he, you saw what he he's got a device that makes you disappear. You might want to avoid him for a second, but it's like, nah, I'll just I'll just do the same thing Deadpool did. And it's like, well, I guess you're God too. Both of them are now in the void, as is the end of Act One, which I can only refer to as a complete catastrophe. Yep. Yep. Pretty I mean, much uh, completely catastrophic. Yeah. 
it's it's already kind of over. Vanessa's gone and done. Um, all of the characters from previous Deadpools are just not going to be present. Uh, Deadpool himself is it's apparently morphed into a completely different character. Totally reverted, completely assassinated through and through. Um, I have absolutely zero investment whatsoever in this Skinwalker. Um, I can't wait to see what happens next. So we're in the void. Ooh, boy. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, I don't know about you guys, but purple dragon. Oh, I'm oh, glad to be back here. Yes. So glad to be back. So glad to be back. Which, uh, you know, it's funny. I think when they described the void, they said that um, when you prune anything, it doesn't always like fully delete and instead ends up being sent there. I think in Loki season one they said that, but now it's like anything that gets pruned gets sent here. Gets sent there. Yeah. Which uh, you ha you have to understand if everything that's getting pruned is sent here, like <laughs> the it'd be pretty it's populated. Not fit on a planet. Yeah. Why is the void like a place where there's oxygen and shit? Why is it like Earth? It's the end of the timeline, Fringy. Of course, there would be all of Why those things. <laughs> I have no fucking idea. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, so the but first boy, thing, it's helpful for a story. Uh, Deadpool's on the floor, not knowing exactly what the fuck's going on, and Wolverine stabs him with both claws and lifts him up. Now, one of the thoughts some might have here is like, "What? Well, oh, d does Wolverine know he ha he can regen?" And the thing is, I'm pretty sure he can't know that because he didn't recognize who Deadpool that? was when he met him, and there's been no reference to him yeah. being able to regen at all. So was this so, yes, killing him? He, he, I, guess, I guess so. Like, like, yeah, I, yeah. I genuinely wonder, was, was Wolverine like, well, I'm killing this guy, fuck you, boom. And, and if he was, why? Well, he's like the, the only person... He him in all the other universes. He but just he's like the only person violent. that might be able to help him get out of... He has no idea where he is. <laughs> well, listen, there's something you need to understand about Wolverine in Deadpool 3. And mm. it's that he's kind of fucking retarded. Oh. So, and so once, you, once you sort of understand that, then really all the other pieces fall into place, and then it all makes sense again. <laughs> so I said, well, he's the worst. Like, so he doesn't attack him until now because he's the worst. Yeah, he's bad mm. at being terrible. I see. Meta. All right, well... Um, yeah, that makes it okay. So then Deadpool's... There's this moment where they kind of vaguely explain what's going on, and uh, Wolverine's distinctly uninterested and just starts walking off into the, the nothing. There's nothing. He has no idea where he is, what this place is, where he's going. He just walks off and then Deadpool's like, you know, because uh, he says, I don't care, not my fucking problem about saving Deadpool's universe. He's like, is that what you said to you about your universe? And I just, I was so struck by the fact, it's like, Logan, where are you going? <laughs> this, this, you don't even know what this is. Honest, like, hey, it's five o'clock somewhere. I guess so. Just like, I'm just headed to a place. It, you know, because Deadpool knows way more about what just happened that Logan is just distinctly uninterested. He's like, yeah, I'd rather just wander, I guess. Which, uh, sure, I, I don't know. I just uh, I would have thought he'd be smart enough to want to mine as much information as he could. But uh, he gets mad at old Deadpool for they, saying that, and uh, they get into a fight. They get into a fight where uh, Wolverine, like, crawls along the ground and it looks really shit. It For some reason, really... people have been sharing it yeah. as epic, badass, awesome, main river. I, could, I, I couldn't know. help but be struck it, by it, how awkward it looked. It Hopefully in a couple silly. of months, everybody will sort of agree, like, man, that looked fucking weird. Yeah, once like, EPAP clears the fucking uh, landmines again. Well, it's just CGI, like, the CGI was, um, not Locking. good. As is the case in a lot of stuff in the film, because this film was subject to a lot of the same, um, I guess what you could call limited amount of time that No Way Home had, and No Way Home got eviscerated uh, yes. for, its, for its bad visual effects. And not unfairly so. I mean, there's a lot of shots that look pretty terrible. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, yeah, like, I don't know, this was the first of, of, of uh, well, not the first, actually. I mean, a few before that, but it was just like, oh, man, this, uh, this does not look great. Um, yeah, it looks really so weird. Um, but... Give it time, I suppose. The uh, the fight itself is mostly fine with me. Um, I just, you know, like, once they both recognize they're immortal and regenerative, uh, you you just, really yeah, realize, like, so this is yeah. just to, I mean, it's, it's just nerd well, it's born, which is what Deadpool right? says. Yeah. This, yeah, which I suppose I did. Wouldn't It would have been cool if Cable was along for the ride, though. Could you imagine that dynamic trio yep. together? 
bouncing off of each other, especially considering that Cable completed an arc that is similar to what Wolverine's arc is supposed to be in this film. Could you imagine? I can imagine a lot of different cool, movies. But... Yeah. Oh well. Not Cable. Um. So the fight just eventually ends once Deadpool tells him they that if uh, if they get back to the TVA, maybe they can save Wolverine's universe. Because he's not entirely clear on what he did with it, but whatever he did do to it is very much something that the TVA could undo, and uh, that's enough, obviously, to convince Wolverine to join up. We got a team because he's like, "Hell yes, I'll, I, I would be willing to do that." And I don't say this just so really. That... Hmm? You think he'd be really hesitant, yeah, to team up with Wolverine after the TVA say, "Oh, he's the worst possible Wolverine." I guess. Uh... Better to have him Maybe with nobody. No I don't know. Yeah. I, just, I don't know. I feel like if he's the worst possible Wolverine, it might actually be it, worse. It would be better would be, to not yeah, have him because like, he's the worst be possible right. Wolverine. But he could betray you at the worst possible moment, right? This, yeah. Um, and he is lying to him, at least in the sense that he doesn't know that the TVA can do that, which okay, will, okay, obviously yeah. does bite him later on. But. Anyway, uh, that seems to be enough to get them to move forward. And the, I wanted to mention it as well because it's going to be very important later. This is this is what takes Wolverine from being like, fuck you, I don't care about anything to do with you or all of the people that you're trying to save. Don't care about any of it. Th him telling him the TVA can save your universe was what flips him on that. You could argue it's a very important thing to Wolverine in this film. And uh, obviously, hmm. it's worth saying as well, you have to kind of go off what they give you about this Wolverine before you can judge him as a character. Obviously, he's got retard points that are filling, but he's not... You shouldn't still base... learning about him, yeah. Yeah, you shouldn't base what you'd assume about any particular value he has on any other particular Wolverine. This is the worst of the worst, so for now, we have to go off on whatever they show us, which he said, like, like I said, that uh, Deadpool's whole universe is going to be destroyed, and he said, I don't care. So it's like, oof, that is quite... Uh... You know, he's quite apathetic to it, so perhaps this is the worst of the worst, and it'd be interesting to know what his history is. Anyway, someone arrives. Um, someone arrives silently, by the way, which is unusual considering who it is, and you'd think uh, it would be hard to spot them, hard to not spot them, sorry, arriving. And I'm not entirely sure why he's here. He, uh, I don't know if it's like this is where new arrivals are, and, and people like to scope this place out to say, grab him. Sorry. No, well, we know that's not the case because we've seen people arrive in all different places in the void across all the different media. So. Scattered all across the void, and if it's scattered all across the void, it means that the stuff must have landed elsewhere. And that means that they just happen to bump into this guy, who um, we'll just say he's Chris Evans for a second because it's a whole conversation to have. And uh, before they can even properly acknowledge and understand that, we've got an army of bad guys are showing up. Oh, Why? Goodness, they also knew. Be there. Because they're trying to get Chris Evans. Like, whoa. In which case, that's just a crazy coinky dink, isn't it? it yeah, it well, all is, I guess. Yeah. No, well, okay, Kang, that's the situation no, we're in now. Kang and Loki <laughs> are setting this up. I'm sure that this won't be consequential. So, um, the assumption from the audience and from our main characters is this is Captain America, and he's gonna he's gonna save the day. But the big reveal is it is not Captain America, but Johnny Storm. And he... Oh my he, goodness! Just flame on and flies up, and it's very, very heroic music plays. And, um, you know, you, you gotta admit, that's kind of fun. I'm trying that's not to use that word ever, nor will I use the word mm. boring. I'm, I'm gonna try and stick to analytical terms for now, just because of trying to explain how these things work and how they connect to things and stuff instead of just telling you guys whether or not I found a thing fun. Um, but I like the concept of taking advantage of the entangled nature of all of these universes with payoffs like that. Uh, one Gary suggested that we don't yeah. get is taking advantage of Ryan Reynolds having been in Blade with having Hannibal King show up in some way, shape, or form. You could probably have done something with that. You have the excuse and um, you, you might be able to do something meaningful with it. Now, as much as it's fun, you know, I'm I'm sitting here being like, fuck yeah, dude, Fantastic Four movies. I know that they the, the second one certainly wasn't as well received, but I enjoyed those back in the day. It's been a while. Yeah. It's neat to see yeah, him back. What are we going to do with him, especially if um, you've got him? So, uh, you know, what are we doing? And I don't know how else, like, like I, I'm not, you, you, a lot of people in chat have seen this film. 
So uh, you know I'm not lying. He flies up. He uses his ability to flamethrow on Pyro, the one person here who it would do nothing to. Pyro then draws all of his power out of him and stops him from being able to fly. He lands on a signpost thing directly on his nuts, and then he falls, almost breaking his back onto the floor. Why? I'm really glad that they're, uh, you know, going through all this trouble to have all these well, fun characters. And... He, he's, Do these he's actors know the what they're signing up to? He knows, he knows who Pyro is. He knows who well, uh, Cassandra Nova is. So we can we'll, skip we'll a little soon. ahead to, to talk about this now. Uh, Johnny Storm is a part of a team of people who've been surviving here for a long time. Pyro is Cassandra Nova's lieutenant. Uh, apparently he's like second in line, or at least he has a lot of power to control. Um, they know who these people are. Like, they know who works for her, they know their abilities and what they can do. This comes in later as part of the mechanics of how they're going to defeat her. Johnny Storm attacked the only person that it would do nothing to. Why? Because... Well, that's a... He, he's a... He's a dum-dum. Hmm. But, uh, yes, I, I do that, that respect to the Fox movies of having... Uh, so respectful. ...line on his, on his cock and then, like, break his back and everything. Well, yes. oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, okay, yeah. you're, you're over-exaggerating because he's not dead. Like, there's plenty more that's of Johnny true. Storm to be in this movie before you can make a judgment on whether or not they respect yeah. him. That's, I guess that's, that's true. true. He, yeah, could, yeah. he could re-earn that uh, respect for later. But, yes, before you can even really deal with that having happened and what you think about it. Um, Sabretooth is here, and he's like, yo, to, to Wolverine. So yeah, I know, crazy, right? right? Sabretooth. Oh Sabretooth. We haven't seen him since... X-Men uh, I mean, Origins. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Wow, that's going way back. What's fun is this is the, the actor who, by the way, played Ajax in Troy. I don't know if you remember him. Hey! Yeah, yeah, he had the big old hammer. Yeah, he and he's yeah, the and he was really guy. good at cleaning sinks. He was the original Sabretooth. He was in indeed, and it was really cool to see the because I think he has a very unique look with this Sabretooth sort of, uh, and and he was in the trailer, and uh, uh, you know I don't know if you guys saw the clip, but what you see, I think Ryan Reynolds shared the clip of being like, this is a fight everyone's been waiting for. You know, be careful. Takes the swords out of Wolverine, and they set up. They both do their beast yells. They run at each other, and then the fight's over. Because Wolverine chops off his head. Um, you can do oh. that. That's an approach, I suppose. The thing yeah. is, um, why though? Is it worth the joke? I get. <sighs> it's just so fucking lame. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know. Like, holy shit, you got the actor back after all this time. The brother of... The, the brother of Wolverine himself. They finally meet after all this time. And it's just like, oh, no, Wolverine kills him instantly. Huh? I don't really understand, because they great, didn't great have joke. to do that. There are parts of this film that people found so fucking boring that they would recommend you skip. Which I'm on board with that, by the way. And um, it's like maybe we could move some of that out and move a fight with Sabretooth and Wolverine in. M maybe How about that. Nah. Nah. No. Yeah. no. What if? Nope. Um. Yeah. What if no? How about no? Well, and of course, How you know, it's, no? it's the same as well with like no Human Torch fight. Just uh, he just gets all his power sucked out by the one person who he knows uh can counter him, like hard counter him. But nah, it would be funnier if he flame on, and then he falls on his cock, and then you know, oh man, Ooh. well, it's really fun. Uh, they all get. I love the cameos. Through oh, that's unfortunate. It's very um, it's very it's very lucky. The uh, dead the way they capture them is they have a giant magnet that is you know it'll capture Wolverine very easily. But Deadpool is standing between Wolverine and the magnet, so it flattens I him between them. Matter because of the uh because of the adamantium um swords. Well, I assume it's the magnet is so powerful that he can't actually get himself to just remove those or anything, then yeah, I guess he is fucked. But is no oh, one yeah. else carrying metal in the area? Hmm, yeah. Doesn't Pyro have a gun? Anyway, uh... it's, fi it's fine. 
we'll just... yeah that's that's fine we'll, we'll move well, right it's, along. It's, you got to point it the right way so they got captured darn it and they're taken to the leader but not before show give us a showcase of cassandra nova's uh, headquarters which is the body of giant man which is fun i guess um that's where we get the uh, Paul Rudd aged joke. Yep, not bad. Which Fine. is all yeah. right. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, that's I right. like it. Uh, though yeah. th this is a real thing. Like, if you spend that joke in the trailer, obviously, I'm not going to find it as funny when I see it in the film because I'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah. I know that one. Um, well, I saw it for the first time watching the movie. There you go. And it was, right. it, it, I, we can independently verify through me that it was an all right joke. There you go. It's so, not like it won't make you laugh, but it will make you smile. Uh, they show us you have uh, Lady Deathstrike, Azazel, Juggernaut, uh, Toad, obviously Pyro. Yeah, but remember, not not Juggernaut from X Men Three or Juggernaut from well, so uh, from Deadpool. Deadpool. Yeah. To go further than that, none of these guys are played by the actors that played them before. Well, that's why they get a lot more. Right? So, I mean, who fucking cares, right? <laughs> At that point, it's like, what's the what's the point? Well, it's, it feels like pandering. I um I'm seeing a bunch of literal toys from the people who make this being like, you like that one, don't you? I'm like, yeah, I guess. They, they, you know, like, well, the main thing we see with them won't be until later. For now, they're just standing. Um, and so arrives the queen herself, Cassandra Nova. She's introduced. She's coming in, and for a second, one might have mistaken her for Charles Xavier. I don't really. Feel like much many people were, but that's kind of something they're they're selling. They even say, "Is that Chuck?" Mm -hmm. Which is, uh, we. Uh, I know the reference for Chuck in Logan. Is there any other references for them calling him Chuck in other things? I can't remember honestly. Chat, I if you can uh, let me know, because I was I was curious about that. I couldn't remember any other time that he was called Chuck. It might be something I missed. I don't know if it's like an alias he ever used or anything, but someone said yes. So, oh, animated series. Hey, all right, that's something. Yeah, fair. Not to my knowledge. Well, in the movies, no. Anything else, I don't know. Yeah, because I, I know it from Logan. I just don't know if there was any other references. Chuck is short for Charles. Oh, oh, that's what that means. Oh. That's not something Chuck I'm as familiar with, but fair. Because there are some names that are short Wait, did you for... not know that? No, I, um... Oh, really? Not really, no. It's, uh, I just don't think I've come across it that much. Or whether or yeah, not I have, why, I've um, not associated it, you know? Yeah, that's why... Uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Marcy. Wait, so... That's why Marcy calls Charlie Brown Chuck. Oh, okay, there you go. Because uh, well, I was mainly curious where Deadpool would have heard that. But then again, he is like a meta machine anyway, so it wouldn't necessarily matter. Um. Anyway, she's she's on... Uh, the floaty, or I think it's the wheelie. It doesn't really matter which chair. It's one of Xavier's chairs, and she, uh, floaty wheelie chair. She, <laughs> she stands up, and the ramp in front of her becomes stairs. And Deadpool says, "Wow, ableism! The woke mob isn't gonna like that." Ah, uh, oh. I, uh, I did cringe huh. a bit with that one. <laughs> that I was like, a Ooh. Bit. "Oh, jeez, okay." All right, Disney. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that. So, that's one of the like most cowardly jokes they could have had. I would say. Uh, I most would people say, don't yeah. even. It's like she's she's on the thing, and then the stairs turn into. Well, the ramp turns into stairs. It's like ableism. It's like first of all, what? <laughs> okay. And then secondly. If you, you guys are like, what do you, the woke mob? Like, what, most people, because I've seen people's commentary on this scene, they didn't even know what they were supposed to be angry about. <laughs> it's like, who, who you try to appeal to? And the answer is everyone. Because Hopefully people this who, gets for everybody. Yeah, bo both sides will think it applies to the other side. Mega safe. If even understood at all by the people, so... Well, I mean, it's if this were Deadpool one or two, imagine what they would have done with that joke. I mean, probably would have been some funny. funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably yeah, something probably funny. Some, yeah, probably something not super safe. 
No, yeah, well, that's, that's kind of what we're getting at with a lot of this. All of this is kind of pre-approved. None of it's uh, anything experimental or worrying in any way. Um, there's no real risk. It's all very, as I said, cowardly would probably be the way I'd summarize it. Anyway. Yeah, he'd probably say, like, oh, you're not a cripple or something like that. You know, we'd get some, mo even, so we get something. Yeah, well, or Logan could be like, uh, you know, say, say some kind of, like, insensitive line like that, and then, then Deadpool could be like, oh, you can't say <sighs> that. And then he could say something worse after it, you know? Casually. Some, some, some kind of joke to show something, but this didn't even, like, fully commit. It sort of leaves it nice and vague, so you have to interpret what the problem may even be with anybody. Um, it's done by committee. It's part of my issue. I, I, th I feel like this went through a thousand people. Oh, yeah. Also, it's weird, by the way. I don't know if anyone else noticed. Uh, the first time she refers to Charles, she says Xavier, and then after it, she says Xavier. Uh, well, she was, was thinking about the classic early Adult Swim absurdist cartoon. Oh, um, of course. Yeah, and then she remembered it was Charles Xavier, the leader of the X-Men. So. so, we haven't had a lot of Johnny, Johnny Storm, you know, being able to take action in this plot line. Let's see if he can uh, bounce up here, because she's kind of excited to have a Wolverine, and uh, she's been trying to capture Johnny for a while. She mentions this. And during the conversation, Deadpool kind of cuts in with how uh, he, he wants to make sure she understands that, that, uh, that Johnny's been making fun of her behind her back, saying all kinds of things, and he starts doing his sort of Deadpool running his mouth, making fun. Uh, of her directly, but claiming these are all things that Johnny told him about her. And while he's saying them, Johnny's like, whoa, no, 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 I would never, whoa, that's where, no, I don't even know what those words mean, like, why would I, I'd never say that, that's, that's horrifying, what? And, you know, during this back and forth, she then pulls off all of Johnny's skin, and he falls into a pile of flesh and bone. Uh, sorry. That's, um, that's yeah, that. that man, that mega respect to the Fox movies, huh? Just to be clear. Also, like, Deadpool, wow, Deadpool, what the fuck? I, mean, I don't get it. I actually don't get it. See, he's, like, why compounding like so many this? moments in a row where I'm just like, what, why? Why did you do that? Why did you do that? Why did you murder this guy? Why did you actively... in? continuously try to get this guy killed what what did he ever do he helped you why would you kill him why would deadpool go out of his way to try to get this guy killed like that you have it's like, it's like uh, I, here here he, he's back and you know we like to see him play cap but it's like he's playing johnny storm it's like oh that's arguably cooler because we haven't seen him in forever and it's like it's a different kind of character what are you gonna do with him that we're gonna nutshot him, break his back, and then strip him of his skin. <laughs> just to say, then strip him of his skin. It's like, what the fuck? I well, Why? so and I've asked this to a couple of friends. I was like, I don't understand. What's the difference between this and what they did to Reed in MOM? Mm, if anything, you know, this is because it's it's. I think what you're meant to take away from the implication is that this is the same one in those movies. Yeah. So, like, you're talking about a character who actually has history in two movies. You might think they suck, um, because they got a lot of problems, but, like, still, compared would, to just yeah, rando like... alternate timeline Ree Richards who's there for five minutes. It, and I would still agree, it's like, yeah, that was, that was some bullshit. He reaches out and then just gets turned into spaghetti. That was cringe. This is comparable to that. I don't know why. I... Why why would you enjoy this? I hate it. Why if I was one of these actors, I'd be like, yeah, I'm not going to play the part if you're just going to shit all over my character." You know? Like I don't I don't want you to do that. Why would you do that? I don't even have it's just, like rags. That kind of commentary you'll, the best you'll only get in post cuz even um uh Haley Atwell said she's been <clears throat> critical of what they did with her in in Multiverse of Madness. It's like, "Yeah, we, I guess you didn't realize at the time." You know, I guess they often don't because it's it's more fun. Maybe right? you're getting gassed up to be like, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, when, when they once after you see the final version we'll, of we'll it together, it'll and be then, chill. Don't worry. Yeah, we'll, you know. Yeah, you get the assurances. Oh, it's it's a hilarious joke, or it means this, or da da da. People will love it. Oh, it's just a little wink and a nudge, or da da da. And then you see it, and then you see the discourse surrounding it. And you're like, oh, this is fucking terrible. 
Like I said, I, I was um, I was I happy to see be, him. I, I wouldn't be cool with it. This wasn't um, I I when he, when his skin got stripped off, I was like, hmm. I'm uh, uh if I I'm going to so, slot this in I... with No Way Home or MOM, I already know which way it's fucking going. The, the when that happened, I was like, ah, right. So they only had him for like a couple of days. Then that's what actually happened. They said, yeah, you can do this because you're not going to have to be here for very long. You only got to show up for a week, rather than having him stick around for the whole thing. And because I guess they thought it'd be funny if it's like, yeah, look, he gets his skin ripped off. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Bit cringe. So she starts talking to him. And um, it becomes clear, there's a couple of things we're going to talk about, that her motivation is she's very angry about having been sent here when she was super young, much like uh, Sylvie. Or at least when they, what they tried to do with Sylvie. Um, yeah. It's not exactly clear on why. Maybe she was just too too powerful or something. But um, she's become the leader of this place out of a sort of spite because she's pissed off that her uh, twin brother being Charles Xavier didn't save her. And uh, she very bitterly talks to Wolverine and Deadpool about how, hey, it must be nice to have been to have uh, had love from him. You know, I wouldn't know. Because he, uh, he didn't save me from here, which is going to get uh, added to later. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't mind jumping a little bit just for now. Obviously, uh, yeah. uh, Wolverine tells her, had Charles known, he would have saved you. Which um, is meaningful to her in that moment. And I find to just be so embarrassing for a, a, a motivation for a villain. She's like, I'm mad you didn't save me from a place you didn't even know I was sent to. And you didn't even know where it was. And you didn't even know that I existed, period. And nor do you have the capacity to find out. Yeah. There's just literally nothing he could have done. He didn't even know that there was something to do. You didn't, he didn't even know you existed. No, but you see, that's why she's a villain, because she's a fool. Oh, okay. okay. Well, fair enough, yeah. Even though she's meant to be really intelligent. Well, she's written... She's Marvel intelligent, which means stupid, but... Well, no, no, that that's it. And uh, we know on top of that, by the way, that she kills Charles Xavier's that end up here. So she's so mad about her brother not having come to save her that she kills variants of him that end up here. Even that that seems not... about right. Um, yeah. And then, of course, yeah, in, terms of power, in terms of power scaling, that means we have to assume that she is generally more powerful than the average Charles Xavier. Well, depending well, on how I, long she's been doing this, she's more powerful than every single one. She's more, she's the most powerful being. Yeah, because, I mean, every single being that could ever have ended up here was defeated by her, which I don't buy for a second that Charles Xavier was beaten by her. Uh, I don't no, like... He's, like, super old and experienced and, you know, I find uh, and he's... the nerfing of Charles Xavier in a lot of these stories very cringe. He's, uh, he's uh, super well, yeah, powerful. I mean, they did it in our, uh, of Madness, got yes. beaten by Wanda at the that he's the best at, which is mind shit. He's, uh, he's hyper... Is he considered an Omega level threat or whatever? Or is it the level below? Uh, no, Gene was, uh, the class 5 in the in the X-Men 3, but, like, that system is kind of bullshit Well, the thing anyway. is, they describe <laughs> this girl as Omega level. So, surely I mean, he I mean, is. Charles ought to be, yeah. Yeah, chat's saying... Yes, he yeah. is. Yes, he is. Yes, he's class four. He's Omega level. Okie dokie. Well, class four was the, uh, yeah, X-Men 3 thing. Very which, powerful. I'm not even sure how you really do a consistent objective rating of the power of, you know, what There's does a it committee. mean? There's a committee. I, they well, it's just, together and... You know, I mean, Charles Aid is good at flying his angel. So, like, what does that count for, you know? <laughs> well, I'm sure it averages <laughs> out, but, uh... <laughs> yeah, he's good at running his Quicksilver. So, like, what does that oh, mean? no. Oh my god, the woke He's mob are gonna come for you, free. What do you- um, he can't- he can't walk! That's ableism, to highlight that. <laughs> calling him a, you, yeah, you calling him a cripple? And, wow. And then when Gene- you remember? Well, actually, Rags went around because he didn't watch it, remember? In Dark Phoenix, Gene made him walk, and it was very mean. Yes, that was very mean. You remember that? That was, uh, yeah. Um... So, anyway, they're talking to Cassandra Nova, and she mentions how Charles must have made you guys feel safe. It's a very, like, civil and calm conversation. And then Wolverine responds, and I think this has just got shit editing on it. He goes, we're mutants. We're never safe. 
And then the camera cuts closer to him, and he goes, Ah! It's like, what? What? And he just runs at her with his claws out, and then she forces him into the ground and pushes him far, far away. Uh, I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Wolverine, what are you doing, buddy? Like, you have no idea what the fuck's going on. Like, we, That's never stopped him before. It's just... It's so bizarre. I have a feeling that the original version has them two probably sparring a little bit longer, and she says something that gets to him personally. But instead, that's I guess cut it down because, like I said, it's a very sort of straightforward conversation. And just um, like like I said, she said, "Did Charles make you feel safe?" He's just like, "No." Ah! <laughs> you're so okie dokie what do you say like that is very funny are you safe no <laughs> oh. so yeah and then uh, Deadpool's like whoa uh, don't do that to me I'm chill and then she uh, she puts her fingers in his head and does things but not before there's, a, there's another part I wanted to mention she says um, that neither of them strike her as the world saving type and then there's a pause and she looks at Deadpool and says ooh did I hit a nerve which I thought was really odd. It's like Deadpool of all people being offended because of that, and then and then the film is like, well, yeah, because that's currently his insecurity, right? He wants to matter. I'm just sitting like, fucking yeah. hell, that um, bullshit. That's just how he is now. Yeah. What you don't like new Deadpool? No, not even a little bit. Like, uh, yeah, he sucks balls. It, 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 be, he would have countless things to wisecrack back, right? He, there's, there's, you could imagine just an infinite amount of things he'd have to say, but no, he just sort of yeah. gives up and is like, well, the, the, damn, he got me there. And then when she gets in his head, we get a big old blast of his insecurities, and this is where That's things get a little she is. odd, because uh, this is a combination of things that did happen and didn't happen. It's kind of up to the audience to figure it out. But... um. Vanessa basically says to him, ever since the Avengers have turned you down, uh, you took a knee and you never got back up. And it's like, right. So she left him? And then he says, just say it. If you don't want to be with me, I'll walk away. It was just like, when did, when did this happen, man? And then they start spamming visuals from Deadpool 1 and 2 of them being together, which just makes this even more annoying, obviously. Very annoying. Mm. Remember um, the Vanessa that we've completely just decided doesn't exist anymore? I, yeah, Those I Those were the times. And then she says, you'll never fucking matter. And uh, we discover that that's a line that's being manipulated into his head by Cassandra. Though it's worth mentioning, he says she never says that, and then Cassandra says, but I bet she thought it. As if... To say that that's what Deadpool thought, or rather Wade thought, uh, Cassandra felt about him. Sounds like Cassandra's just being mean. Well, she is being mean, but simultaneously, it's like, fucking hell, what did you do to these characters? Why is Deadpool such a pussy? Why have you fucked with everything? Stop. Why is Cassandra just magically the person who could legitimately get under his skin and make him feel insecure? Interesting. Yeah, because you know the... Even if you hit on something true with Deadpool, he's not going to let you know. Yeah, duh, because that would be the the that's like number one rule of the internet. Well, and the only Even time he's seen that. that kind of vulnerable is with people he very much hyper loves, or when he's pushed to an extreme, 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 like it with Francis and Deadpool one. Um, having met this this lady, like he he's not going to let that go straight away. But um, anyway, then Wolverine stabs her from behind with all six claws. And I, oh, I don't know about shit. anyone else, but I was just like, wait, what? Where did you come oh, from? Oh, she's gone now. Well, well, he's just traveled like, through the dirt. He's like Diglett. I guess. Well, what, what about all of the people? <laughs> what about all of the people who are They didn't around? see him. He was underground. <laughs> he's like Diglett. Oh, yeah. He was... I, I don't, yeah. Uh, yeah, all of them didn't do anything about it. He just comes out of the floor and <laughs> stabs her. I don't understand. It was very odd. I don't know the mechanics. I don't know the mechanics of him moving around through the dirt. He he was video. This is he's using he's video game digging, where you can just like the, the ground is just another fluid that you yeah. can go through to go from place to place. You know. <laughs> and so um, we realize that that has no effect on her because she has hyper regeneration. Which, man, what a power set! Nice. Wow. She, uh... How did she get that if she's Charles Xavier's 
twin. Well, she's a mutant, How... so I guess grab bag. You just you, she got that plus the ability to put her hand in people's heads and read their thoughts. Um, I guess that's that's the, yeah. She has all the psychic powers. Oh, and also she has super mega healing. I'm like, oh, okay. She's Maybe just... she has even okay. more than that that we don't know about. Who knows? I'm sure case, she probably does. Uh, they're kind of surprised it doesn't insta kill her. She does not insta kill them back. Instead, she says, the big guy needs to eat, and the rent is due. And Elioth, our big friend, the big dragon pibble fart monster is back. Oh my goodness. It, it's been timing. so long. The timing, though, jeez, he's it's right very, here. Wow. It's very odd, too, because she can... She has hyper-powerful telekinesis. She can pick people up and toss them into Elioth. Or them into his mouth and be like, oh, thank you, gobble gobble. Now, you might think... How are they going to get out of this? And if they do, uh, you know, it must have been thanks to her. And it's like, yes, yes, I can help you out. We do find out later that she didn't kill them, according to Pyro, because she wanted to play with them. But that's not like true. It. Because she expects Elioth to kill them. Yep. And then, so it, it felt to me as though when they made this scene, they were like, oh, this is desperate. Can they get out of this? And they, they give a reason, we'll go over it in a sec. And then later on, they were like, fuck, Cassandra could have easily killed them. How do we explain why she hasn't? And it's like, just say she wants to play with them, that's an easy one. It's like, alright, yeah, we'll throw that in. Feels very, um... But uh, how are they gonna get jumbled. out of this jam, though? You know? How are they gonna get out of it? Well, so, uh, as Eliath is approaching and all the people are panicking, we, of course, realize, ah, there's the, um... You know, the big, uh, there's, there's like a metal device it's you know the you know it it's this metal device that's just on the ground and, and wolverine kicks it this metal device and it, it turns into like a missile and it flies away so all you have to do is stand on it it's like a rocket and it'll get you it'll get you to safety and deadpool jumps on with him this was actually like it, i was i i like was actually stunned by this i was like wait what you just they're just gone they just jump on it and fly away and that's and it. I assume, and I assume this means that a fart cloud monster just didn't need anyone. I, a couple other people, I suppose. They just like fly away. It's insane. They just like jump on a thing that's there and then fly away, and that's it. Yeah. Oh, according to some people in chat, it's a sentinel leg. There you go. Yeah, they just jump on it and fly <laughs> away. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Doesn't Rocket boot. Wrong. Fringy, what's wrong? This makes away. this makes complete sense. And then it just cuts to basically the next portion of the film, which is them just walking around in the void for the next 40 minutes. Yeah, I might they even argue this, this feels like act three and there will be four acts. <laughs> because this this film oh, fucking get gets away. clunky. Yeah. But, they um, just fly away. They do get out because of that. It's, it's very funny because everyone's terrified of Elioth approaching. And Wolverine's just like... Uh, over there, <laughs> it's, it's just let's just use that, and it works. Um, it's brilliant. I, I yeah, this, I mean, it's a leg. It flies. Uh, what do you, what more do you want? This is this is storytelling craftsmanship. Yeah, the leg flies. It, it feels like the scene was cut, like in Hanuf. Yeah, Elias showed up. They had to escape on the leg. And also, I'm pretty sure that in the trailer they showed TVA guy there uh, in that sequence as well. So maybe something was cut. Do you remember? It was like a bit in the TVA uh, yeah. where there's like a little TVA guy and he gets grabbed up and Deadpool's like, oh, Jesus. So maybe they did just cut like a whole sequence there. There's probably a, a deleted scene that abrupt. talks about how there's a fucking sentinel leg there. It, it is incredibly abrupt. It's brilliant. Hmm. So they escape. Thank goodness. Supposed to die in there. Got out though. Uh, and then we get the shut up, stop talking, I'm gonna talk now. We need to get to Paradox. And to get to Paradox, we need to get to uh, or through Cassandra. And to do that, we're gonna need to find the people that Johnny was talking about who live here and try to fight against her. That's the plan. Like, okay. So Man, if they didn't bump into Johnny Storm within the first three days that they were there, I guess that if they just bumped into nobody, they would have just been screwed. Yep, just screwed. That would have been, yeah, that would have been rough. The universe would have just been destroyed, and he would have been, and it seems like it would be likely, given the void should be enormous. I assume it's a whole 
planet? I assume, well, I assume it's the whole universe, right? Like, it's... If it's the end of time and they all converge there and everything, that's gotta be, like, incalculably uh, enormous. Why would it just be, like, Earth? Why is because, it even, like, temperate? Because why there's is nighttime, it, right? If there's there nighttime, then the sun there? sets. So it can't be flat. Sun and put it there? Because at the end of time, there should be no I assume more so. Stars, right? I... Well, yeah, Kang, he knew that there were a lot of stars, and they weren't all, like, necessary. So he, he took well, one... He just gets a little pokey stick, and then... And, and yeah, like, and you're gonna be the Void Sun, so that the people in the Void can have daytime. Which is really... Which is really kind of him, considering he didn't have to do that. The Void could have been dark. And that would have sucked. Mm. So... And then nobody would have wanted to go there. Nobody wants to go there. Well, it would have oh. been worse. Oh, one of the things uh, Wolverine says at this point is, uh, you, he said the people Johnny was talking about before that poor kid was killed, and uh, Deadpool says, poor kid, he was like 50. It's, um, I get the joke, right? Because Chris Evans looks a hell of a lot younger than he is. But it's just weird, because it's like, wait, I, th I thought you would, you would mind having been the reason that a hero was killed. It just it just feels like something that would probably bother him a little bit. But uh, uh yeah, it's kind of weird that he just like murdered him essentially. I have no idea why. And I would be hesitant to hang out with a guy who just is willing to do that essentially on a whim. Yeah, is it, this is the the characterization issues I have, right? Cuz like Deadpool 2 definitely pushes Wade to be more moral than when we would have first met him. Um I'm fine with the notion of collateral damage and even Wade being the reason that certain people suffer who aren't, like, strictly evil, and he's like, whoops, that sort of stuff, but, um, just a strict hero who sacrificed some shit to help them, uh, to murder him, as is referred to it by Wolverine, just feels out of character to me. Yep. It is out of character. I have no idea what Deadpool would do that. Like someone in chat just said, he it's would... Deadpool, he doesn't care. He does. He does care. Deadpool does care about people. Yeah. There's a when lot of Deadpool, people he cares about in the in the Deadpool, continuity of this uh, Deadpool. Like I'm not obviously referring to any other particular Deadpool. This Deadpool. Yeah, obviously it doesn't match for you know one and two, but that ship sailed a long time ago. So I I just got no clue. No clue. Yeah, and then uh, he starts sort of needling a Logan as to why he's wearing the suit, and uh, that's going to have a payoff. Oh, he's going to keep asking about that. And then they get to the diner, which um, I thought was quite surprising. In the trailer, when they show scenes from the diner, I was like, oh, this looks like it's going to be a pretty good scene for character, right? Like, we're going to get some stuff out here that's going to maybe hit, hit hard, set up some stuff. And we are halfway through the movie at this point, so it's kind of like we might want to might hurry because we've not gotten a lot for uh, Logan. And um, almost everything that I found meaning about the, meaningful about the conversation in the diner is in the trailer. I was quite disappointed on that front. I thought I was getting mm. a taste of it, not the actual package. Uh, don't take that out of context. So, you know, I was, I, I, the whole, like, Wolverine was a hero in my world, and then he says he ain't shit in mine. I thought that was going to be, you know, surrounded by other things that would have been much more interesting. But I was like, oh, well. And uh, it, I was surprised when the dynasty scene ended. I was like, oh, shit, okay, that's that. Could have gone for more is, is kind of where I'm getting. Yeah. Definitely. So, um, they, they then cuts to them outside, they're walking around the hills, and um, I guess the first thing you're struck by is like, man, there are, there are quite bountiful areas of the Void. It is not just a hellish landscape of desert and rock yeah. that people die in. How it's... come the Void is Elysium from Gladiator? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know if they've uh, changed it a bit, I guess. I, don't so... know, I just figure that, live here. Yeah, don't live in the shitty desert yeah. where there's nothing to eat, but don't think about it. Live well, especially, here. Especially, um, Elias seems to hang out in the desert part, so yeah, just don't go there. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, don't go there. If that's where Elias hangs out, as if I needed another reason to not be there. Exactly. That the scary monster that eats me is there? Nah, help me out. I'm gonna go live in grasslands. Seems a lot more pleasant. So another aspect I find curious is uh, Wolverine's definitely not the one asking questions in a sort of curiosity way. He's only doing it pragmatically, right? Like, where are we going and how yeah, are we like do Yeah, like a what the fuck thing? is happening? What's yeah. going on here? I was in a bar earlier, like yeah. an hour ago. 
I was drinking at a bar, and now I'm in some crazy world where people's skin is getting ripped off, and there's Feels a like they crazy both... cloud with a skull on it, and it's trying to devour us. They both have a bit of an awareness that they're just in a film, but not in the good way. Uh, the characters are written a particular way, but they're not acting the way that they're supposed to be written. Yeah, um, no one feels like a person. It's because particularly with Logan too. Um, when we cut later, he just start ask. He starts asking, "So, how did your Logan die?" Which I felt is a is a pretty that could be a heavy question, especially coming from him. But it, it, we just cut to it, like you know, diner scene over, new scene. How did your Logan die? Oh, you know, it's not quite the way That's I would have expedient. wanted to approach it. But yes. So yeah, he asked and, and he says, "Oh, uh, you know," and he gives like a really brief summary of the end of Logan. Then he mentions X twenty three is a like a smaller, daintier, yet more ferocious version of you in a way. And the reason that line is there, for anyone who doesn't know, is this Logan has absolutely zero knowledge of anyone known as X twenty three. That's going to be important later. It's um. Then we get the part of the film that I think everyone doesn't like. It's the the extended... Well, not that doesn't like necessarily for the content, but certainly for the pacing. We get um, dog pool and nice pool and walking and crops. And it just goes on and for on, so long. And on. And on. Well, and you know then... what? It would be a lot more forgivable if it was a really funny movie. Well, okay, so we got, we got jokes in here like... Um, uh, Deadpool says, if you can't be a responsible pet owner, then maybe you shouldn't own this little unicorn. And then Nicepool says, guilty as charged. That was kind of funny, wait, so right? It's... Nice, nice. Wait, Nicepool is admitting to being a I don't know. caretaker for his pet? I don't know. Another joke is, uh, he says, the Deadpool like brigade, the team of Deadpools, will chop you up if they find you. If only they process their childhood trauma, then they'd, they'd be awesome, you know? Does Deadpool have childhood trauma? Yes. I'm pretty sure he does, actually. I think his, his dad was abusive or something. I have to okay. Check it out, but, Cause uh... I, okay. Because I, I just couldn't remember it from the other movies. I, just, I legitimately couldn't remember. I hope um, not, because childhood trauma is bad. It turned Boogie into the man he is today. I, yeah. And I wouldn't yeah. want to wish that on anybody else. Seems really, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but, well, um, another uh, example, he says the Honda Odyssey was made to compete with Chlamydia. I don't know anything about the Honda Odyssey to know any, I, I don't know, I don't have a reference. Hmm. If like, if, 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 if I made a joke about the Tata Nano to you with, do you know what that is? If I said the Tata Nano is a really shitty car, I, I, you just kind of have to. I'm not a car person. You'd, I can't help with this. You'd have one. to take my word for it. Sure. You know, like it's like I have no reference for. I don't. I can't. I don't know. I don't have the grounding necessary for the Honda Odyssey being a really shitty car. I don't know what he doesn't. That's the thing. Early on, he doesn't explain why the Honda Odyssey sucks. He just says that it sucks. If he explained why it sucked to get me on his side and agreeing that the Honda Odyssey sucks, then when he references it later, I'd be like, oh yeah, because it has this flaw that was mentioned earlier. I think he mentioned his some background... of the flaws of it. I, it. It doesn't phase with me, though, because I just don't care about cars, but obviously the idea is going to be that he says it. it's amazing once he has his fight in it. That's like the payoff. But, uh... Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah, anyway. Before uh, this becomes the section of the EFAP that everyone else also wants to skip, uh, what happens <laughs> next? That's the thing, though. I'm trying to give credit to the I, film that these are events that take place that are just not very interesting. Uh, yeah, there's an ugly dog in a Deadpool he's... outfit. There's Ryan Reynolds is a nice guy. There's some cornfield. Um, they fight in a forest. Mm-hmm. Um, the, 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 he's, they're in the car eventually, and, uh, 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 Deadpool mentions the suit again. This is where the, the, that insult comes up, uh, I think, uh, Fringy might have missed, but it doesn't really matter. The, um, Wolverine wants to change conversation, they move over to, he wants to ask him what he's gonna do if the TVA can fix his world. 
And uh, Wolverine's like, wait a minute, if? He's like, how, how could you? Lie to me. And uh, Deadpool says, well, because my name isn't Truthful Timmy, the blowjob queen of Saskatoon. Which again, I was just like, okay. I don't, I don't get it. Sex. I don't know. Why would Tim? Why would Timmy be a queen? I I don't. It, I'm <laughs> confused. Is Saskatoon a place known for some of it? It's. I, I don't know, man. Some of it feels I'll, a bit like also random. Also, blowjob. Yeah, he said blowjob. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's funny to say blowjob. And uh, after all of this is where Wolverine finally, you know, he's at his wits' end and he wants to dress down Deadpool. Which came at a time for me where I was realizing simultaneously, man, we are running out of film, but the also I just feel like you guys have barely been able to get to know each other at all. That diner yeah. scene didn't have much of anything in it, and everything else has been very uh, sort we of didn't limited learn and thin. New in the diner scene, all Wolverine kind of learned was uh, all Wolverine learned was in a different universe, in Deadpool's universe, Wolverine's considered a hero, but. I mean, it's not really Wolverine learning anything. Well, new. remember, Rags, he did learn that his girlfriend was a dancer. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're right. Yeah. Um, uh, Deadpool describes uh, his, his girlfriend that they met when she was a dancer. I, I think he only refers to her as a dancer, which is interesting. Because she was a prostitute. Well, he the more interesting to... thing to me is that Wolverine refers to her as a stripper later when I don't think he had any reason to th think or say that. Yeah, he's just a dancer. Um, in any case, this is what Wolverine says. Uh, You're a joke. No wonder no teams took you. You're a ridiculous, immature, half-wit moron. I've never met a sadder, more attention-starved, jabbering little prick in my entire life. And that says a lot because I've been alive for 200 fucking years. You'll never save the world. You couldn't even save a relationship with a stripper. I wish I could say you'll die alone, but it's one of God's best jokes that you can't die except that's on all of us. Um, very aggressive. Very, very, very upset. Um, I like the I, delivery. I, I mean, it's... Oh, yeah, for the, for the, for the record, um, Hugh Jackman's excellent in this film. Uh, yes. Almost he's top excellent notch. at playing this character. I guess. And I don't even mind that sort of dressing down of Deadpool, but I, I was just like, man, okay. I, 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 like you guys really have known each other you, for fucking yeah. what feels like, like 30 oh, minutes, but okay. Yeah, you get surprised at like, oh, character stuff is happening. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, uh, this feels like a payoff that would have been appropriate in a movie that had them actually learning about each other for the first half of it. Yeah. Like, this is maybe the part where they fight and split up or something like that. And this is a second act low point equivalent for their relationship. And they were they were starting to get along, but then something caused a rift in their, their team. And so, you know, just something. Something. Um, but hey, you know, it's, um, it's kind of like it works because, or rather, it comes across as though it works because the audience buy that that would be someone's opinion of Deadpool. I just don't know that it would be this Wolverine's opinion of Deadpool with how little he's known him for. Uh, and to be honest with you, it's something that would have been worth discussing, but he just never did. Like, the the nature of the TVA being able to save his universe, how it would work and what it would mean. Wolverine just was like, yeah, okay. And yeah, was, what's the plan? How do we do this? Yeah. This, you know, do not do you not have that device anymore? So how can they do this? Or the TVA didn't mention this, or... Um, you know, follow-up questions to this insane claim that so, forms the uh, basis of your motivation. So they battle. Deadpool was very upset by that. Starts stabbing. They both start stabbing, stabbing all over the place. Um, I, I, I would say it's a, it's a neat and unique idea to have a, a fight scene in a car, I suppose, especially one that goes for this long and takes advantage of different aspects of stuff. Yeah, it's you know, it's it's fun. just. You know, it's it's a fight where um, I'm sort of just waiting for something you know, to happen. Character-wise, neither of them can permanently hurt each other. Um, we assume, anyway. I don't know if Wolverine chopped off Deadpool's head, what exactly would happen. Or he'd be alive, but at least it would take a long time for him to recover. Uh, yeah, because Deadpool does get blown to pieces in Deadpool 2, and he yes. regenerates. Yeah. So... Yeah, um, when uh, when the fight's over, 
they get picked up by someone, and uh, Deadpool wakes up, Wolverine wakes up, and they've been taken in by that team that Chris Evans mentioned. A team comprised of Jennifer Garner's Electra, Wesley Snipes' Whoa. Blade, oh Channing my God. Tatum's Gambit, oh. and X-23. That is, uh... X-23, huh? all right. How'd you get here? Well, well, let's see the TVA. Let's <laughs> take this piece by piece. Um, yeah. The crowd goes absolutely wild for these guys. Holy shit, how awesome, how cool, how amazing. Um, and I had the exact feeling of, oh. Yeah. Yep. How are they going to be horrifically murdered unceremoniously? <sighs> there's that, and then there's also... Really, you got these guys, and and judging from the first half of the movie, they're not going to say a single meaningful thing, are they? You're just going to have them do one-liners and then fuck off. That's going to be it. Which is sad to me because uh, it's cool to have these 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 folks doing the, yeah, these roles. Yeah, it's neat. Yeah, in a sense, because like you could say that they all sort of occupy a different place. Though I suppose the awkward part is that. It's meant to be a group of losers, in a sense. It's like, Blade, what? Like, he's the the Blade movies are the reason why, like, any of these films exist in the first place. Yeah, like, the Blade the films, they pioneered. All right. Film. Yeah. It's a very strange collection, considering the goal of this movie's, like, like thematically speaking, a lot of people have come to this conclusion, the movie is about second chances. Right? It's this like, applies... what do you mean? The... Yeah, well, so it's it's like so a second chance, and and you know the film knows that this doesn't really work. It's like Electra's film wasn't well liked. Blade and that was, was her loved. Chance, she's in bed, she's yeah, you're right. That was like the second chance. So she got a second chance, and Blade got three movies. Two and then which Gambit liked. got zero. So and Gambit got no chance. What? And then, then X twenty three got one very successful movie. So I don't understand. And, got, and, and the whole idea was that like Logan a gave her up. a chance, a oh, chance no. to live, like lead a life. That was the whole point of the sacrifice in Logan. So what are we even talking about here? And this is Deadpool's third movie and Wolverine's like tenth appearance in a film. So it doesn't even work on like, any level. Yeah. <laughs> so if the Met is completely fucked, what about the actual like story of this? It is hard to understand what they're trying to tell us with this. Let's start, I guess, simple, if there's such a thing, with Blade. He was he was popped out of his universe before he even had a chance to try and fix it. That's essentially his POV. Um, uh, sure, I mean, he just, we, we got a Blade in the void and that's what he says is the reason. I guess that one's the easiest to understand without involving the, the theme aspect. Electra says... We're the kind of people that the, the, the TVA knew when destroying our timelines that we wouldn't go easy. They had to take us out. This is one of the most fucking confusing lines to me in the whole movie, which is seriously saying something. This is a collection of people, yeah, I mean, according to Electra, that the TVA knew wouldn't go quietly, so had to be taken out. What? But I mean, the universe gets destroyed, they get destroyed. I don't so like, know. Why would they need to? Why would they need to worry about you board? guys? Like, yeah, I guess you. Yeah. You want to help save also, people. Like, I don't know if the TVA has been able to successfully capture many, many, many Lokis. I think they're going to have a, a decent chance of getting Electra, right? The people who would cause them the most issue are going to be people like Thanos with all of the stones, or a Galactus, yeah. or any of the most powerful. But not fucking a girl with forks. That's not going to happen. Sorry. And I get that she's got a lot of spirit. That's great. I like Electra. I like Jennifer Garner. Um, I don't remember if the movie was even remotely entertaining or not. It's been a long time. But, um, you know, just, just hearing that out of her, I was like, what are you talking about? They, they, they snip universes before you'd even know they've entered the fucking dimension, whatever the hell you want to call it. I, uh, it's not going to happen. I, uh, so I, just, I, I thought that was kind of cringe and almost pandering again. Right, being like, yeah, fuck yeah. What is, like, think about what she just said. <laughs> That's complete nonsense. Mm -hmm. um, so moving on from here, you have Gambit, who is here, I think, in the same vein as um, John Krasinski as, as Reed Richards. It's just a sort of, wouldn't it have been cool if this happened? And it was something that was maybe considered to, to happen at some point, right? It was getting somewhere, but then it never did. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Channing Tatum was meant to play um, Gambit at some point, and then it never happened. Yeah. And it wasn't even the first time they tried, because remember, they got a uh, what's his name in uh, X Men Origins? Taylor Lautner, was that the guy who did that? Yeah, was... the guy no, who no, did no. a bunch That's of things. Twilight and... guy. Who am I thinking of? It, Taylor Kitsch. It, uh, something. Yeah, yeah, who, who had a kind of a string of just like not great um, <laughs> career choices in movies, uh, like John Carter. Um, Battleship. Do you remember Battleship when they wanted to make it like Transformers? I do remember that. Yes. <laughs> there were Funny aliens time. and they had to fight them. And Channing Tatum, you have to mention, he talks weird. He movie. does talk he weird. Talks really fucking weird. So, um... <laughs> and I, I don't know why he talks the way he does. It just sounds so stupid. He also has some <laughs> weird fucking dialogue too, we'll get to that, but X-23 being the fourth one means that she got individually uh, pruned after the events of Logan in the Fox universe, question mark? I think, I, I like I said, I think we're meant to assume that each of these characters are the ones that were seen in the other one. <laughs> I'm still thinking about that fucking accent. I'm still thinking about that accent. Yeah. Um, I... <laughs> Like, I think we're meant to assume... <laughs> Sorry. I just... Um, I think we're meant to assume that um, all of the characters that we see here are the ones that were seen in the other films. Like, this is not just some Blade who also is played by Wesley Snipes. He is meant to be the Blade from the Blade movies. And so in the same vein, I think we are absolutely meant to believe that this is the same Laura from, um, from Logan. Well, that's uh, unfortunate, isn't it? Just, just feels mean <laughs> but whatever just uh she got zapped whatever goals she had in that movie in relation to her life that logan facilitated that got a bit cut short because she was zapped by crazy alien dva people into a different universe where there's a giant fart monster that eats you certainly changed things up for her um and yeah when she arrives if this doesn't highlight the issue enough already, we'll get there. But Deadpool has to look at her and then go, Logan, that's X-23. And he's like, huh? Because uh, cause they don't know each other. At least those two certainly don't know each other. She somewhat is aware of him, but he has no but awareness of her. Not this particular one. You know, not this particular Wolverine. It's not the same mm. one. Uh... Yeah, and they say that every time someone goes up against Cassandra, they die. They mentioned Punisher, Quicksilver, and Daredevil all died going up against her. Um, even sweet baby angel Johnny Storm went missing two days ago. And it becomes like a back and forth until they realize that De 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 Deadpool what knows. What is the nature of days in the void? Does a day pass every 24 hours in the void? I thought it was the end of time. Who knows? Who knows? Someone's got a, a watch, or maybe some kind of uh, time system, but uh, there's a back and forth about him several times until they realize that Deadpool knows more than he's letting on. And so they say, the, the, the Gambit threatens almost to kill him. And so he says, uh, you know, what did you do to him? And Deadpool says he talks shit about Cassandra and she killed him, and um, he would have wanted us to save my universe. You know, maybe it's too late for yours, but it's not too late for mine. I was just like, man, if Logan had decided to say a little bit more about the nature of Johnny's death, there's a good chance they would have killed Deadpool there. And they don't really get a strong answer from him as to what exactly happened. It doesn't sound very viable. It's just like, oh yeah, he talked right, so badly about her that she killed him. Which, um, after, after Wolverine already said, right, about uh, what he had done. It's just, um... It's almost like I'm looking for consequences, but simultaneously I'm already just mad enough that Deadpool did it, so... Mm. Never mind, I suppose. Um... Yeah, and then, so the, the problem here becomes, uh, this, is, this is a scene a lot of people turned off for, and it is difficult to pay attention because they just start expositing and planning, and uh, they're desperately trying to find a way to get everybody here to do a fight scene. But they haven't got a great reason, because going against Cassandra is suicide. And then uh, Deadpool's like, okay, well, if we get our hands on Magneto's helmet, we can block his psychic power. Which, Which feels... Say, well, yeah, that doesn't mean anything if she just grabs your, your skin. Well, so I was going to say, right, yeah, they're just, they're just wrong when they said that. 
Cassandra so can pull her. off pieces of your body that aren't your skull or your head. Uh, that helmet's not going to do shit if, if you just do that. What they don't say here is if they put Magneto's helmet on her, it will neutralize her powers. They say you can block her psychic powers if we get the Magneto's helmet. They say if anyone got their hands on it. So, yeah, what they say doesn't make sense, and it doesn't even reflect what they end up doing, which um, mm -hmm. they need Juggernaut's helmet for. Which, yes, um, if Juggernaut's helmet can be put... People are saying not Magneto, Juggernaut. Bro, watch the fucking scene again. They talk about Magneto first. We're talking about how they plan this shit. They can't use Magneto's because Cassandra's melted it down. And they're all like, ah, fuck, because she knew that someone might be able to use that against her. So then they move on to any other helmets that might work, and they figure Juggernaut. So the first question that come to mind is, why would she have melted down Magneto's helmet in order to prevent anyone from using that against her, but not done that with Juggernauts? Hmm. I give up. Why? There isn't a why. Uh... Oh. <sighs> Be stupid, and it's going to cost you. You can't. Can't be asking these questions if you don't even know the answer yourself. That's not fair. <laughs> That's I not very sporting you. of you. Um, but yes, they say. Uh, I think it's Electra. She's like, I don't care about your universe, but if these guys got out, maybe we can get back in and kill Cassandra. Which is a really interesting line of logic. If they'd mentioned to these guys they got out because a random sentinel leg was kicked until it exploded and and the rocket fired them off out of there. I don't know that that event means that they have hey. the capacity to kill Cassandra, you know what I mean? It was a very specific cyborg leg, okay? If, uh, th they need the excuse to get them all in, and apparently it's enough that they know Deadpool and Wolverine survived her, that they now believe they have a chance to kill her, when if they knew the nature of how they escaped, which didn't make any fucking sense at all, it wouldn't matter, they're all going to get ran killed away anyway. For their lives. Yeah. Um, Cassandra's so powerful, she could kill all of them 1v... Was it six in, uh, with ease in a second? So this yeah, plan. Yeah, but then she can just rip your skin off. So what are you gonna do about that? How can you counter that? You can't unless you get Juggernaut's helmet. But there's really no reason to think that that's but gonna be then, easy to do before Juggernaut's she kills helmet. you. Yeah, exactly. yeah, she'll pull your legs off. Well, I mean, it's kind of funny, right? Because if they had Juggernaut's helmet and then they went up to her the way that they do, uh, she'd still win. It's actually a very specific set of circumstances that allows them to get the one up on her. And, well, uh, only one of them can wear the helmet at once. Anyway. Uh, they, uh, they say, I'm tired of hiding, let's get an ending. So the almost meta implication is that it's about time that Blade, Electra, Gambit, an X-23 got to have an ending? To which you'd be like, okay, well, I mean, Laura got an ending. Her ending was part of the ending of Logan. Um, so there's that. Um, Gambit never even got a beginning, so I don't even know why we would be talking yeah. about giving him an ending. He had a, he had a beginning, um, like, five minutes ago. Blade Trinity is a pretty, ba pretty bad film, all right? But, like, it has an ending of sorts. I mean, it has an ending. He just rides off into the sunset, I suppose. Better than having um, your skin pulled off, all right? Count your blessings. Uh, I, can't, I, I can't remember what the ending of Electra was. No one remembers. I don't even know what to make of it. It's, it's so baffling as well, because they've survived this long, and they're like, well, I guess we could just die, because it'll give us an ending. It's time, for, it's time for you to die in a Deadpool movie. This um, is what it's all been leading to. And so, of course, I was just like, man, you just, you, you've not tried at all. You've spawned all of these very beloved characters, and to get them to fight, you had them say, fuck it. Oh, don't say spawn. And uh, after that is decided, you get a line from Gambit where he says, I shot out my daddy's dick ready. He was laying his buttery nuts all up in my mama, and I shot up all in there saying, what's up, Doc? Why didn't you, what? What did I, you say? Because people accent. would be able to fucking understand what I'm saying if I tried to do it accurately. <laughs> I um. <laughs> you gotta do his accent. Yes, you have to do his accent. The people <laughs> demand it. 
<laughs> was supposed to be it's supposed to be French, right? And he's fucking it up. <laughs> it's like a, Am I wrong? It's like you got to say it in like the the a, a Louisiana Cajun. What, where kinda... is he? What is actually Gambit's accent supposed to be? I think it is meant to be like Cajun, right? Cajun. I thought he was Cajun. That's what that I don't was. Know if, I don't know if that is. I don't know. If, I don't know if that is an accent or if it specifically describes. I think it describes the. I don't know if that's the accent. I guess yeah. like what? <laughs> yeah, I guess. I think I isn't. Wait, isn't he supposed to be Cajun? I think he is. Here, I'll, let me look it up. I, I think he's supposed to be. Let's see. Yeah, is Gambit Cajun? Uh, according to Wikipedia, he is uh, fiercely proud of his heritage and speaks both Cajun English and Louisiana French. Oh, hey, that's why there I you go. French. He's is he? Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, his, his name is Remy LeBeau. He is Cajun. Janet Tatum's accent is. He loves that chicken from Popeye. It's us. Uh, it's us. Uh, well, yeah, because it's, it's a combination of a couple one. of things. One of the things he's doing is murmuring ish, right? Like, not like Stallone, but, but something, something too close to it that he needed to escape it, but didn't. Because now I'm thinking, like, how many, how many characters, have I, how many people have I even heard with that accent before? Because it can't be that difficult to understand. I assume. Rags, you're probably the expert. Have you heard people speak with that accent that aren't that sound anything like him? Well, yeah, you live in the South, so is that? You're well, the expert way to here. paint us all with uh, a very broad brush there, but well, no, no we don't have. Well, no, that you're geographically closer yeah. to we it are. Than yeah, I'm up. pretty close to Louisiana. I've been there a few times. I don't. I can't remember. I don't think so. Um, I, I don't think I could. I could tell you, but I think that we can all reference uh, Scooby Doo uh, on Zombie Island. Ooh, where that takes place in the the Bayou of Louisiana. And there's some Cajun fellas in that, and they sound. They, they, I, 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 I would, I will take that movie as an authority on the Cajun accent. I think that's pretty safe. So, I'm gonna go by. Uh, I'm gonna go by that. I'm gonna the old, rewatch the old boat driver. The zombie Island. Then, you know the the old boat driver man. He's got the, he's got the Cajun accent. He's like an old seaman in the swamp with his little his boat. And he brings people to the island so that they can be. Well, I don't want to spoil it, but he's got a Cajun accent. Mm. The best of the animated Scooby Doo movies. I think what's kind of interesting is like I don't I don't remember any of his lines specifically. I just have a very vague recollection of his accent being just bizarre and difficult to difficult but... to pass. That does take up time, if you know what I mean, right? Like, continuously it's, it's, establishing how nonsensical is fucking... Be able to understand well, yeah. it is. Because Deadpool keeps, like, making observations about it. Well, he says, uh... Was your dialect coach the Minions? Which is, uh... Um... Oh. Mm. That doesn't make sense, because they well, don't sound I don't anything know, that's, like that's not, making, that's not making me as laugh as much as just my vague recollection of him speaking. The funny thing to me is like, yeah, what's the connection between the minions and, and it's like, yeah, but it's also random. It's like, well, could have been funnier than that, right? Something that actually kind of lines up. It, there could have been a connection in some way, like a good joke. <laughs> then nonsensical. It's like, yeah. I but... think it's just the, the minions, minions aren't nonsensical. Kind of, they say do, banana. The, minion, the minions like kind of speak in gibberish, though, right? Not kind of like. Don't they? Or am I like they kind, kind of? of yeah. It's like kind of. It's not. It's like a mix between Simlish, you know, like the language that the Sims talk, and you know, actual discernible language. Well, so to give an example, when um he said, was it, what was the joke in the first Deadpool? Where he says your face looks like something that fucked a topographical map of Utah. You look, Freddy Krueger. Like an avocado. So Freddy Krueger fucked a topical map, graphical map of Utah. That's that's so accurate to what you can see. It's almost uncanny how that joke got made because it's like fuck. That's that's really good because you can almost imagine the the process of those that event happening, which is absolute you nonsense, it, would like, produce something oh, like that. Yeah. So saying like it was the minions because the minion you can't even understand what the minions are saying. It's like sure that feels like tier one of the joke. Or is it people are saying it's um people are saying it's because like minions are French or something or they speak French. Oh, are they? <laughs> uh, well, I think. 
I think illumination is wait, what the... wait, hold on. Did I speak French? I <laughs> don't hmm. I'll be honest with you, I've not seen a lot of minions content. It's my weakness. Um Yeah, well, I yeah, I mean I I got no idea. I've seen the minions, but I I do not or, uh, think I, I can like recall I actually, really. Uh, no, now people are saying they're not French. So now I don't know what to believe. <laughs> the minions were never French, right? I'm, this is the problem. I don't think the minions between... go back. They back. What? They date back what? to the prehistoric wasn't, days. Wasn't it something like the minions were at the like opening for the Olympics or something? Well, they were at really? the dawn of time. I. That's true. Canonically, I, am I, am I, well, now, now I, now I don't even know what's real anymore. I feel like I don't. Now, yeah, now I'm just totally lost. I don't know what's real anymore. The God Minion movie is probably better than Deadpool 3. Um, I yeah. mean, they probably go on a basic character arc, yeah. Probably. You know, the Minions go on their little adventure. And it's a prequel, adventure. so they can't, like, undo, can, uh, like, grooves. You can you stamp know, that quote on the Blu-ray for Deadpool 3. Like, if yeah. people ever ask... If people ever ask, what's the reason why I should watch EFAP? What have they said that's really <laughs> deep and meaningful and insightful? Then just slap them with that one. Just hit them. Just bam. Apply directly to the forehead. With the old, the Minions movie is probably better than Deadpool. Okay, Wolverine. so Wikipedia actually has a description of the language that they speak. So this is what Wikipedia says. Minions? They speak a fictional polyglot language called Minionese. <laughs> which features a combination of gibberish mixed with words from real languages, such as, but not limited to, English, French, Spanish, Indonesian, Hindi, Korean, Filipino, and Italian. All right, then. So that's according to, yeah, that's according to, uh... So they speak Minionese, they don't speak French. Well, that's Man, a shame. That, like, this is I, what I, mean. I don't know why, but this has now reminded me of the fact that um because there's a new despicable me movie that just came out right but it is uh actually is being there? beaten out by yeah despicable me 4 i think it came out or like, yeah that's not yeah. even including but, the minions it, movies yeah there's the minions yeah, movie where they minions go back movie. in time to the 70s or uh, uh, of which apparently right? there's gonna be a third minions movie um and also i suppose this is the interesting thing is that minion the despicable me and minions movies tend to make a lot of money but the highest grossing film of the year is Inside Out 2 with a $1.5 billion worldwide yeah. gross. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It, is, it, is, it is, looks like it's going to become the most successful animated film of all time. Inside Out um, 2? Yeah, it's going to... The Lion King 2019 yeah. is the last one that's got to be to become the highest grossing. It is Pixar's most successful film. It's more successful than the Frozen movies. Uh, more successful than the Mario movie. Yeah. How come so no one's talking about it? Well, um, I guess a lot of people are seeing it, Rags. I mean, that's like, just being legit. Like, I, I don't think I've actually spoken to anyone who has seen it. I, I don't think so. I haven't even seen. I haven't even seen memes of it. Yeah, but it is. It is. It is Pixar's most successful film. But all right, I'm almost tempted to see yeah. it now that it's. If it becomes the most successful animated movie of all time, I'll probably see it. Uh, yes, I mean, I, because I mean, I didn't really have any interest in it because I'm not that big of a fan of the first one. I, uh, mm. I think it's super overrated, but yeah. Just to be clear, the Minions movie where they go back in time to the 70s, that did happen, right? That's not just a crazy there fever was one dream where they were, Yeah, where they're in like London, right? In the like 60s or something. Okay, I just wanted Isn't to make like sure that I wasn't made... actually going insane, that that was a real thing and I wasn't just inventing that. Okay, that's, that's actually Look really... Look at Rags trying to pretend that makes me feel that a lot better. a Minions fan. We all know. Okay. Look, I've seen Despicable Me 1 and, I, and 2, and I saw the Minions movie. I think those are the only three that I saw. The thing about the Despicable Me and Illumination in general is that films tend to cost a lot less to produce than like comparable, like you know, Pixar films tend to cost about two hundred million dollars. The Illumination films, I, th I mean, Mario was kind of noteworthy as being their most expensive one, and it had a hundred million dollar budget. So like those films are fairly cheap to produce by comparison to other animation studios, and they make a lot of money. It's the reason why, like, Illumination is so successful is because they just reliably make lots of money. Um, anyway. Some of the other dialogue, by the way, because I don't want to skip over some of the some of the bits and bobs here. Like, um, I think several 
moments in this whole conversation, the words let's fucking go are uttered several times mm -hmm. and let this man well, cook. The marketing tagline is "Let's fucking go," which um is a tad cringe. I find that the the movies that are the best in this regard with with lines like that are the ones they're the ones that set the line. They make a line, and then everyone else is like, "That's a fucking cool line." I'm gonna say now. Rarely well, do you kind get of like maximum effort, right, in the first Deadpool, and then that became Ryan Reynolds. Like, I way prefer company. maximum effort. He does say it in this as well. It's just like, yeah, maximum yeah. effort's very fun, but um. Obviously, you guys, chat, you know. When I heard him, them say, let's fucking go, they keep spamming, let's fucking go, I'm, I'm like, just say peak fire, please. Just someone say peak <laughs> fire, bro, and that'll be it. Fire, bro. Maximum effort, bro. Yeah, might as well. Well, no, not maximum maximum effort, we're chill with, because that's, that's, that's their own little thing. But Which let's fucking chill. go, Having again, just feels like peak fire, or we are so back, you know, like, yeah, they have so that back. as their but also because Blade, I think, says something about how they're gonna they're gonna fight, and then he says, "Let this man cook." I was just like, uh... yeah, it's a bit like, damn, man. You know, you know, Deadpool is like not a zoomer. Deadpool is in he its probably 40s. hates them. It feels Deadpool like pandering, well, and those people that we've well, covered in YouTube it's videos it's... that go fucking nuts over stuff like this, I could picture them being in the cinema, being like, "Whoa, they said the thing. They said the cook thing." Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, it's it, it's like you said, Rags. He would probably find that a little embarrassing. I mean, he makes fun of a uh, Negasonic teenage warhead in uh, Deadpool yeah. for being a stereotypical like brooding teenager. So I think it's safe to say. That yeah, there's he, a lot of good yeah. jokes. Yeah, a lot of good jokes were about that. But you know, what is with it? Like um, people, like, but it's a parody. Like. But they're doing the thing. Like, they're just, it's they're not just a doing it. If you do the thing, okay. yeah. The we went through this with the boys. The the we did go through it with the, the boys. boys. Was they like the they're just they parodying, parodying the thing, though, guys. Like, they do the thing. They are the thing. Yeah. They want to appeal to everyone, so they want to satisfy the audience that enjoy that shit and satisfy the audience that would make fun of that shit at the same time. You do mm -hmm. not get points nor credit. If anything, you lose points and credit for trying to do yeah, it, for being you know a spineless better. coward. Yeah, you know better and you're still doing it. It's one thing if you do it unwittingly because you don't know, but if you know and you do it anyway, it's like, oh, damn, yikes. That's why lampshading is annoying. You know what the problem is, but you're still doing it. So, we get a very, very important scene that was kind of the one I was like, okay, if they can at least get this right, that would be something. It's uh, Logan sitting at a fire with his Alchemy Hall, and X-23 walks up to him. Now, we're not in a great situation here because he's got zero context for who this girl is, so the dialogue here would have to be fucking stellar for this scene to work. And do we even... Is she the one from Logan? Yes. Unfortunately, I think we're supposed to believe that is the case, yes. Yeah. <sighs> Okay. And so, her opening gambit is to say, oh. you know, you showed up when it mattered the most. You may not know it, but you're a good man, Logan. I got to grow up because of you. And I was already like, oh, the film's not going to be honest. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to try and skip because it's got no balls. The truth is, she has no idea who this guy is. And that's actually a place I think would be a better start for this scene. She could be like, you might have thought I'd come here and say, oh my god, I, I love everything about you, you did such a great job, but you may have heard from Deadpool that you're some kind of amazing hero and you're feeling pretty down about it in comparison. I can't tell you who you are. I don't even know you. I do know the guy in my world, though, and what he meant to me. And then to explain a lot about that guy, and then to say there is absolutely nothing stopping you from being that person. Something like that. Instead, Something like that. much like Multiverse of Madness, she just starts telling him he is going to be that person, and he, he is that person, because you know what? It's just a consistent element of Wolverines. They're just, they're just, this is the worst of the worst Wolverines, all right? But it's like, no, but he's still going to be a good guy. <laughs> like, we can't go that far. We can't make him like a bag or anything. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, because he does explain his backstory in this scene. And right. when we came into this, I was very much interested in the concept of we're not going to ruin Logan's legacy because we're not dealing with Logan. We're not even dealing with the Wolverine you'd expect. We're dealing with someone who went on a really dark path and he's going to be brought 
onto a path of saving a universe, which is very much something a villain might want to do anyway. You know, and it can make for a very interesting dynamic. And Deadpool is absolutely someone he can, punching bag style, have along for a... He's like someone you can't... If he was like a villainous character who wanted to kill everybody around him, Deadpool's one of the most perfect people to have because he can't fucking get rid of him, you know? And they would, they would yeah. have to be forced to help each other in certain circumstances. The potential there is enormous. Now, instead, we get told he's the absolute worst, beyond redemption, beyond forgiveness, the worst thing that's ever happened to any world that has a Wolverine. Like, okay, so what is the story? And we, we get it. He says that when the X-Men asked him to be there, uh, he wasn't, and instead he was drinking. And when he finally came by to, you know, help him out with whatever it is that they were doing, he was too late. The humans had come and killed them all. And so that made him real mad, and he started killing, and he killed bad guys and good guys. That is, that is the story of the worst of the worst Wolverines. I don't believe you. I mean, I don't even know where to begin. There's so many issues I take with this. One, um, what a detailless story. <laughs> it's just like, okie dokie. That's, I guess, a thing that happened. Uh, two, why would you kill... Like, why would that event make you kill good people? Is he talking about, like, he became really hateful of just humans in general and killed a lot of good humans because he was so angry? It just doesn't sound like the... the Wolverine they're trying to build here, which is a good man, you know? And I guess humans could just go and kill all the X-Men? So that's another element of this story. Was he going to be the one to be able to save them all if they wiped out all of the X-Men? I mean, some pretty powerful X-Men. Yeah, I don't know, because obviously we get so little of this story that there's not much to be able to work with. And um, I started to realize something at this point, which I've come to on, you know, re-watching as well. It's, um, they've cheated... This isn't the worst of the worst Wolverines. He's not even that much different from the Logan Wolverine. If you guys remember, Logan Wolverine is kind of an asshole. He treats everybody pretty negatively because yep. he is fucking tired, he's exhausted, he thinks the whole world... He's very like, um... He's like a... He's callous to the whole world. He's just trying to make it. And so anytime anyone brings up anything, he's like, ugh, like, shut the fuck up, you do that, don't talk to me about this, or... You're an asshole. You're very, very caustic to anybody who wants to even speak to him. And by the mm -hmm. end of the film, he comes through in such a great way that says a lot about him as a person. Right? So what I guess I'm saying is, Logan is an asshole with a heart of gold. That's who you get in Logan. That's definitely who he is in X-Men 1. And it's a lot of the, the stuff that people really enjoy as the highlights of a character like Wolverine. Even when he's working with the X-Men in uh, the OG trilogy... He's very much the... It's probably why he became the favorite character. He's, he's always the one that's been wisecrack or bounced off really well. Obviously, he's an amazing actor as well, so there's always helpful, but... The Wolverine we've got here is just the Wolverine everyone fucking likes anyway. If you had a choice to watch a Wolverine interact with a world, and one of them was hyper-wholesome Wolverine who's nice to everybody and gets along and tries to win the day, versus Wolverine who kind of fucking hates the world and is hyper-aggressive and ferocious... I feel like the whole audience is opting for the latter. And that's kind of the guy you get in Logan. Because he's pretty fucking ferocious in that film as well. Um, he's considered like the best Logan in Logan. Or rather the best Wolverine. He's the, he's the anchor being, right? That's top tier. But really, yeah. what's, what's the difference? He felt like he failed in Logan. And, and what does he do in this film that's so unlike a Logan like that. And it's like, well, you know what? He, in his past, got drunk and he didn't help out the X-Men when they got killed. It's like, okay, but clearly in his story, oh, he would yeah. have if he had known that was going to exactly. happen. He didn't know. Whereas the worst Wolverine would have been a villain. Yeah. Like he would have been... Oh, yeah, he, he would have been monster. evil. Yeah, he would have been like with Magneto, with Sabretooth, or, and doing a whole bunch of evil shit. Yeah, he just imagine like the kind of evil someone with Wolverine's power us. level could do. That's it's not such, what it would be. It's such a waste, and it's so cowardly. They could never... They could never portray him as a bad guy, could they? They wouldn't have the balls. But they'll tell you they are. It, um, it bugs me as a premise to work with, with so much potential, and then they actually just do the thing they said they wouldn't do, which is they just bring in Logan back. Because this Very scene... Very limited imagination here. And an unwillingness to use it. 
This this scene wants to bring him back, and the way they have to do it is to have him explain his story, and then X-23 says, yeah, but you're like a good guy. And he's like, yeah, but I'm not. And then she's like, yeah, but you are though. And he's like, nope, I'm definitely the wrong guy. And then she's like, well, you were always the wrong guy. And this this changes it. He, at the beginning of the scene, he says he's not interested in helping them. It ain't his fight. Her telling him this was enough to switch him into hero mode. Now, my... How bad can you be if the thing that turns you into a good guy is a pep talk from someone you met two seconds ago? You don't even know her. <laughs> it's not fair. Yeah. It, it doesn't work. Of course, in mind, like, you know, that the, this is an old man, you know? Um, he's been alive for like 200 years. He's probably seen and heard a lot of things before. The idea that you could create such radical change in him just from like a conversation like that come on yeah i don't know about that one and you had the chance to make a far better scene here she could have described that you know what everyone's been talking about how much of a fucking hero the one of my world was no one talks about just how much he had to work to get there no one talks about how much he kind of treated a lot of people like shit because he thought little of himself and that was the big issue, you know? Basically, explain how there is an easy pathway for this Logan to become a better Logan, because he doesn't believe that's possible, right? Something? But they cut it down, and, and, and they have, like, barely anything, and then they just repeat back and forth, basically, just, you're good, no, I'm not, you're good, no, I'm not, you're good, though. And he's like, hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. I thought of that. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think I agree. Come on. Like he's not, he's not even close to the worst <laughs> yeah. of the worst Wolverines. By the end of this film, and by the way, this is the film's fucking opinion, he's no different than the anchor being. Yeah. They just brought him back. Mm -hmm. And doesn't that just feel like a bit of a wasted opportunity of instead of letting Hugh Jackman get an opportunity to play a Wolverine who is actually vastly different from the Wolverine that we're used to seeing, but the problem is that that's just not as appealing from a general member berries. Remember Hugh Jackman Wolverine? You love him, don't you? Here he is again, slightly remixed, but not really. It's, I don't know if it's, like, cowardice to actually not doing... Um, I, you, know, you know what, Rags? I think it's worse than that. I think it is genuinely, like, a lack of imagination. A lack of imagination. I think it's that they couldn't imagine a, a, a Wolverine who was any different. Um, so they end up writing a Wolverine who is very similar, because we see the lack of imagine- I mean, you know, we talked about it in Multiverse of Madness, right? You see all these crazy universes, but the one where they spend most of their time is basically just an Earth that's a little bit- um, they've got, like, trees growing on the buildings. Um, Ooh, instead of, Red like, means a, go. Ooh, wow, a crazy. Are out there concept, or, or even just, like, we talked about it then, basic, like, alternate history of, you know, what if Loki won, and it's like an Earth that's dominated by Loki and the Chitauri, and, and he's, like, instituted. You know, and that'd be, I'd say that's a, a much more basic one than what you could do. And I kind of feel the same way about this. It's like, yeah, this is Wolverine. This is who Wolverine is. Boring. Very boring. And, uh, the scene passes most people's smell test, I think, was, once again, the fucking performance... Hugh Jackman he's great. did it. Hugh he's, Jackman's he's great. great. And, he's uh, great, but the writing, man, the script. Yeah. Writing in the script. <laughs> then we kind of see, as if there isn't, this is just every time. The next scenes, I, 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 I was so getting like, what the fuck? So we open with Pyro and Paradox talking on the phone. This... This is already just immediately like, what? <laughs> How is that even possible? Why would I that be so happening? I was so ready to just, when we watched this, I was so ready to, <laughs> to say something. And I'm like, you know what? Whatever. Sure. <laughs> it's so fine. Like, like what? It, you, fine. <laughs> what do you even say? <laughs> the summary of the scene would be, Paradox says to Pyro, are they dead? Because he really wanted Wolverine and Deadpool to be dead. Pyro says, no, because Cassandra wanted to play with them. Paradox says, we're on the verge of completing the plan. We cannot have anyone getting in the way. You need to go kill Cassandra. And then he says, okay, I'll do it for a price. And Paradox says, okie dokie. This scene is like 40 seconds at maximum. 
and it's so fucking awful as if we didn't have enough problems already they're just piling them on it is a fact that cassandra has a deal with the tva slash mr paradox to rule the void why how what in the fuck are you talking about how did this come to be this way but okay I just don't know why in the world they would be okay with it. To make it worse, we're going to find this out later, she can leave whenever she wants. She has the capacity, the power to do so. She can just leave the void. And this is something that the people over at the TVA have not prevented in any way, shape, or form. They just tolerate. Now remember... You can drop a portal beneath anybody you want at any time in any way, shape, or form, and you, you, you can drop her suddenly into the blender dimension if you wanted to. She will just yeah. get mashed the fuck up, and there's nothing she could do about it. Yeah, or just the, the empty void of space, or anything you want. Now, if you want to just, just, you can't even understand that. But I'm at like, I haven't even approached the other problems yet. Paradox has decided they need to now kill her because she might stop him from doing his plan of pruning the Fox universe. Why would she have any interest in stopping you from doing that? What the fuck is the connection there? I have no clue why Paradox is worried about this when they've had a deal with her forever, apparently, and, I mean, technically for all and of not all of time, and, and they prune all the time. Like, what, what, was, what does this have to do with her? Why would she care? But then also, what do you think's going to happen if you try to kill her and you're not successful? She knows about the TVA. She has a deal with you guys, apparently. Do you have the authority to do this? And what are you going to do? Like, do we have to worry about power vacuums? Or is she going to kill you? And then, of course, as if this is all just fucking collapsing, you're going to send Pyro to kill Cassandra? Pyro? What's he gonna do? She has oh, infinite healing. <laughs> he can't do shit. And it's, I, I, I was actually about, he's like, I'll do it for a price. It's like, what is your plan, Pyro? And we find out Pyro's plan was just to wait for an opportunity <laughs> in which he could kill it from someone else. There is more potential uh... for Mr. Paradox to easily kill Cassandra than anyone in the void. He's got the TVA resources. Yes, he does. He's basically Teleport. omnipotent. Yep. Teleport her into the sun. Yep. She can go hang out there with Icarus. <laughs> and Rag, I, I want to Rag, do you remember what the fuck I'm talking about when I say that? The Greek story? No. I no. thought you would say that. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the Icarus who exists in the Marvel Universe, the Eternal who flew into the sun. No, I, I don't. I didn't see Eternals. He flew into the sun. Oh, well, don't fucking do that. You'll die. He wanted to. Oh. He wanted to. He wanted to cook. Oh, and okay. they let him. You gotta let him cook. All right. But yes, he could have just teleported her into the sun, but he didn't for some reason. Why would you say pyro? I. <laughs> Everything about that scene is horrific, but you need it to make certain other things happen. So, there it is. <laughs> that scene happened, I guess. Uh, so then we get the heroes are in the van, and they're on their way to do the hero thing. And that's when you get the line where uh, uh, Wesley Snipes says, there's only ever been one blade, and there's only ever going to be one blade. That's interesting. It is funny that he says this one next year. Blade. Marvel Studios Blade. I mean... It's it the is, most interesting line it, of the film. I would say it's possibly the closest they get to saying something interesting because you yes. wonder if it's commentary on the fact that they have bungled the fuck out of Blade for the past, like, five years. Yeah, like, you wonder if it's the kind of thing where the producers sort of, they're like, ah, cute, and they don't realize it's actually, it's getting slipped by them, you know? Because, like, obviously it panders in the hell to me, because I, th like, I love Blade 1, and Wesley Snipes as Blade oh, is perfect man. casting. And the, then... The opening scene in Blade, goddamn, so good. It's, you know, and, and 
Mahershala Ali being Blade, I'm I'm fine with him giving it a shot, but like, I, it's He's just right so now. unlikely uh, the film will be good. You know, just the physicality of Blade. Yeah, and of course the way that the scripts are written. Whether like you know, I would I would be surprised if the Blade movie ended up having any action scenes that were as cool as the ones in the first Blade. God, man, the, oh, dude, the action scene in the the nightclub is so good. Ah. Oh. Thing is, though, it sucks to say this, but it's just like the, this, what we analyze. Like, why would he say something like that when there's obviously going to be infinite blades? Like, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Especially when there's going to be a new it's blade the next year. Because uh, Deadpool gets the the characterization of being able to say things like that, but the 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 line only has meaning with Meta. There's nothing in universe that would make any sense yeah. for a line like that. Yeah, I mean, of course there could be other blades. There's got to be more blades in other universes, so it's got to be Meta. Short-lived Blade TV show. I assume he's only talking about the movies, though. Yeah, that would be my assumption. Um, remember when Mauler said all the jokes were at movies that have already come out and Disney can't benefit from anymore? I don't think I said that. All the jokes uh, are I at movies that, that already... I, well, no, I said that the comments are, all, are usually made retro... Like, that the bad stuff came afterward. It's not going to be what's coming up. But I mean that that statement doesn't even imply that the next Blade movie is going to be bad necessarily. Well, just that nobody's going to. I was going to say this. This passes just because Wesley Snipes would fucking say this. Of course, like nobody's surprised at yeah. him being like, "I'm the fucking, I am the Blade, I'm Blade." That's this. Uh, yeah. It Blade's kind of an absolute badass, right? Like he, this, this kind of top tier. It's hard to beat him for badassery. Yeah. So. I mean, God damn, the These are the kind of lines you'd expect the, him to the say. Fight thing, and then does the fist pump with the shit eating grin. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Besides, um, the, the little, I little didn't little like. Sweet, we we uh, definitely said the... uh, there were jokes yeah. we liked in this movie. Um, yeah, there were a couple. That's one of the comments I would rate as higher than uh, almost all of them. Because <laughs> no, because I keep laughing about uh, Gambit, but I don't know how much points I want to award to the film for that. <laughs> His accent makes me laugh. Yeah. Um, kind of like a are you laughing at or with sort of situation. Maybe both. Uh, so all the characters get out and their plan is to distract the Cassandra's forces while Wolverine and Deadpool go and deal with her. Obviously um, it's unfortunate but Cassandra strips them all of their skin and they all die. That's a shame. Wait, you should have seen that coming. Happened. What are you talking about? Well, of course, it's what happened. Oh, sorry. What she do. I, she could just yeah, instantly I watched, win, right? I watched the wrong. No, I meant. I meant she picks them all up and throws them into Eliath. Oh, is he here? Well, she Are... can. She can uh, actively command him to arrive. So, can she? I, I, I don't know what else to assume. She see, he seems to always arrive on her call. Uh, I saw people mentioning that she has a deal with him, and that's why it works that way. Um, Which is stupid. Why the fuck would Eliath need to make deals with anyone? <laughs> Did they talk? What does well, his voice sound like? She's apparently going to deal he... with the TVA rags. I, I, got, I got nothing for you. I don't know how the fuck this works. Uh, the... How do these deals get negotiated? Yeah, does Eliath have like a representative or does he talk himself? Does he speak English? I, Where did he I learn English? Think, I don't think that it's displayed that he really even has much of a consciousness at all. I just, yeah, I thought he just devoured and consumed things, and that was kind of his purpose to be there to, to eat all the stuff in the void planet. But she's apparently struck up some sort of a bargain with him. Did he take out a little pen and sign it? Was hmm. it like a golden signature, like Ariel? Well, <laughs> I like the idea that he's got very neat handwriting, though. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so this um, practice. this plan works because Cassandra yeah. decides to not do anything. Uh, yeah, bold she decision. She decides to let all the other guys do the fighting, which doesn't work out so well for a lot of them because, I mean, this is just a fight where, where they're not allowed to do shit. You know what I mean? Like plot wise, this is a yeah. this is the time for all the heroes to shine. Uh, choreography is pretty chaotic. There's nothing here that I think is particularly special or anything. It's just moving so fast that it's hard to really grasp what's going on. But well, there's I mean, like, you know, you know uh, Blade will wrap know, a I, I... thing around someone and stab them in the front of the head and kick them or shoot and then Gambit will attach cards to people and they'll explode. It's, it's all very normal signature moves. And, um... and now I would like to take an opportunity to talk about the 12 bullet fight scene in, in Deadpool 1 because yeah, I'm a big fan. I really like it. 
I mean, first of all, to just give him the hard limit if he's only got 12 bullets is, like, fun as a challenge that he has to deal with. But then to throw in a whole bunch of things in the mix that, like, result in him either losing a lot more bullets, either because he misses, or because he gets so mad at one guy that he decides to waste two bullets on him. Um, it's, uh, it's like... like the yeah, that's right. It's, yeah. it's What I like about it is that it's clearly a fight scene that was born from the limitations that they had, but they worked with them to the best of their ability. They didn't have that much money to mess around with. I mean, they keep even making jokes about how he keeps losing all of his weapons because they, they can't afford it. <laughs> they don't yeah. have the budget to do anything crazier than that. So the idea that, yeah, let's use with, with 12 bullets for two guns, let's see how much we can squeeze out of it. But what's particularly fun about it is that like the entire dynamic of the fight scene is really unpredictable. Um, it starts conventionally of just, he jumps out and shoots two guys. Um, but then it's, you know, like Francis shoots him and then he misses three times, jumps over, uh, he gets away and then just some other rando guy is walking along next to him and then just hits him in the head. Um, and then probably the best joke was the part where the guy was, uh, shooting his rifle and then he jumps up to get him and Deadpool is still laying there in a little pose because he's not counting bullets like Deadpool is. Oh, it's good. And then it ends, with, and, and of course it does a thing that fight scenes, uh, a lot of good fight scenes do. It ends with a cool climax if he shoots three people with one bullet. It's like, yeah, it's really dynamic and fun. Um, and it has Very a pace grounded, that's really yeah. easy to follow. Um, whereas this one just feels like, yeah, just um, sort of throw everybody in, and everybody's moving really fast and quick, so, you know, whatever. It's awful. Oh. I don't know if I'd say it's awful, it's just that there's nothing about it that jumps out as particularly exciting or interesting. No. Well, isn't that well? I'd say that makes it awful, considering all of these characters you have. Well, to the work options with. they had for sure. Yeah, all this stuff, all of this money, all these characters, and there's nothing about it that's like you. You, you manage to do nothing with it. I feel like you had something to say there, um, Mola. Well, uh, two things from chat. First, they got quote: uh, "This CG looks so shit. It looks like someone recorded a screen with their phone." And uh, th this person is very convinced that we've based our assessment of the CG off only cam footage. So, first of all, Fringy and myself definitely saw this in a theater. Uh, Rags, I'm sure did, in not. a distant planet or dimension. Whatever. Point um, that I believe it could have been... I think it might have been YMS on Twitter. I can't remember who, but I was so fucking thankful that someone made this point and it went semi-viral. When CG looks bad on cam footage... That's catastrophic. It looks worse. Yeah, it looks, it looks worse. It, so, to, yeah, to, be, to, be, wait, 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 to, to be to be absolutely clear, because I think people are going to mix this up, CG looking good in the crisp 4K is one thing. To then record that with a phone is very likely going to assist the, C the, the CG because it'll blur it. Everything will be blurred, so it'll be harder to make out what exactly is or isn't CG and what exactly isn't high fidelity or not. The lighting will be blurred. It's all going to be blurred. Meanwhile, when things look particularly bad on CG, uh, like, like in general, they're going to look even fucking more noticeable, uh, arguably, to someone who, who thinks that's how it would work out, right? It's just like it must do because everything gets downgraded with, let's say, a cam copy or on someone's phone. The phone is going to help the CG, even if it's awful. That's how it works out. A lot of people can't yeah, tell how bad it looks. The more clarity it is, the more that you can tell how bad it looks. So, the more clarity means you can see, like, how fake it exactly. is. Exactly. Things end up looking wor The worst of the CG looks worse in 4K than it does on a phone. Now, finally, this film is already known for having awful CG. I don't even know why you're bringing this up. <laughs> this is not some controversial take. This is one of those yeah, agreed like, upon no, criticisms I mean, the film jump has. ahead, when, uh, when, when, when Wolverine jumps out of the bus, holy shit. <laughs> so... Damn. Yeah, like, like, the bus Ooh. CG is possibly one of the most shocking. If you haven't seen it, chat, you will someday, and it's it's horrendous. It's going to be made fun of forever. <laughs> and Just in give time, it time, people will make fun of it, yes. yes. You'll give tell your months. grandchildren about it. Give it a couple of months, it'll get made fun of. So, like, yeah, I guess what I'm saying in total is, I don't, it's really not on my priorities that the CG in this is awful. Uh, we've had, That's a very commonality uh, thing it... for uh, phases four and five, compared to assassinating Deadpool, but... assassinating Wolverine, annihilating the world building and having a plot that has almost zero sense in it. I think the reason why it's noteworthy to bring up is because it emphasizes something that should probably be more, a more prominent part of the discussion about this film, which is that it was obviously rushed. It's, it's known that it was rushed because it was shooting partway, uh, it got halted partway through due to the uh, strikes. Um, and I think it wrapped principal photography in February and it came out in July. 
Now, it would have been that they would have been able to do some post-production work on the stuff that they had already shot during the strike. But at the end of the day, wrapping like principal photography four months before your film is coming out on like a big $200 million budget film that has a lot of visual effects, like, it's gonna show. You know, we saw it with, with No Way Home. That was the same deal. And it shows. Yeah. Compared to something like Avatar 2, which, you know, don't like that film at all. But that film had like, Terrible what, movie. three, four gorgeous. years? Three, four yeah, years of post-production. Gorgeous, it looks phenomenal. It? It looks incredible. It's it's and 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 the reason why with the visual effects is particularly noteworthy is because if those problems are existing with the visual effects, you should probably expect that those sorts of problems are being rushed and manifesting elsewhere, such as in the writing. Uh, the other comment I saw that was yeah. of interest is like, so then Azazel teleports everybody off the cliff, right? And then Pyro, he just burns everybody to fuck, and then Lady Deathstrike fucking annihilates all. It's like. Mm. Well, yeah, I mean, Lady Deathstrike <laughs> went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Wolverine. She nearly won. Yes. But uh, none of these characters but, uh, are them. They're all here to be killed. That's what this... Yeah. Their only role. Which is, I don't know, it feels particularly awkward when any one of them could be, like, an antagonist for, uh... You know, on, uh, like, on their own that pose a big threat. Especially, you know, you're teleporting them up into the sky, right? What's... <laughs> like, what's Electra gonna do if she gets teleported up into the, uh, sky? You know the the, the one, because I was just thinking again about the bus one, it is so weird because uh, something we throw in with a lot of the bad CGI is it's, it's not going to be the artists, they don't want their work to look that fucking way, it's going to be crunch. Right. But like, the bus one is one of the first times I've really thought to myself, you, could, you couldn't, you, you hung on that for so long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did they you, did, did they you have hung to? on that like it was really good. And all I can think is, surely there, surely there has to be a way that they could have done that practically. Like, I know, you know what I mean? Like, sure, there's got to be some kind of technique that could have been leveraged to achieve a similar effect, but with him in the actual suit. Which, I mean, by the way, I, jumping ahead again, the um the mask uh, looks pretty obviously fake and CG'd on, uh, to the point that I would be surprised if it turned out that he was wearing a real mask, because, I don't know, if he was, they must have done something to it in post, because, like, it didn't look like it was tracking with his face properly at all. Um... So it ain't nanotech. It didn't even have a real mask. In principle, it's the same. It's the same problem. <laughs> um, but that's jumping ahead. They yeah, use the real I mean, costume, guys. CGI mask. I also uh, uh, with with the fight scene reaches like a a, a lull at one point, and uh, he says, "Some motherfucker's still trying to ice skate uphill." I wanted to kill myself. Um... Uh, yeah, that that one's a bit of a like. Hey, we're hip and down with the with the. the uh, I said to you, we, we know what's up. When I'd seen the film, and I'll say it for the stream. I've probably brought this up before, but it is the quintessential example. I was watching good old Expendables three once upon a time, and you have Brad Pitt. Sorry, not Brad Pitt. Fucking why? Why am I blanking? Brain, you working? What's, what's going on there? Uh, Die Hard Man. His, his name has escaped my brain. Oh, Bruce Willis. Bruce, Bruce Willis. Willis, yeah. I, it happens see, to everybody. I, I like that because it does happen, it happens, yeah. there's no way anyone would believe I would forget his name. So my brain just stole the words from me and then you guys gave it back. So I appreciate that. Brain yeah, sometimes it forever. happens. Sometimes it, it happens. happens. <laughs> it happens and I wouldn't hold it against <laughs> you. Die Hard Man and uh, Terminator Man, otherwise known as Arnold Schwarzenegger, both doing their action scene together. It's wonderful. They're shooting their guns. And um, Arnie runs out of bullets, I think. And he says, oh, you know, shit, I'm going to get some more. I'll be back. And then Bruce Willis says, no, you're always back. You're always doing it. I'll be back. I'll be back. And then starts walking off. And then it cuts to Arnie and he goes, yippee ki -yay. And you just, you, I, I cried. soul dies a little bit and <laughs> away. I, I just cried. I was... <laughs> <laughs> like oh <laughs> she's like just integrating like in infinity well, that's, war that's what the meme would be it would be like my dad's like oh you like that you're crying with happiness i'm like i want to kill myself <laughs> it's the worst thing ever why would they do this and yes this is comparable of just yeah that's a thing that he said in blade yeah yeah, yeah. he said it he did say it that's a thing that was said <laughs> how do you how do you make it worse you know what i mean like I don't know how you make it worse. I don't know, like, if you had, um... Hmm. I don't know. Uh... Hmm. I guess if you had, like, uh, Sylvester Stallone just pop in and say something as well. Yeah. I don't know, like, NOTHING IS OVER! He just says that for no reason. 
It's just like, okay. All right, yeah, it's not over. I agree. Um, yeah, as someone just suggested, maybe if he had said, let's skibbity for real for real this, yeah. Throw in a couple <laughs> yeah, of peak on fires. God, no cap. Yes. <laughs> let's, oh my god. Now I'm just imagining... <laughs> Mr. The, the, Snipes, we're going to need you to say more skibbity words. <laughs> now I'm just imagining... Jeez. <laughs> god, that fucking, um... Skibbity button thing. Oh god. Oh my god. Might be. It should oh. be in the running for worst meme of all time. It should be in there. Yes. Unironic. It it's not. actual brain rot. It hurts. It's, it's, it's I actually so couldn't bad. um complete the because I saw it on Twitter and I had to pause halfway through and I was like, you need to breathe. You should be like, it's okay. We're gonna make it, everyone. <laughs> it's it's all right. Sometimes that happens when the cringe is too intense. Yeah. Um we were, that's that's a meme from uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. What is it when the when the cringe is too intense or whatever? It's just him getting blasted yeah, 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 in cosmos, yeah, the one where, yeah, shaking in the seat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, um, yeah. So, some of the thought I was having about uh, this point in the film is just how much they have not taken advantage of the void. They've um, how this happened, right? Was that the void was an answer to a question of how do we get all of our cameos in here? How do we we're gonna spend money like crazy? We're gonna bring in people people like, we're gonna market the shit out of it that way. How do we do that? And then someone said, "Oh, have you seen Loki? That's the way we can do it. It's that TVA thing. It's the end of the world thing. It's a bunch of variants. We'll do it that way." And it's like you used it as an excuse, but there's simultaneously so much to do in the in the world of the void. Imagine trying to actually explore in a meaningful way the power structures, how cultures would form there, and what um, worlds would be created as a result of it being a, an eclectic collection of all these different people from all these different, not just places, but times and timelines with like a completely different set of languages and experiences. It's, it's like one of the most potentially interesting things ever to it's, watch unfold. It's just generic place. It's just generic place. Oh my god, that's it. It's generic place. There's nothing interesting about it in any way. It, it hints at no backstory whatsoever. It has no history. There is no implied culture. It's generic place. Dear God, that's it. You have bad guy lead a girl, and then all the bad guys work for her and barely have a hint of a personality. And all the good guys, when I say all, I mean five of them live in some place in a forest, and one day they hope to... Do something about that. The um the films themselves are always interested in like like Deadpool one and two, just for the record, I don't see them the same way. A lot of people try to sort of explain why Deadpool three is bad. It'll be like Deadpool one and two do the same thing of not taking anything seriously. And uh, it's, um, all, it's all nonsense. Just, yeah, know? that's not that true. That is just yeah. not true. It's um, just not true. I like this rewriting of I, I, think, I think that's an unfortunate thing that I'm realizing. I, I said it before, and we're all basically in agreement. Um, big fans of the first Deadpool film, that film deserves more credit than I think it gets. Because now the impression I get is that people do view it as just like, yeah, I mean, it's a silly goofster movie. Um, but they just make a lot of a lot of the right decisions in terms of how to write a story to get people engaged. And um, you just think about the scene when he basically learns that what his ultimate fate is going to be at the hands of our Francis. That is played very seriously. I think they have one joke there of like, oh, you've still got something in your teeth. But otherwise, it's definitely played like straight. Yeah, that. Um, it, the, you, I, I would actually argue it's kind of expertly done because we're led to believe at that point that Wade is so strong, there is nothing you can do to him that he won't be able to handle. Like, Francis basically says, like, I'm going to break you. And he's like, yeah, you can try. And he goes through insane amounts of torture, like, absolutely nuts. And he still manages to kind of keep up. And it's um, it's endearing to watch because you want him to not be beaten, right? Even though it's yeah. what he's going through is insane. But when he puts him in a device, for those who either haven't seen the film or don't quite remember, he puts him in a device that is designed to only provide him enough oxygen such that he wouldn't die, but to keep him in a constant sense of strangulation, basically. Uh, the machine monitors just how much oxygen he's getting and, and how much uh, sort of strangulation he's experiencing, right? Asphyxiation, whatever. Um, and he leaves, it, he leaves him in it for a weekend. So it's just constantly trying to stay alive with a very limited amount of oxygen, and, and the, the harder you try to 
you know, not breathe it or breathe it. It doesn't really matter. You're constantly fighting a meter on the machine that's going to account for that. So when he finally releases him from it, it's what triggers the mutation. And then, you know, there's the explanation of what he's going to do to him. It's like the first time in the film, that whole sequence where it gets, he's like tearing up and he wants to curse him out. Like you're like, how could you do this to people? Like it's, it's, it's horrifying. He essentially in a way does break him, right? Deadpool one, that's why he's so fucking furious with someone like Francis and wants him dead. Cause uh, he kind of, he did something to him that was, you know, like, remember their fight when the, the fire and the breakout happens? It's very serious. It yeah, is very serious. It it, there's is. no jokes at all. It's all, it's like a, a, it's a, it's a fight. It's a proper fight. And I mean, even, even, um, even like the fight at the end of the film, it's, it's mostly, there are a couple of jokes thrown in there, but it's, it's mostly as Deadpool explains, let's dance about, let's dance. I mean, let's try to kill each other. That's like the whole point They they fuck, they hate each other. Francis hates Deadpool because he's like destroyed his whole operation and Deadpool hates Francis because of what he's done to him that he believes will be a permanent barrier between him ever being able to be with Vanessa again. Of and course, like, he then realizes that that's not the case. All of that work is present, and it's present in Deadpool 2 as well. Everything to do with what yep. makes a person decide. Like, the, the, fam the familial thematic work in Deadpool 2 applying to almost all of the characters in how they... You, like, like, the characters need someone to believe that the world is worth not only fighting for, but to be a good person in. Right, that's like Russell's big problem is that he doesn't believe anyone's gonna treat him well. So why should he treat anyone well? Uh, not exactly the best uh, logic, ultimately, but still something that he is like a child. So Deadpool wants to convince him that there is someone who will treat him well out there. It's possible it'll happen, and uh, simultaneously Cable being someone who, because he's trying to save innocent people, such as his daughter and wife, he's gone as far as being willing to kill a kid, and then. There's there's several elements all happening at once that relate to these sorts of ideas, and by the end, Deadpool's move to take the bullet for Russell convinces a lot of these characters. First of all, Russell that he doesn't need to kill everybody, doesn't need to treat the world the way that he thinks everyone would treat him. There's something to hope for, and the Cable realizes he didn't need to come back in time to kill a kid to save his kid. He needed to save a kid. Being in this case, it's a, it's a more a different way of looking at it, right? Like how you save Russell. You don't shoot him in the head to prevent him from being evil. You try to appeal to uh, his sense of values. And he watches Deadpool do it. And that convinces him to spend his final charge that was meant for going for his daughter to save Deadpool. There's, um, yeah. there's so much in it that works. And there's so much work in the writing that is designed to, to reach a very specific point. Obviously, we're moving through Deadpool 3. We're slowly getting to thematically whatever the point was supposed to be in this. We'll obviously discuss it when we get there. I realize this this discussion on this movie has gone a lot longer than I expected, and we probably won't be able to have rags for much longer, unfortunately. But, uh, oh, well. you know, I'm just saying that uh, it bothers me that Deadpool 3 being categorically fucking awful is being excused because Deadpool 1 and 2 are also stupid and don't take anything seriously and shit, and it's just like, it's just not true. It's a lie. It's a lie. Don't believe it. Don't let them tell you that Deadpool one and two were just, just jokes on legs. They weren't. They had heart. They had a theme. They had character journeys. They had emotional moments. They were earnest. Yeah, and then of course you realize the Deadpool one and two is the the primary continuity. This is a sequel to, but also Logan. I don't need to tell anybody that that fucking film is serious. So. You know, it feels like there was an opportunity to treat this film better, to balance tone better. The one I often end up citing is Hot Fuzz is fucking hilarious, but it never takes away from the serious moments in that film. Absolutely. They know how to balance. It takes talent. It's complicated. Oh, Hot Fuzz. Oh, so good. So... I guess next is uh, they reach Cassandra, and she immediately dispatches Deadpool. She doesn't kill him, she just knocks him around. He's very lucky, because if she had tore him down to the last atom or fired him into the sun or into a lieth, he'd be gone. But uh, she spares him, I guess, because she wants to play with him, TM. I don't really know. It uh, feels more so like the writing protecting him. And uh, she wants to dig into Wolverine's head. She wants to know what he's all about. This is where he explains more of his uh, backstory about how he started killing people. And um, 
before i mean we've kind of covered most of this so there's not much more to say in terms of uh, yeah. what meaning is drawn out of it and what our issues are with it but uh she while she's doing this with wolverine doesn't realize that deadpool's gotten back up with the juggernaut helmet that um x23 threw up there and she's he's put it on her so now her powers do not work which um didn't strike me quite right I was like, I guess I can understand putting the helmet on her prevents her from using her psychic abilities, but why would it stop her healing abilities? Yeah, unless we are to assume that it is just a product of her psychic abilities. Which I don't... Not sure why. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are mutants with more than one power at the same time, right? Yeah, there are. Um, um, but I mean, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but oh, it, other goodness. than that, though, as well, it's just that yeah. if if the helmet is supposed to stop all mutant abilities, then what the fuck is Juggernaut doing wearing it? <laughs> well, it doesn't stop his though. Maybe it did. If you, if you, you put the helmet on dispatched. Juggernaut, it makes him. I mean, don't you know weak. who he is? He's the Juggernaut, bitch. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Sorry, I did kind of gloss over it because the film glosses over it. Uh, X twenty three and Juggernaut have a fight. They run at each other. She chops off his legs. Or rather, chops him at the ankles, and uh, that's it. Yeah, yep. it's kind of like the saber tooth it fight. Lasts, yeah, it lasts about three seconds. Great. Uh, anyway, they've got it, and they say you've got to send us to back home. We've got you now. And then she says, "You fucking morons! I can't send you back unless I have my powers. And if I have my powers, I'm just going to kill you. So you have no leverage." And they're like, "Oh shit!" And so Deadpool says, "Well, either you do it, or we kill you." And then she's like, but I'll just kill you if you take it off. And then uh, Devil's like, fine, I guess we kill you. And he says he's going to break her neck. And then Wolverine's like, no, I'll kill her. Because uh, I can't remember what his reasoning is. He, he just wants to kill her. But before either of them can kill her, Pyro shoots her. Oh, my goodness. Remember, because he was paid by Paradox to kill it, so he you have to. Like, this is why this riot is so funny. He's like, I'm just fight it. I Pyro need... shoots her already. Like, shoot <laughs> what? <laughs> shoot, he uses a gun. He doesn't use fire. That's, why when, I, that's <laughs> why when I watched this, I didn't even know it was Pyro. He well, was yeah, just, no, he yeah. just, I, I just didn't even know. I was like, I didn't know that was his deal. So, where to begin? First of all, imagine you are Pyro and fucking Paradox says, go kill Cassandra. And you're like, whoa, this is going to be tough because she's kind of impossible to kill. And if she knows I'm trying to kill her, I'm done. So. What will I do? What is the plan? And he heads up to where she is. She's just got the juggernaut helmet on, and he's like, oh, sweet, and shoots it. <laughs> it's just like, wow. That he, was... doesn't, he doesn't keep shooting. He doesn't just well, keep shooting. Oh, oh, before getting to that, what I'm trying to highlight is just how incredibly lucky it was for him that this plan went this way yeah. from the people, because it worked out perfectly for him to be able to actually complete his task. Only, why would you complete your task this way, Pyro? You you have options. You're you're actually he's a he's, was he a level four? He's like it's, he's got incredible he's power. A, I mean, he's pretty powerful. Yeah, when he's got fire, man, jeez. So to be well, clear, that's what they'd be expecting. They won't expect him to whip out a Glock and pop a cap in a fool. Uh, to be to be absolutely clear, sorry. The 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 the, the motivation to kill her is to absolutely wipe her out. You've got to be so fucking careful. If she's even a sliver of her is left, you could die. He's got yep. a gun. I guess I guess if, if you shot her in the head a couple of times, I could buy That'll using her, it. But right? Well, no, if he knows good. her powers are currently off because of the Juggernaut helmet. I get that. I follow. But why wouldn't you just envelop her in flames along with Wolverine and Deadpool? Especially because he can use flames to push people as well, right? And he can use it as like a firewall. There's a lot of things he can do. So I was just thinking, to be efficient, you probably shoot her in the head, maybe even in the chest too, and then just light up the whole fucking place. Get an inferno going. I mean, yeah, I mean, just to be safe, which is probably a good port of call when she can rip your skin off. No half measures. So, um, she doesn't die <laughs> from that. No. And, uh... Pyro gets punched by Wolverine immediately, knocked out. And so now it's, it's you just, just kind of wondering, like, where the fuck is this story going? There's a reason for everybody acting like a retard. All of this will make sense because it's going to provide us the fourth act. Um, Wolverine feels bad that she's bleeding out. 
Bear in mind, he said he was about to kill her because uh, she wasn't going to agree to the plans with him and Deadpool. And bear but, in mind that he has seen her rip the skin off of a bed. But so he says, you know, we should we should take the helmet off her. We should we should actually save her. And then Deadpool's like, fucking, she'll just kill us. And then she agrees, she will kill them. And then Deadpool's like, why would you even say that? And then she's like, I don't know why I am the way that I am, which um is very satisfying in a villain. Is it, and and so. Well, when I say I don't know why I behave <laughs> in the manner that I do, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't get why Deadpool would allow this to happen. I don't get why Wolverine would want it to happen. I don't know why she's not working harder and smarter to save her own life. I don't know why Pyro is a a moron when it comes to executing her. But the truth is, I do know. That's just a format for speaking. All of these things have to happen in order to make next things happen. So they do take it off. Well, her actually. And Speaking of next things happening, I do have to go. Um, I have to head out. Uh, it is almost 5.30, and I need to be gone. I'm so sorry, Mr. Rams, I, uh, that we couldn't do this faster. I wish we could have made it to the end, because I've, I've been enjoying the discussion and going through all of the things, and I'm looking forward to the fallout of this episode. <laughs> it will be fun, but we are correct. Uh, and more than happy, once again, to be part of the mind-clearing team uh, before everyone else eventually comes around to the correct opinion. But no, no, no. I, uh, I do have to go. Uh, you guys will have to wrap this up. I got things I'm going to have to, you know, be away for. No so problem. So good luck wrapping up the movie. Almost, we're almost at the end, but I have to bid you adieu. Very well. All right, Myself and Fringy waves. shall take care of the rest. But for now, goodbye, sir. All righty. I will see y'all later. Thanks much. Uh, bye bye. Or you. Ciao. Ugh. So, where was I? Yes, explaining how everybody is acting out of character for no goddamn reason, but ultimately we do know what the reason is. The stated reason from Wolverine for why he's sparing her is because it's what Charles would want him to do. Which feels really mm. fucking weird when he was just about to execute her about five seconds ago. Yeah. I um, and also, <laughs> X-Men killed people. They totally do. Um, <laughs> they did. So... Um, what are we talking about? The thing is, this is kind of a unique scenario of she has been shown to annihilate you guys. She's nothing but motivated to annihilate you guys, and she has said she's going to annihilate you guys. This might yeah, be a, so, a moment where it's not wise. Yeah, because, like, I mean, it'd just be like, hey, this is what child would, and then just takes the helmet off and immediately his skin gets ripped off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I guess that's the end of him. But, luckily for them, She's like, hmm, maybe, uh, maybe she I don't want to. She decides that she don't want to be evil. It won't last. And so, uh, there's a line as well with during, I can't remember when she's dying or when she's not, but she says, I'm going to flick my bean to the Enya box set. And I was starting to realize that part of the problem for this film that I feel really didn't happen in Deadpool 1 and 2 was that Deadpool's personality is bleeding into random characters. Yeah, um, when that was never the idea. The, whole, uh, the, the, the reason why Deadpool stands out is because he's surrounded by people who don't behave like he does. Yeah, because it, it fucking it was it was like the kind of jokes where, where you say something. I was like, um, I get, yeah, I get sex stuff. <laughs> like that's that's the that's the thing we do. She, um, I think she did a really good job performance wise. Uh, it's just that Cassandra yeah. Nova was such a wank villain, and we're about to get to the point where she's even more wank. By the way, uh. But where she just basically like any pretense of being a person, a character, and rather than just a plot device. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway, they uh, she says it must be nice to have someone love you, and then Wolverine says if he knew about you being Charles, he would have torn a hole in the universe to bring you home. And I find that so fucking annoying that she would need someone to tell her that. That it's like, by the way, you know, you hate your brother for not saving you. Had he known that in any way, shape, or form this was something that needed to happen, he likely would have acted on it. And she's like, hmm, maybe you're right. <laughs> nice. Maybe I should stop being evil. Maybe. Nah. Um, and then uh, she says, but this is my home. And then Wolverine's like, but well, let, let us at least save his about Deadpool. So then she says... You know, once upon a time, 
a magician came in to the, uh, the old void. I killed him, of course, and wore his skin for several days. But uh, I noted he had a trinket, a fun little device, and she pulls out a sling ring. And this can get them home. Remember when you had to train to use a sling ring? Now you, anybody could just use it. I guess she's got the sorcerer gene, like um, like Ned does. Um, well, no, they're not. No, that seems <laughs> unlikely. That seems unlikely. Uh, that's not even. Who that's, that, honestly, did she get, she get like a Doctor Strange to help her and then rip her skin off? Down the list for any of issues. If they've <laughs> just established, first of all, that sling rings can get you out of the void, that's. That means that they're... Wait, yeah, that, that means it's a time-traveling um, portal. It, not only is it a time-traveling portal, that means anyone, any of the sorcerers throughout all oh of the... Oh my god! Yes, there you go. Yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah! Yeah, you're right! Just let that sink in for a little bit. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's such a classic move for a writer to be like, hey, they have that portal thing from Doctor Strange, we can say that she got it from him. And then some other writer's like, what a great idea! <laughs> no one says, this is a fucking awful idea, what do you mean? The whole... just... <laughs> Dude, it's so, it's so funny how they keep going backwards and forwards, you know, in Doctor Strange, you could travel the multiverse with a portal, and then Multiverse of Madness, no you can't, only America Chavez could travel the multiverse too. Yeah, you could use these portals <laughs> to travel the multiverse. They can't fucking and decide. Time. <laughs> uh... It's even worse than just traveling the multiverse, because now you could travel backwards in time as well. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so, I don't even know, how did she manage to get that off Strange? She would have just fucking left. Well, or are we to believe that she would have beaten Doctor Strange? And if she can beat Doctor no, Strange, no. then she is... Not even fighting him. He arrives, and then he leaves. You know what yeah, I mean? he just get out. That's right. You just like, and get do? out. Mm -hmm. so... how, would, how would anybody from the TVA ever be able to get Doctor Strange? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah this also means that she had the capacity to leave uh the void at all times she simply didn't and apparently this ties into her deal with the tva the tva were comfortable with leaving someone one of the most powerful mutants in all of time at the end of time ruling it with a sling ring and knowledge of the tva it's like no they would kill it. Seems like a bad idea. Because, I mean, what if she just decided to go to the TBA? She could just rip all their skin off. Yep. But she could what do could they any, do to stop she, she could do that at any time because she's she's fully and aware of And then just the take over the TBA. Yep. Just take it over. And honestly, Frank, I don't even know if she has a deal with the TBA or a deal specifically with or Paradox. With Paradox. And yeah. it's like, if she has a deal specifically with him, how, do, how have none of the TBA picked up on this? That makes no sense. Doesn't make any sense at all. Very hard to track, but at the same time, once you do, it's like, oh, well, rip. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then she says, like, in the format of a deal, she'll open the portal, they can go through, but they have four seconds to go through. And, and you're sort of like, Because Why? the purple dragon summon. Elias on the way, he's gonna eat everything here. Yeah. Um, Timing! Every time he's just there, in all of the places he could be in the void. Like he's I always, said, he's always I guess it. she can summon him? That's that's all I got? I don't know. Mm -hmm. In any but, case... But then you're like, well, wait, are they just going to abandon the rest of the team that they got to get eaten by Purple Fart Dragon? The answer is yes. I don't know what we're supposed to believe other than all of them got eaten by Eliath. Uh, at this point. I don't point. know that there would be any reason to think anything else. Yeah, or even know. that, um, what's her name got eaten by the dragon? I mean, she was there. Why wouldn't it <laughs> yeah. have gotten her? Maybe he will, he's able to go through her, but he never quite eats her because they have a deal. Oh, okay. But, uh, I, yeah, okay. so the assumption is Blade, Electra, X-23, and Gambit all just got eaten. So they they have been removed from all of time and space. Mm-hmm. So they just came they along are. to help these two go and do their shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then get eaten. Um. So yeah, did you catch when they're before they land on the car back in the Fox Universe? Um, Peter says about a car. He says sometimes it's good to give something a second chance. 
It's like, ah, because that's what the movie is about. Yay, theme, we did yeah. it. Um, we'll go over that when we hit the end, because the ending sentiments are so fucking hilarious in relation to that. Anyway, off they go. Uh, this is where the, the joke comes in where Deadpool says um, Fox killed Wolverine. Disney brought him back, and they're going to make him play until he's 90. <laughs> but they will. Yeah. It's... And they will make a lot of money because of it. It's the same thing we talked about before. It's the, I'm retarded. And you're like, yes, you are. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> Alrighty then. Um... Anyway, uh, we'll, we'll, by the way, we'll talk more about what we think happened with Eliath and them once we get further in the story. We're, of course, aware of later scenes. So, uh, Pyra wakes up. And she says, who put you up to this? And she goes to put her hands in his head, and he goes, whoa, Jesus, just ask sometimes. You don't have to put fingers in people's brains. And then she's like, okay, okay, hands in pockets. Um, joke didn't fucking land for me, because lying is a thing. Yeah. And he tried to kill you. He has no reason to tell you the truth. And also, she's the kind of person who, again, to remind you for the billion times, she rips skin off of people. I don't think she cares that much. She would about, just. She wouldn't you know, even entertain. Comfort. It's not even like no matter what information he has to reveal to her, it's filtered through his perception of her and their relationship. It doesn't put your fingers in his head. It makes no fucking sense to listen and to his account of events. Your information, essentially. Yeah, you just get exactly what you want instead of having and, him. And why would you have any consideration for his comfort? Exactly. Ugh. And like, man, the film starts to unravel. So. Deadpool and Wolverine have arrived now in that in that one street that they film a lot of this movie on. Yes. And um, Paradox realizes they have, and unfortunately, their entire base is on the subway. Their entire base is basically outside of Deadpool's apartment. Yeah. Why? Why, Why in... would you set it up next to his house? Why in the world would this be how it works? Why would you set it up in the middle of the city instead of somewhere remote? And you know what's funny? The um the way to get in is through that hallway sort of the staircase. If you actually opened up a standard TVA portal in that little uh little hole, it would actually I'm stop them from getting yeah. in. Yeah, exactly. Just leave it on perpetually and yeah, then they can't get in. May link it to the fucking North Pole, <laughs> whatever, it doesn't matter. It's just like, yeah, you ain't getting yeah. in. Um but no, so the, the, the reason I said that, of course, is because uh Paradox sees they're coming and he needs to stop them because they're gonna stop his plan. Now, he's quite powerful. Just with a tempad is enormously powerful. You can do all kinds of things. Again, open a portal at their feet, and they're, they're out. You can put them anywhere. And uh, if you're thinking, you know what, they might resist that, then open it up in space at their feet temporarily, and it'll suck them right in, and oh, that's it, you got them. That's right. Like, kind of Portal 2 ending, you know? There, I don't even want to list the infinite ways he could do something like this. I would rather instead skip to what he does, which is to personally greet them himself and tell them to stop. Yeah, like, why, why would you do that? Of all the possible options before <laughs> you, this is probably the worst one. Really feels to me like there's actually not a worse option here. He, um, and mm -hmm. he's so... He's just, he's just not a character. He's so fucking retarded. He, he walks up and he's like, don't do it. Stop it right now. As if, it's just like, what, what did you think was going to happen? I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Why would they listen yeah. to you? Why not just go back to the TBA and then go earlier in the day? Yep. And then set plans in place have, to stop them. They have the power of time. <laughs> you understand? You can travel time. It's not all running chronologically. What does it even mean that they were in the void? And then when what's her name opened up a portal, she opened it up concurrent with their real time uh, time in the void. Why wouldn't she have opened it up to like days before? Or hell, what if she opened it up like days or weeks later by accident? Yeah, something they often do. Why would open at the exact same time? Is treated as though we have access to all of time and space at our fingertips, but there is also just a real time, if you know what I mean, like yeah. an actual timer Stupid. of present time happening, which doesn't. That's not a thing. There would be no present nope. time. They like to think that there is, though. Because uh, they keep doing the countdown of how close he is to making the Time Ripper, which doesn't really make sense, especially when they end up in any particular place that is on the timeline, as opposed to the TVA, you know? Time doesn't... Mm -hmm. uh, whatever. Anyway, um, before he can convince them to not try and save their universe, 
Uh, Cassandra comes through a portal, kills Pyro. Quite quickly, actually. He got spared hardcore compared to other people. And uh, she puts her fingers in Paradox's brain, discovers his plan to destroy the Fox universe, and she decides, oh. I know, I'll use the Time Ripper to destroy all timelines, except the Void, in which she can now rule without anyone stopping her. Okay, so, first off, how? Second, why? <laughs> If we go with the how, how first, can you do that? as you've highlighted, how do you how do you have the ability to interface with this machine to delete all of the multiverse except for the void? Why is that even something? Why is that, that you're something compatible? it could do? Yeah, well, I mean, she sucks yeah. all the information out of his head, but why would the time ripper be capable of destroying everything? Well, and why would she be able to even manipulate it? Like it's a piece of technology that is that? She's, like, why would that even be possible for her to um, use it in that way? But then the other how. How do you delete all timelines but not delete the void when the void as a concept is, is the end of time? And not, the end of time. Not exactly. to, yeah, not to speak uh, like it's where time doesn't exist. It's no, the end of all timelines is the void. It is placed at the end of the timeline. So if you delete the timeline, there is no void. Mm hmm. So it's just like a machine gun of no, really no, no, yeah. no. And, then and why, then why the hell would you do this? And yeah, and then why? What in the. But she's gonna kill everyone and everything that ever lived. Why? She's evil. I guess so. And at this point, you have to conclude that Wolverine made the wrong choice. Yeah. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> preparing her and will eventually rectify this decision. <laughs> oh, we'll get to that. So, yeah, this is what we meant about she's... Any characteristics she had are gone. She's now just, uh, you know, please insert villain... Wants to destroy the multiverse. How many wants to destroy the multiverse villains have we had now? Because I feel oh, like there's... I think like four or five, right? It's such a sad state of affairs. Um, because you might be like, well, you can write them well. It's like, yeah, <laughs> you could. Mm -hmm. They don't do that. <sighs> oh, <sighs> Fair enough, yeah. Um, there were some questions. I mentioned this on, I think it was Real BBC, and someone said the void is not the end of the timeline, so I did decide to look it up, and yes, it is described by Renslayer in Loki as the Void exists as a um, a collection of all the timelines converge together and they, they end at the Void, so without timelines there is no Void because it is the end of a timeline. It's like saying, um, uh, you can't, you can't have the conclusion of the thing without the thing that is active it's not like you can snip it off it exists as the end of the thing but of course you might be like laughing at me being like why would you cite loki when this film clearly doesn't give a shit about anything loki set up but it's like it's amazing how loki fucked everything up and they couldn't even just take what loki had <laughs> it just fucks everything up again <laughs> you know like, okie dokie um and you know, as for whether or not the void is like a dimension, as opposed, like uh, you guys know as well as I do, it goes dimension, dimension realm, timeline, timeline, universes, realms. Yep. So I'm just going from what they told me, and what they told me ain't making no sense no more. So anyway, off she goes uh, to set up the Ripper, and before Deadpool and Wolverine can do anything to stop her, which by the way, I'm surprised she didn't strip their skin off, since they're the only people now who can. Uh, I mean, I know that I wouldn't do... Obviously, just toss them into the sun. That's that's the way you deal with those two, I guess. Um, or toss mm. them into a portal. She has a sling ring. That's right. Just There's lots of ways to get rid of them, and these are the only two entities that at this point that are probably going to stop you. Except the TVA. They can stop her. In fact, every member that has a temp pad could stop her. Yeah, just open one up right beneath her feet. All you gotta do. Congratulations, you win. You save the multiverse if you do that. Mm hmm So, you know, consider it, I guess. In any case, uh, she decides instead to summon the Deadpool crew to defend her from potential attacks from people such as Wolverine and Deadpool. Because I guess all of the Deadpools would want to do that? I don't know why it gets highlighted to them that if they do this, they'll all die, and then they're like, yeah, but it's what Cassandra wants. But why would they give a shit? 
Why would they want to die? Why would they all, They're all Deadpool. Why would they all do that? They, 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 they want to do whatever she wants? It's like, isn't Deadpool one of the worst characters to have collectively all agree to serve Cassandra under any circumstance? It feels strange. Yeah, it seems like they'd be particularly prone to saying, nah, no thanks. Oh well. Uh... Mm -hmm. How is this not member berries, by the way? Look at all the Deadpools from the comics. Or other references that you may get. Such as Welsh Pool. They tried to get me, Fringy. <laughs> they tried. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, and this is where you get the line where um, Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool's trying to, trying to tell, time it out. He's like, enough. Multiverse, it's just been miss after miss after miss. Which uh, is possibly my number one holy fuck you are pandering line. You don't believe in this at all. First of all, No Way Home and Multiverse of Madness were clear successes, and they are both absolutely multiversal films. Like, as far as everyone in the general sphere is concerned, ignoring that we think Multiverse of Madness is one of the worst things ever, and that No Way Home oh, has a serious amount of problems. As well. Yeah, like, going outside of what we think, the world thought Multiverse of Madness was like kick ass, at least for some a significant amount of time. I'm not entirely sure what the general consensus on that film is anymore. Uh, all Marvel films tend to cr like crush over time uh, in terms of people's perception of them. So, uh, but but the thing is, No Way Home, like that. How much did that make? Was it 1.4? Two billion dollars. Oh Jesus. Okay. Well, yeah, a lot of money. Very successful, and we can talk all day about whether or not it was to do with any particular element. But hearing this, being like, multiverse has just been fail after fail after fail. Like, I already know you guys don't believe it. Secondly, mm -hmm. this is a multiversal film exclusively. It's just all multiversal garbage. Yeah, there's a multiverse film. Also, Secret Wars is going to be a multiverse movie. It's Secret Wars. So what are you even talking You're not even done. Well, that's where I was going <laughs> to go next, right? So this film just does shit tons of banking on multiverse as though this sentiment at best read could be like a we're going to do it right, folks, which they obviously fucking didn't. We have a way better blueprint from before being No Way Home to try and integrate respect and create meaningful, substantive payoffs that look at the stories of these characters and try to integrate them further instead of simply being like, look... It's Gumbo from Frumbo. That's not really substantive, but that is all they fucking did in this whole movie. And uh, we can talk about Logan in respect to that in a moment. But this this attitude of it's all been shit. But, you know, like if if we're supposed to be implying here that this one's different, I think the world currently feels that this one is very much different. This is doing it right. I completely disagree. This is a horrible way to do it. And that's why this this comment comes in both insincere in the sense that Marvel don't believe this about their past projects. Marvel don't believe this about the current project this is being said in. Marvel don't believe this about the nature of their future projects. They're spamming the fucking multiverse. They've just made major announcements that all of it is going to be fucking multiverse. And then, uh, fourthly, every other line in this film is fucking pandering. The only reason this exists here is to try and appeal to everyone. The people who like the multiverse are satisfied, the people who think it's shit are satisfied. Nothing meaningful happening here. This is, uh, they, they do be doing a trick. They're trying to get you to like it by appealing to fucking every possible point of view that could exist. Because you get to read in just as much as you want, or just as little as you want. Corpo sludge is quite a nice way to put it. Mm-hmm. <sighs> anyway. Yeah. Yeah, the the guy in the background said, I think it's been steadily great since Endgame. Just like, it's the easiest fucking thing to say that it got worse since Endgame. The correct thing is Endgame is where it actually fell off a the cliff. The Endgame was already the end. <laughs> it yeah. turns of screwing everything up. Uh, um, so then... Uh, Deadpool uses an ice pool as a meat shield and he nearly dies and then Deadpool finishes him off. And it's another person... Because he can't regenerate. Yeah, it's another person that Wolverine ranks as Deadpool having murdered. 
And uh, once again, I just don't feel like this is quite in line with Deadpool. Um, definitely does collateral. Definitely will let people of uncertain sort of alignment die. Feels really weird for him to use as a meat shield someone that's only been helping him. Doesn't feel like it quite well, lines up. It's because he's, he thinks he's a bit cringe, so he doesn't deserve to live. Eh. I just, yeah, I think that's really weak. But the thing is, I've already lost any sense of this being Deadpool at this point. Um, this is probably yeah. a suitable time, actually, to bring up. What I really like about Deadpool is the contrast and the operation of Deadpool versus Wade Wilson. He's um, very much allowed to express himself in a very different way compared to how he operates in his life. If you watch Deadpool 1, they capture this almost, I would say, perfectly. Uh, who Wade Wilson is, the life he leads, is a very particular thing. He's very much a full person. In uh, when he when he dons the Deadpool outfit and starts going nuts, is is very much like a let loose sort of. I'm invincible. I'm horrifyingly ugly. I need to find a way to get out of this situation. If that means killing every last person who works for uh, Francis to work up the chain until I find him, that's what I'll do. And then a self awareness of the nature of the fact that he's almost a superhero. He needs to get like a name as those of you know jokes of all kinds, but that um, ultimately the core of it is the girlfriend. Um, and those parts are always treated much more seriously because he is, underneath it all, a person. Same goes for Deadpool 2. Deadpool 3, I feel like not only has Deadpool been flanderized, but there's about a 1% a, a of Wade and 99% Deadpool. You get barely yeah. anything of the person... And of what is there is fucking embarrassing. Uh, the most embarrassing, I think, is one of the final scenes in terms of who Wade is, but we've kind of gotten some already. Uh, when he's talking to Vanessa in the birthday scene in the beginning, where he's like, hey, what what have you been doing? He's like, oh, I got a job at place. He's like, oh, have you met anyone? He's like, yeah. And he hasn't gotten me shot yet. ha <laughs> ha. Uh, I'm like sitting there like, what the fuck? Who, <laughs> who even are these people? What's happening? Um, all I can say, I guess, is just like, rewatch Deadpool 1, and I think you'll be struck by how different that film is in terms of its portrayal of the character of Wade Wilson and Deadpool. Or at least the contrast. Yep. Uh, the chemistry is gonzo between him and the characters that w made this franchise what it is, but it's too late for them. They're in the way. We've got to get Chris Evans in here. Got to get Wesley Snipes. Got to get Hugh Jackman. Got the big fucking characters in now. And it kind of feels like a story's being told, doesn't it? Deadpool 1, 2, 3. The, uh, you know, no famous people are showing up. What gives? And then no famous people showed up still, but then they're there, but they closed the door. And then the third one is they're all here, and all of your characters all the are fucking people gone. Here because now instead of being the outcast, we're the most important. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's almost like it's it tells you the story of why. Be careful what you wish for, you know? Very much the case, yeah. Of, uh, kind of, you become the thing that you made fun of. Yeah. Um, I also found hey, it odd... Hey, now you get the... Oh, yeah. From, uh, well, wait, uh, my thing's a uh, new topic, so if you want to go ahead on that. Oh, well, I was just going to continue with the scene. Well, I was going to say, I find it weird that Wolverine puts the dog up as a signal of don't shoot me. When, first of all, it's very likely that stray bullets would get him because of the movement on its own, right? I think they even do shoot until someone says stop or whatever. Um, but Wolverine is... Like, does he strike you as the kind of guy, after everything we've just learned, that he would use a dog as a meat shield when he's uh, regenerative? Because he walks mm, across yeah. the, the road with well, it in front for, of him. It's just for a meme. It's just odd to me that the we can make jokes in way better ways than this. Why didn't you have it so that they temporarily had captured one of the Deadpool's, like, friends who was also an asshole, you know? You can get some great lines back and forthing out of it, like evil Deadpool or something. Because then, it, you know, it'd be much easier for all of us to see them using that as a, de as, a, as a meat shield as opposed to a nice person who's done nothing but help them and a dog. And a dog, yeah. I just, um... You know, for everyone, everyone, anyone saying, but I found it funny, I'm just saying, you could find it funny, and it could be in character. We can easily change it to do that. Very, yep. very, very weird they did it this way. Anyway, time for a fight scene. And, uh... Well, yeah, but this is, uh, the, the big shot from the trailer where they walk out slowly to Madonna, 
And then he puts on his mask and it doesn't look good. I think the mask looks great whenever it's not CG. Yeah, but it seems like it's CG all the time. A lot of it like, is I, CG, Like, I genuinely think it was a CG thing. Like, I don't think they had a real mask. It could be that they did, and if they did, it looks like they painted over it a lot of the time. Because I really like the Wolverine costume. I, I like it, it in general. Yeah, I, I, I like the way that looks in the film. But, like, this mask, I don't know what it is, but, like, it's not, it's not cracking with his face. It looks like it was plopped on him. Kind of like, you remember how, like, um... Uh, uh, what's her name in Thor, uh, Love and Thunder, definitely did not have oh, uh, like God, a, a no, real yeah. helmet that she wore. It reminded me of that. I don't know, was that a real helmet? Like, it seriously did not look real to me. Um, maybe it was in certain shots, I don't know. I think so. Maybe it was so. something to do with the eyes, because they do the thing with the eyes, right, where it's like the white eyes and the, yeah. you know? Um... But yeah, it's it's strikingly disappointing when you have the several just awful CG shots. It's just, it's just like, ugh. Mm -hmm. and, and also, you know, like, if you think about the idea of, oh, it's cool, he finally put it on. Why wasn't he wearing it for... Well, well, I know the reason why he wasn't wearing it for the movie in terms of the narrative point that was being made. Uh, about like, ah, oh, well, you know, look, he's like, he's back in... He's, he's getting back up on that horse and he's going to be Wolverine, but... You know, we've talked about it before, because it is one of the examples of, hey, good on you, that uh, Ryan Reynolds is willing to wear the Deadpool mask, like, basically constantly, mm -hmm. um, and very occasionally take it off. It's cool, because most uh, characters in Marvel movies don't do that. They have nanotech helmets that they constantly are taking on and off. Um, so it's really cool that um, for Deadpool, he gets to keep it, because it's part of the look. He, you know, he's intentionally designed to look a certain way. I like the costume. I like the mask. Um, it's cool. Uh, Wolverine throwing it on at the end and then obviously taking off later on definitely feels a bit more like in the vein of, yeah, well, I mean, you got to make sure that you see Hugh Jackman's face. Same within the marketing material, like all of the posters and promotional stuff for it has Hugh Jackman's face clearly visible rather than him wearing the mask. Except for like toys, I think. Some toys have him wearing the mask that he wears. I don't know, it just reminds me a bit of that. But um, yeah, I don't know. There's just like plenty of instances where the mask just looks weird. Um, like it's not tangible, but maybe it is real. Uh, I, I don't know what it was then. Something about it was looking weird. In yeah, no, I felt similarly because, the... um, I've, I've been excited to see the design in full in live action. And I remember thinking like, man, what is, something's wrong, at least in some of the shots. Certainly in some of the maybe, shots. Maybe, it's the, maybe it is the eyes. Cause they do the thing where it's like the, you know, the white eye black, um, like sort of. Yeah. Uh, outline thing like um and 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 because it wasn't I don't know they didn't do like makeup or anything or stuff like that if they were doing it I'm not sure well, it's again, just something that looks off. Ultimately, again, uh, I stand by what I said earlier. Getting this stuff right, so to speak, shouldn't be worth as many points as it clearly is for most people. Uh, the story does not get anything from having them in the right costumes. Um, I obviously think we should encourage it. It's just weird that this part could be shown and it's like, all is forgiven, the movie's amazing. I, think, mm. I feel like there should be much mm -hmm. more than that. Because, of course, this is arguably the fight scene that people cite as just being the fucking balls to the wall, incredible, amazing. Uh, unfortunately, while it was happening, all I was thinking is, why aren't they regenerating their yep. Deadpools? And then they do, later on. It's like, ah, yes, of course. So, so I was actually honestly distracted by why they weren't getting back up. <laughs> I, what's funny is I completely understand and agree with that uh, what was distracting me more was how shit they were all of them were just awful well like, is there any reason why this Deadpool is so good that he can kick all of the other Deadpool's asses no idea and I don't know why all of them fight like retards none of them know how to it's, it's, it was a bit disappointing that they have to fight uh, but, an army I mean I guess I suppose conceptually it's kind of neat of a big long, you know, panning yeah. shot of uh, them fighting a bunch of Deadpools while Madonna's playing, but I was distracted by the fact that they weren't getting back up. It's, um, and then of course, it was just, just out very the back forced of that bus. to uh, get exactly what they're oh, after. Out the back of that bus, man. Oh. Well, I mean, what can you say? Everyone's seen it, everyone knows. Uh, what's, what's weird about it, too, is, like I said, you, they didn't have to. Like, you could cut from that as soon as he lands, cut, you know? But, uh, they just, they just keep it on going. Um, 
yeah, so the, the major factors for how they were going to be able to win this fight are going to be that the enemy are pretty skilled and the enemy can regenerate. Both factors have to be completely ignored until the fight is completed. Otherwise, you can't have the fight, which to me is just pathetic writing. It always is. Mm -hmm. the, uh, and, and the writer says, well, they all regenerate at the same time once they're all dead. Which is but wouldn't just... they regenerate in order of the first to last that got hurt? Wouldn't they regenerate like fucking Deadpool does? Well, they would... I mean, we saw, like, in, in Deadpool 1, he gets, like... Well, and 2, he gets stabbed in the head, in the brain, and he's still out. Like, it, it, it like, makes him delirious, and it, it's, like, a... It's a particularly effective hit if you get him in the brain. But he is very much, like, alive when he gets hit in the brain. Uh, I would argue this you is... Know, not... Uh, having your cake and eating it too, and also having another cake, like it's it's like yeah. a third thing I need to highlight because you need them to be defeatable so that we can complete the fight scene. But you also need to not be defeatable because that's exactly how they work. So you're just ignoring almost everything that came before it, right? Like fucking Wolverine fought Deadpool. He tanked a shit ton of attacks before he stopped moving, which all of these guys take like one or two and they're done. So you need that at the same time, which they actually do by just saying, uh, sorry, the regen was delayed. But that means you still have to deal with the Deadpools. How do you? And you go, uh, Peter. He shows up and they Peter just shows decide. Up and that disarms them all. Yep. They are disarmed by Peter because they love Peter and there's always a Peter. Good thing he showed up right here. Would have been really bad if he was, like, not around. Otherwise, they actually would have been screwed. And that's what I mean. It's just the triple threat of awful writing. Back, forth, back, forth, mm -hmm. back, forth. And that gets us to, um, you know, past that fight scene, which it's uh, there's nothing in it that's particularly well done writing-wise. It's more so the spectacle of watching them fight it's through It's fan them. service. Yeah. Which, yeah. Uh, can't blame anyone for and enjoying like the show of it. You yeah. know, that's, that's chill. That's That's chill. Um, Absolutely, I, I just, was, um, it, I wish it, Yeah, didn't Wish we could get better uh, writing in these fucking fight scenes, that's all Well, just imagine how You know, imagine how we would have felt about that If uh, it was the product of a really amazing script That had gotten them to this point It would be awesome instead of being You know You know, just Doesn't work as well Um so, with the Deadpools out of the way, thanks to Peter, they oh, can... Oh, someone has pointed out, by the way, as well, helping Cassandra means all their Peters die. So why would they help her? Yeah, if Peter means more to them than Cassandra does. True. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fuck it, the, the very Peter they're celebrating is gonna die, so... Yeah. What well, none ever. of them decide, hey, let's help you take down, uh, what's her name? They just all chill up there. Because none of the Deadpools are like, they're not people, really, <laughs> with their own objectives. They're just, they're just there to be like, hey, look, we're crazy, wacky Deadpools. Woohoo. So then Deadpool says, don't worry, folks, we're at the final stretch now, film's ending, which I find to be... It's just the same thing every time. It's the, we have this problem, we know, anyway. You know, the, the lampshading, I guess, is the way to put it, but anyway... Um, when he threatens Paradox, Mr. Wolverine, Deadpool says, yeah, he's, uh, he's intimidating, right? It's like Batman, but he can move his neck. Um, uh -huh. I don't understand, man. There's stale jokes, and then there's just, your joke is just a skeleton. Where have you been? Well, like, yeah, this is not, this is not a particularly like, oh man, never heard this before. This is an old observation. <laughs> It's just, it's not only old, it's entirely inaccurate now. It doesn't work. <laughs> so many Batmen, intimidating Batmen, by the way, have been able to move their necks. Mm -hmm. I don't know where you're, what time are you from? I've been able like... to move his neck for like 20 years. <laughs> wow, nearly 20 years. Dark Knight, all right? So he anyway. Paradox explains the only way we can stop her is by having a connection between the matter and antimatter to short circuit the machine to stop it. And yeah, the first I guess thought, that makes sense. First thought you have is like you can't just turn the power off. You can't just teleport her out with a temp pad. There's there's just nothing you can do. It's like nope, okie dokie. Nothing makes any fucking sense. They d they may as well have said because because Deadpool says explain raise the stakes and then he's just like. 
you know, someone's gonna have to go in room, press button, and die. That's just there you go. Simple. It's it's like one step away from that. The writers have no fucking clue why any of this should happen the way that it does. But we're at the end of the film, so now we have to do the big sacrifice thing. Mm -hmm. And so, um, Deadpool says it's got to be me because you didn't ask for this, and I and I lied. Which I don't really understand. I mean, at this point, there's there's you know arguing who should be the one to die here. I, I have no clue in terms of um, are we basing this on? Because the thing is, n neither of them or both of them have everything or nothing, depending on what we do with the TVA power at the end of this. We can bring everyone back for both of you, or not. So I don't even know, you know, with timelines and stuff. I, it's kind of a strange conversation. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, Wolverine says I mean, you made... I mean, it's pointless because you already know where it's going to go. Like, you know, I've seen movies before. I know what's about to happen. Wait, antimatter isn't electricity. You don't make matter and antimatter touch each other by acting like a conductor. I don't even... I, I'm going to give him a pass somewhat there's for no, some of this. Like, sci-fi shit. There's no point shit. bothering with the whole, like, figure it out quantum and all that shit, all I right? Well, I try... <laughs> yeah. Like, being like... If you put... Let's be honest here. Touching... Marvel... Touching antimatter, that feels like it should probably kill you. It just like from a basic assessment, the fact that he says that's why you guys can't survive because it is antimatter, you know, you you wonder how you could possibly even be exposed to it even for a split second because this goes beyond surviving wounds. This it like fucks with you on a fundamental level of existence. It's like it's like it's like I I can be dropped into a black hole because I have health regen. It's like I don't I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm just gonna yeah. um. So, yeah, no, I mean, to an extent, yeah, I would be critical of that as well. Um, I was just going to obviously talk about how they're figuring out who should make the sacrifice. Um, I, th I think, I guess, we, we would argue it's just they just don't want the other one to die. Um, it's very sort of... I don't know how else but to put it. It, it, it. it feels like it's right out of a, um, a writing advice book. Well, yeah, it's like, you know, I gotta do it. No, I gotta do it. Okay, wait, what are you doing? I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna close the door behind me. No, we're both gonna do it. Together. Yeah. I. Yep. Yeah. Well, and he says, um, I, I waited a long time for this, but you're the best, Wolverine. Why are you saying that? Why are you saying that? Uh, like, whoa, well, it's meta. Like, that's the thing. It's like, it's what, what on your journey got you to say that? You, you, yeah, I mean, they've, they've really barely gotten to know each other. Because um, the sparing of Cassandra out of his insecurities relating to being an X-Men is what put us in this situation. You understand that, right? Mm -hmm. And that was, only, that was done as a complete difference of the whole life he has led. And up to that point, they've only fought and tried to kill each other and shit on each other and hate each other. I just... like, Where, were the, where the fuck was the journey that earned that? What film were you guys a part of. Like, I, I don't remember those scenes. Um, but, but yeah, he's just his plan is to just run in and do it himself, but the thing is, he cannot connect them. He's just simply not he can't reach. long enough, and it's like, man, there's almost like a person-sized amount of space here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so Wolverine comes in and connects with him. They act together as the line between antimatter and matter. And you know what? Everything's happening so fast, it's actually hard to talk about it. Do you remember um, leader of the TVA lady from Loki's uh, seasons? She's watching yeah, this happen. E15, I think her name is. Even she, I don't know why she hasn't chosen a, a chosen a name for herself yet. She doesn't do um, anything. There's so many things no. she can do here, but she just does it. She just watches a thing say integrity is going from 100 down to 2, down to 1. Yes. And then, then, of course, so it's just like, so that's not at all what she would do. There's so many things she can do, but whatever. Uh, secondly, what does it mean for the integrity to go from 100 to 1? Is that is that doing well, any yeah, like, damage? The, I mean, if, if the integrity of the timeline is depleted by even 1%, is that not catastrophic? Feels like that's probably doing something. Yeah, why is it even a thing that you can just chart like this? Like no on a idea. loading bar that is going to reverse it? I like You can't understand anything that's happening here. You just have to rely on Deb and Wolverine were told they would die if they did a thing that would save everybody, and then they did it, and then they didn't die. It's, and, it's... you know, the reality... 
Look, here's a problem, all right? Because the idea of, yeah, look at them teaming up together and saving the world, it is more meaningful in a meta sense than it is in the continuity, because honestly, like, if it was Colossus who he was doing it with, that would mean more, because they know each other. Yeah. And they're pals. Uh, or if it was Cable, because they also know each other better and yep. have more of a relationship. The reason why is because Deadpool and Wolverine as a pairing is something that is more popular and more familiar to people. But in the actual story, the idea of Deadpool working together with someone else to, like, save the universe, there are other characters in his story with whom he has more history, where that payoff would be more meaningful um, in terms of just pure, you know, narrative, like, plot stuff. At, or, or, you know, if it was the whole team, right? Like, the Guardians of the Galaxy. How is this not basically the same idea as the Guardians of the Galaxy payoff, right? All, f all of them together, yeah. working together, is what they need to overpower... You know the 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 power this is the stone shit version of that. What well, they actually did, of course. Yeah, because because the one in Guardians is great. It's a great payoff. Yes, it's awesome. This one is. You can already hear the music good. in my head. Fringy, that scene is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking of it. Yeah, it's playing in my mind. How? You said it yourself, bitch. The Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy. Yeah. So satisfying. Oh, so good. Now I'm uh, just thinking about when um, yeah. <laughs> when Rocket's sitting there holding uh, Groot, and then Drax comes along, pats him on the head. Ah, oh, jeez. God, oh, good times. <laughs> good times back in the day. Oh, remember when, when Marvel inspired optimism rather than dread? Ugh. <sighs> Man, yeah, uh, anyway, when we were close to the end. But yeah, so. I mean, I like the music and the shots, you know. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's spinning around. Performances, top-notch. And, and, and look at Hugh Jackman's big old abs. Yeah, look at him, look at him go. Yeah. Um, and then, and then it's also a mention. Is... I like how you mentioned Cassandra. She died. She like that well, uh, I was actually, before that, I was going to say, uh, it's so weird that she has to manually operate it. Like, why would it work yeah. that way? <laughs> it's just like, I, I don't, don't know, know, it just does, fuck compatible you. compatible with her at all, but yeah, she's, uh, she's dead. So, um, they had to work very hard to obliterate her, which is so funny, because of earlier when he said, we absolutely cannot kill her, that is not what Charles would want. <laughs> and then, they, like, and oh, then well. they disintegrate her and explode her, <laughs> yeah. I guess you were wrong, Wolverine, this is what <laughs> Charles would have wanted. <laughs> Is that if you grab this machine, it destroys your shirt, and you flex your abs as she gets blown up. Uh, something that quite pisses me off is uh, as they're doing it, like committing to it and getting through it, they start repeating a bunch of lines from the film. They have, um, the Wolverine is a hero in my world, and then I'm the wrong guy. She says, you're always the wrong guy, until you weren't. Which was that really wasn't in the fucking weird, scene. man. You that were the wasn't wrong. In the original scene. You were always the wrong guy until you weren't. Was in the trailer, but it wasn't, but it wasn't in, in the scene. scene. <laughs> but it was in she the just ending. She says you're always the wrong guy. That seems to me like an actual just fuck up. Yeah, it was um, one of the like first things Gary said he noticed. Was like, is that just an editing yeah. error? Did you guys fuck up? That's, is it because that's you supposed guys were to be in the because scene. you didn't have much time to get the film done? It's I like genuinely, I, I can't make sense of that one. That one, I genuinely don't understand how that could have happened. You're not supposed to recall inspirational things that happened in your life that we that didn't see said. before. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't count. <laughs> that we didn't get to see. I, I don't know. I don't know about that. So, yeah, that was a bit awkward. Um, And then you, you cut to... Uh, uh, the, the fucking a paradox a statement from mr paradox ends up in this collection he says wade you can finally matter and then and it's you, like dude who are you wedging yourself i know into and it's, well, why Lance would you want to make that the ultimate thing that he's done all this because why can wouldn't matter. why wouldn't it be Fuck like that. Colossus just saying like the you know the colossus four or five moments you know that yes, seems like a much that would be more way better speech. but unfortunately we don't care about colossus anymore he served his purpose he got he he helped make these happen, but now that they're sufficiently popular, let's get rid of him and replace him with more popular characters. And then... Cable probably said something as well that could have been in there, but no. Um, I'm particularly not fond of a lot of the ones we just went through, but the worst, as far as I've concerned, is they show uh, him looking at Vanessa in the party, and then they have a shot where he's looking at where she was, but she's gone. And I don't know if it's a matter of them airbrushing her out. It looks really awkward. I don't know if that was... The, but... The point of it is, they tie it in with him saying, Vanessa, I want to save Vanessa. 
And I was like, oh. you gotta be fucking kidding me, man. Like, how fucking retarded do you think we are that you need them to repeat lines like that? Mm-hmm. And, have, have, and, and, you know, it's the saddest thing, too, because um, obviously the first and second movies, they utilize Vanessa significantly. But in the third one, she's not even her. This is, you just made this no. up. And they, like I said, show clips from their relationship that isn't even in this film. You're just fucking frustrated because you know that they're like, yeah, you, you just, just use whatever. Yeah, see, this <laughs> is the end of the trilogy. Well, you know, like uh, going to hold her hand with that wall that separates them in Deadpool 2? Mm-hmm. As if the yeah. payoff for that wasn't already a part of Deadpool 2? It's not your payoff yeah. to use for now? It was a payoff that was resolved in that film. Set up and resolved in that film, but yeah. Mm-hmm. He wants to get to Vanessa, all right? Vanessa's so gosh darn important when uh, the film was arguing the whole time it was about the family, not just her. Yeah, it was about everybody, all the people, his whole his whole gang, except for X Force, except for Cable and Domino and Russell. <laughs> the fuck are you even complaining about at this point? So the complaint is the. The ending scene where these two heroes are sacrificing themselves to save the world, uh, you'd likely have gone through the whole film learning why they would make that choice. We didn't really need that anyway. We already know, uh, with the base stats of who these characters are, that they would do it. However, maybe there's been very, um, you know, meaningful things to happen in this story that would back it up. And <clears throat> they choose to spend their time having X-23 telling Logan a line that wasn't even in the fucking scene, in total. And they have Deadpool talking about Vanessa specifically when both of them have been thoroughly assassinated in terms of not only the relationship between each other, but also them individually. And that doesn't even speak to the power of Deadpool's films, his values, or what they were setting up in this film, which is that he would do this to save his family. All of them. He loves them. All of these people. Already highlighted there are many people in the family that are fucking missing. (laughs) <laughs> like they they were completely removed. You can't even put them in a fucking picture. But um Yeah, just uh even if all of those things were fixed, you don't then need to tell us as they're sacrificing themselves. You don't need to have them make a speech about how they're gonna die to save these people and they're gonna die to be good people. You'd think the audience would have been able to gather this from the story as to why they would make this decision. But like I said, they failed on both otherwise known as all accounts in this uh, particular exchange. Not to mention all the mechanics involved in this sacrifice make no fucking sense at all. They survived this, by the way. How? Yeah. It's two of them. It doesn't fucking matter. (laughs) It's just not about how strong your fucking healing is or how many people there are. It's antimatter and matter crushing you. It's the kind of power that's supposed to destroy the multiverse. Yeah. And when the whole idea with the power stone in that case is being like, yeah, one of you, it isn't actually enough, but that's because, like, the stones have some sort of, like, will, or at least some degree of, like, they're connected to essentially, like, they're not just cosmic, if you get what I mean, in a sense, compared to this where it does just seem to fundamentally describe, yeah, it's matter and antimatter, like, how does will, what's that got to do with it? (laughs) Yeah. But my gosh, you know, it pulls him through. Some people are saying it might be Madonna. That could have been the reason they survived, actually. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, yes. Sandra is defeated. The timeline is safe. And you might be like, whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean the timeline is safe? Well, so, well what do you mean? It's going to continue decaying. What um, are you talking about? You see the TVA arrive right on time. And, uh,. Mr. Mr. Paradox is like, I didn't do any of this. It wasn't me. And obviously it's found out pretty quickly. He was absolutely responsible and he gets taken away. But uh, the more interesting part is she says, let's get this Deadpool variant back to the void. That's a really strange thing to immediately command when you have no idea what happened here. Yeah, what? He was never even meant to be in the void. This is his timeline. Before any of that, she doesn't know anything about what's happening here. Surely yeah. he's got to be taken into anyway, questioning. Anyway, let's get this guy back to the hellscape end of time. Like, maybe you want to ask him what the fuck just happened, who he is, why he's here, and how everything went down. That could be something. But no. Let's put him back in the void, even though he's in the correct universe, and he was only in the void because Paradox put him there, the person who's currently arrested. I don't know what the fuck mm-hmm. she's smoking. 
And then Peter comes in and says, whoa, 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 this one's homegrown. And that stops her from doing that shit to him when, well, they we already know that they've pruned several people who are, quote unquote, homegrown. So I don't even know. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to make of any of this. I, I, I find it all very odd. Obviously, the answer I'm mainly looking for right now is what's the fate of the Fox universe? How does anything that's happened change anything about that? And so, um, uh, for operating an unsanctioned time ripper, good old uh, Mr. Paradox is going to probably go away forever, which is why, by the way, I said near the beginning, his plan didn't make any fucking sense. Even if he was successful, he was going to be uh, put in jail anyway. It doesn't matter if what he did had worked, he would have been fucked. Um... Yeah, and she says, you led an Omega-level mutant to the timeline, and you shouldn't even be in this timeline. This is in regards to Deadpool and Wolverine. Really odd, these statements, when they just rescued the entire multiverse? Yeah, like, maybe give them a little bit more props. What have you done? Well, it's not even that. It's just, why do you think they're here, lady? Yeah, they're it's trying to it. save the multiverse from your subordinates. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't get that. Been off the rails, but, still. but she moves also, on to like, say... Your universe mm -hmm. is regenerating. Whatever you did spared your timeline from extinction. Um, I don't know if the film is forgetting, but right now there are two Wolverines in this timeline. Yep. Because this is 2024 and Logan takes place in 2029, which means that there are presently two Wolverines here. Well, two two that fucking anchor beings, Logan? apparently. Yeah, I guess so. Because and surely things... that means that surely that's going to retcon uh, Logan. Yes. That there's just another Wolverine walking about. Well, and uh, on their way in, uh, Deadpool says, "Found your new anchor being." So, because... what do you mean you found your new anchor being? He was already, he's still alive. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? The key. This is what the writers thought was happening, but none of this makes any fucking sense. They think that he needed to make a grand sacrifice, like he did in Logan but he needed to live through it, which this one did. So now there's no destruction of the Fox timeline. But so they don't realize like, what time this takes place in, first of all, and that he's not even originally from this timeline. The implication of that is, yeah, f fuck you, Logan, for getting impaled on that tree. <laughs> should have made well, sure yeah, you that shouldn't have happen. fucking died, loser. Like, that's why... Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, your whole universe gets destroyed. And what happens when he eventually just dies anyway of the adamantium poisoning? I don't know. Like, what? <laughs> I don't know how any of this fucking works. Remember, what? the continuity of Logan had a completely different history. We don't even, it doesn't, it's not recognizable yeah, but, with Deadpool. You know, by 2029, there were no, the, all the X Men are dead. There are very few mutant, mutants left. So, like, what? And also, there's, yeah, there's also two Lauras as well, because you've got her in the past, yep. and then her in the future version. But again, it's. Here, Inc here they incursions come. are on the way for sure. Destroy this universe. She says, by the way, in regards to this, whatever you did, you spared the timeline. So she doesn't even know, and apparently doesn't even fucking care, that he did something that prevents her own orders to allow a, an entire timeline to be destroyed. A timeline mm. in jeopardy because Logan died but is now not in jeopardy because you have a new Logan, I presume, who's the hero now, or uh, anchor being, whatever. Does that is that unprecedented? Have they ever had two anchor beings for one universe? Do they care about what this even means? Well, Do I they... mean, anchor beings themselves are unprecedented because we didn't know about them until this film. And yet, even in this film, they've already now like created a new precedent for the way that anchor beings work. Um, but I mean, who is the anchor being in the Marvel in the MCU, or is there, or isn't there one? Well, everyone jokes about it being I Iron Man, but if it were, then it they was, would have said something, the right? And destroying <laughs> Thanos is now going to ensure the destruction of the sacred timeline. You can't have it that a heroic sacrifice is actually detrimental to the existence of that universe. That's a terrible idea. It's just a terrible idea from a writing standpoint. It completely undermines the sacrifice that, in doing so, it entails the destruction of that world anyway. Well, and uh, we'll probably talk about this a bit more once we're at the end of the film as well, but uh, Logan has now been thoroughly annihilated. The um, meaning of it, both in-universe and culturally speaking, they're both gone. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how they could have done more damage. <laughs> I 
like it's, it's uh, well, well like i, mean, I said we'll you summarize it. it to people we'll, we'll uh, do it in or, a bit because uh, uh, we're so close okay. to the end you know but um there's like three angles to how you could destroy it and i think they did all of them so uh before the end of that scene they say um wait there's some people in the void who helped us can you bring them home uh, that's the throwaway line to be like yeah can you save gambit and stuff <laughs> it's like, well, wait. <laughs> what does that mean? And wait, wait, you, you. So you think that the people in the void need to be saved? Which, by the way, I'm on board as a concept. And the TVA will listen to you and thus save them. Are they going to save everyone in the void? Or are they going to continue deleting stuff uh, when they please? This changes the entire there. operation of the TVA. Yeah, which had already changed entirely because of Loki season two. So, I, like, I, I don't even know how to just, but what? You can't just grab it. And then, first of all, we thought you were fucking dead, but I guess now they're all not dead because he said, go grab them. But um, ultimately, if the void well, even has a timeline, even... time seems to exist there, as in, like, temporal progression. Can you Too go light, back right? before they were deleted and grab them? <laughs> like... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then, of course... Don't uh, think about it. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just unreal that they'll be like, yeah, we'll pluck those ones out for you as a favor, I guess. <laughs> like, damn. And they, remember, they're supposed to be the moral TVA these days. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so, um, the other half of that line that's much worse is, I promised my friend here his timeline could be fixed. And uh, she says, wait, change his past, but his past made him who he is. There's nothing to fix. Uh, might might be what I think is the worst line in the whole movie. Um, Logan's motivation is entirely based on, in this film, on the hope that he can undo the mistakes he made in his own timeline because all of his friends and loved ones died. They died because he failed. So if the TVA can undo that, uh, he gets to save them all and he gets to not live with the pain that he failed them all. Now... The, the point of view from the writers is something that's been done in other things much better. The idea that the, the trauma you suffer has made you the person that you are to have, you know, made the decision that you make today, is that sort of thing. Unfortunately, the mechanics don't facilitate anything close to anything like that, because you can completely change a timeline and not change a person. Uh, Wolverine... Exactly. That's, that's first of all, right? So Wolverine can remain the same, and they can fix his timeline doing the very thing that he wants them to do because uh, all those people suffered and died. Now, the other thing is, if they said, if they said, nope, sorry, it's a rule. If we save all of them, you will no longer be the man you are, which is now a hero. Do you really think Logan would refuse? He'd be like, oh, I can't do that. It would kill me. The motherfucker was trying to kill himself. Probably, yeah. He lives with the screams the of the innocent in his head. The people, a heroic sacrifice for all of the people who had died. This character, almost throughout the entire film, has wanted nothing but to undo his failures and to save the innocent that died. And she says, we could do it, but if we did, it would mean you wouldn't be you. So we won't. And he accepts this. This, uh, this annihilates him. This is the most important choice that could happen in the whole film, and he shrugs it off. Yeah, so, uh, oh man, Deadpool and Wolverine assassinated? Oh no! Well, I mean, that was, that was the argument I made, and some people found it very confusing, but I mean, I, I just, the Wolverine they present in this film got fucking ruined by the end. Which um, seems like... What a crazy! And, and who's it thanks to? Assassinate. The TVA. The TVA. Yep, the caustic, like tumor that is the TVA, just constantly enacting damage on this on every new installment. I think assassination's a bit too far. This is his prime characteristic. It, it defines it's, every it's, action it's he takes. Motivation. There's, this is there's nothing more motivation. important about his characterization than this event and this trauma, and they've completely undermined mm -hmm. it by making him choose the opposite of what he would choose. If I that's don't know... not assassination, then I don't know what is. Yeah, I don't know what assassination is. Yep, Deadpool and Wolverine were assassinated in the film Deadpool and Wolverine. Crazy. Figured that wasn't possible. Nope. <laughs> but, uh, 
Yeah. I seriously was not expecting that. I was not expecting Deadpool to be assassinated within the first 10 minutes. And I wasn't expecting that Wolverine would be assassinated in the film that introduces this version of Wolverine. Was not expecting that. As um, someone just highlighted, can't Logan just use Wade's time iPhone to go back and do it himself? Can't you just use a temp pad? Yeah. Wasn't that established with Wade going to do it in different points in time, different realities? Correct. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, I mean, pretty much. And it doesn't seem like the TVA even cares, because, like, it wasn't actually, uh, what's-her-name saying, like, hey, Deadpool, we need to talk about how you, like, undid what happened in your timeline. Or, alternatively, that they never came and talked to the X-Men after Days of Future Past of, like, hey, we need to talk about how you, like, undid the whole Sentinels thing. Yeah. And so we get, a uh, the first wrap-up scene they have in Shawarma. Remember? Remember when they did that in Avengers? Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Nice. So, um... Yeah, that, and uh, Wolverine says the Avengers would be lucky to have you. Which just... It's just like, okay. Remember we did the, the Avengers? Was that... that was, they were trying to, he was trying to join the Avengers. That was a thing. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Even though he didn't want to join the X-Men, and then he created his own team for himself, and then he decided no, actually, I want to be an Avenger. And uh, he says, what will you do next? And he says, I'll figure it out. Um, before he can leave, he's like, hey, come with me. And uh, they go. he introduces him to Blind Al. And we have some uh, some jokes. And something happens that uh, annoyed me a little bit. And that is uh, Deadpool has been telling the same jokes this whole movie. And he tells one here. And uh, Wolverine starts, like, smiling and kind of laughing. I think most people would say... Hey, that's like progression because they've become kind of friends now. That's great. But first of all, I don't even think that fucking friendship was earned whatsoever. Secondly, I actually think this is um, a bit of a boring way to show that kind of development in characters. And you know where they did it better, Fringy? Where? They did it better in Deadpool 2 with Cable and... Uh, fucking idiot said Wolverine. <laughs> Cable and Deadpool. <laughs> now, uh, throughout Deadpool 2... Deadpool's telling jokes that Cable finds absolutely cringe and inappropriate. He very much is a strict straight man. It's um, done very satisfyingly because, uh, you know, however you treat Deadpool, even if you find some of the jokes funny, it's fun to have someone represent the side of the... Because, you know, when he's, like, surrounded by people who are bouncing off him, which can be very funny. I, I quite love the scene where they're all, like, almost competing for jokes with Cable in the room um, later in the film. But having Cable consistently treat this very seriously, because as his motivation is all about his daughter, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's very satisfying to consistently watch the jokes get made and consistently watch Cable find different ways to try and either ignore them, criticize them for their inappropriateness, comment on how fucking stupid they are, or comment on how fucking stupid Deadpool is. He very much treats it the same way every time, because that's what he believes about these jokes. They are pathetic, childish, pointless, and stupid. Um... And they make a couple payoffs with this, some that I quite like. Do you remember when they're hiding from Russell as he's using his fire fist or whatever to, to shoot shit at people? They're trying to figure out what they're doing because, of course, they're competing at the end of the film. One wants to kill Russell to prevent him from causing damage. One wants to save Russell to prevent him from causing damage without killing him. That's like the conflict between Cable and Deadpool by the end. Um... Cable is obviously aware that that is Deadpool's goal and it's a noble one. And so you watch a lot of his actions where he could easily kill Russell but chooses not to to give him a bit more time, a bit more time. He keeps saying you're on the clock, that sort of thing. And um, there's a part where they see the guy who Russell's trying to kill run away and Cable looks at him and he goes, uh, he even runs like a pervert. And then Deadpool says, yeah, he looks like the government are about to find his laptop or, or something like that. And it's like the one, it, 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 to me, it's a more subtle development of how Cable was the one that kind of made the joke first as an observation, and then Deadpool bounces off it. And so Cable's got nothing to complain about this time. He's kind of the one that set him up, and it just moves on. I was like, ah, oh, that's like a great way to move them forward. And then by the time you get all the payoffs with uh, Cable having saved Deadpool, him coming back, he's like, you, uh, you, you did it because you like me. And he's like, no, I don't. 
And he's like, yeah, you do. You did it because you like me. You, you you love me. You wanted me to stay alive. He's like, no, I don't. And he's, he's like, the way Josh Brolin plays <laughs> yeah. it is he's actually getting angry. And then he says, okay, I'm going to flip a coin. If it's heads, you love me. And then he, he like flips it. He's like, I'm not even going to check it because I know you did it because you, you, you did it for me. <laughs> And the yeah. uh, uh, cable says, "Say it one more time." And he goes, "You did it for me." And he goes, "Jesus!" Like it's he's he's so yeah. he's stalwart in not fucking liking the jokes, but he likes Deadpool as a man who did what he did. I find that to be so much more honest and satisfying. Um, I really enjoy all the scenes with them throughout Deadpool Two. I think there's a really good through line. It's a great pairing. Yeah. Now, um, with these two, it's just I don't even get what the fuck changed everything really um and then wolverine's just like oh man you know what your jokes are really funny it's like no they fucking <laughs> were you hated them like what <laughs> like what you hated them and you were right to hate them because they were not good this time around uh, and like it's just so much it's just so much less honest and less uh, work goes into establishing this sort of shit and like we yeah. immediately cut to um they're all just having fun, laughing, drinking beers, and eating pizza as a big old family. It's like, what the fuck did this happen? What? What? Like, there's so much to sort out. It's like, oh, X twenty three is here. It's like, what? what? Is this like a dream sequence? Like, there's. What about the, all the mechanics involved? All the people you need to inform and, and no, sort out. No, it's all over. The... No, it's over. And then, if not to make things fucking worse, you have him holding the dog, and Wolverine's like, "Hey, give me the dog. You talk to the girl." And uh, they have what felt to me like just I mentioned this earlier. It's like, um, so you've been busy. I did it for you, even if you didn't want me. And then she touches his hand. <laughs> what the hell is that? What happened to their relationship? What? What, what have they done? <laughs> like, what? what? The fuck is going on? <laughs> Isn't it crazy? She got fourth billing, and and she's like not even in the movie. <laughs> like. Just like they felt obliged to just have her be in there to like provide completely contradictory and incredibly thin motivation, and this is the resolution. Are you joking? And and he says, "Turns out I am the world saving type. Best part: sometimes the people we save save us right back." What? <laughs> <laughs> What? Uh. <laughs> and as if that wasn't bad enough, the scene begins with its commentary on, remember, his whole thing is I need to matter, I want to matter. And he says, turns out, you don't need to be Marvel's Jesus to matter. You just need to look around, and if you're lucky, you'll find a few friends. Some old, some new. This what is the, the what, what is that? The last movie what does that have like, to do with like, mattering? About being a hero and, and, and saving someone's life. What is he I mean, talking about as well? Because he was essentially Marvel Jesus. He almost died to save everyone in the multiverse. Just save the entire multiverse. He so now what, matters yeah, you... more than anything, or at least he's drawing with Wolverine. I don't even know what to say about this. Like, what is the answer to the question of do you live your life with the goal of mattering? Yes or no, or is there some nuance? There's something to fucking answer there. His response is, well, you don't need to be Marvel's Jesus. You just need to have some friends. But, what? <laughs> I just don't understand what the fuck is supposed to be. Like, what is the message here? Because you have the... I guess the most that they have is like, yeah, you see the Fox X-Men movies? They were kind of shit, but hey, they tried their best. <laughs> and that's that's what counts. Like, that seems to... Be, I don't know. Is that what that means? It's I... meant to be a meta commentary on how the Fox X-Men films kind of like... They just sort of existed eventually for a while. But I mean, of course they mattered. Unless the film thinks that they didn't matter. I mean, the X-Men along with Blade was one of the first, you know, modern success successful modern superhero films. So like I don't even know what the view was meant to be on a meta sense retroactively for the um Fox X-Men stuff. The other theme being second chances, meaning Deadpool got a second chance to become the hero he always needed to be to win Vanessa is just arbitrary horseshit. He stopped being Deadpool because one set of Avengers in one universe said they weren't interested in having him join, for no real good reason, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and that, when, uh, why would he even feel particularly motivated to do this in the first place when he just created a superhero team that was meant to stand in for his family? Exactly. 
And you got Wolverine, it's like, he got given his second chance. Like, well, does it count when you were essentially convincing him that he could undo his mistake quite literally with the fabric of the universe? Is that a second chance? I feel like that's more, you're trying to take the opportunity you're to undo your first to your chance. Will, yeah. You know? Yeah. Not um, that you're making, like, a new... That you present it with a new opportunity to help people um, that will not, you know, rectify the past uh, error. Yeah, he almost wants to delete the first chance. That, that seems yeah. to be what we're trying to do here. And then, of course, the ending for him is, no, we'll just, we'll just carry on. Very fucking yeah. odd. You're like, okie dokie then. Um, mm. Then, of course, the second chance for all the supporting cast members... I don't even know what to say in terms of a second chance for X-23. What the fuck are you talking about? Logan is, like, hyper-respected. Yeah, well, like, yeah, exactly. It was it was the ending of that character, and she had been given a chance to live. <clears throat> but then you wrote it so that she got pruned and sent to a different universe, like in the Void, to then have to get rescued out of it to get a second chance. Like, that's just some stuff you invented. And then, of course, when you apply it to, you know, again, Gambit. Well, well like, yeah, Gambit, zero chances, Blade, three chances. So second chance is kind of odd for them. But then Electra, and Electra kind two of got a second chance with her movie. So I don't even. What are we even talking about? It's just filled with like, what, what the fuck are you trying to say? Where is this going? And if you want to be as simple as, well, just getting a, a, you know, you fuck up one time and then you go for a second time and you don't fuck up that time. Okay. I, it's getting so broad that I don't even know that we can draw much of anything out of it. Um, which uh, takes us to the credits. Which is, uh, they give you a collection of uh, behind the scenes scenes from... Uh, all of the Fox Universe sort of superhero films. A very broad selection. Uh, mm -hmm. Set to Green Day, <laughs> which was a choice. <laughs> um, yeah. This, not speaking of the music, of course, uh, the scenes themselves were very uh, sort of, I don't know how to put it, there's many feelings were had when watching this, and uh, it crystallized for me when in the selection they play uh, Wolverine in Logan saying uh, this is what it feels like. So, why don't we talk about Logan in relation to this film? Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Um, so, I would absolutely be counted as part of the generation, as several people would, uh, of having grown up with Wolverine and X-Men and stuff. You know, a lot of people did, obviously. I'm squarely in that generation. I was seven when they put out X-Men 1, so it's like perfect timing. And it was amazing. Everyone knows that. First one was awesome, second one was awesome, third one, not so much. No. <laughs> so... Uh, it had some good memes in it, though. <laughs> but uh, I still feel like the... Um, you know, I didn't really want to miss any installment. I was always very interested to see what they would have happen next, because a lot of it was just fucking yeah. stellar. Well, I think it was just because sometimes they'd surprise you. Like, First Class kind of came along, and it's like, hey, this is, like, good. You know? Yeah. After after our Origins and X-Men 3, they'd just occasionally come along and be like, hey, that was I like that. You get ups and downs. Experiments. It was part yeah, of the era of experimentation, right? right? And the, it's a framework for everything to come in a lot of ways, not to exclude, of course, Blade um, and its influence and everything. It's just that X-Men would have changed a lot again. Same with Spider-Man at the time. You know, it's, it's all moving in particular directions. Well, they're the films that paved the way for the MCU. Exactly. You know, the MCU wouldn't have existed if not for those films. So... Uh, when looking at like the attempt reboots, spin-offs, crossovers, desperately trying to find anything that works, and they go all over the place, we have hits and misses, blah blah blah. In, in, the entire continuity of the Fox thing, I, I've talked about how it's kind of funny. In uh, one of the older EFAPs, we talk about the nature of the continuity of the Fox universe being in a complete shambles compared to the MCU, which is quite funny to look back on because now Fox is far more coherent than the MCU. Not even close. Yeah, which pretty funny. Um. Obviously, attaching them at the hip makes the question a lot more complicated, but we'll ignore that for now. Uh, the journey was, like, kind of... is running out of steam, right? When you hit the Wolverine or X-Men apocalypse, you start to wonder exactly what the plan is, because they've not... 
it is like where are we going and what are we doing exactly and the films are starting to get i would say less cultural relevance and a lot more um of people being like are we just sort of well, shooting in the dark are we trying to make something work we don't even know if it will it was like in a sense days of future past felt like a full circle days of future past has got its problems but it's a film that i definitely enjoy uh and it's it, it felt like kind of a full circle moment but then but then they decided well no but we want to continue with we want to keep making x-men films so yeah x-men apocalypse yeah. dark phoenix so, you know they wanted to keep going with that there was um obviously deadpool was happening as well and then logan uh, when um coming along. when logan came out it really felt like the end of the story not just of logan but of the fox universe to some extent we of course got dark phoenix but I would argue that could have been shuffled out at any kind of time. It's not like there was a meta story with that one. It was, it's just not wow, a great that was story. Much a of, it was the ending of the X-Men universe because that was, they'd been bought and it yeah. was over and they were done. Whereas uh, Logan felt much more like uh, the actual ending and Deadpool kind of existing in his own world. Even though yeah, the, that world. And, I, and I appreciate a final attempt at bringing a close as well to what was the um, the reboot universe, because there was four entries to that in total, technically, right? First Class, Days of Future Past, First, Apocalypse, yeah, Dark Phoenix. Apocalypse, Dark That's Phoenix. a lot of stuff. Yeah. You know, so like I, I get that it deserves its final hurrah at an attempt. You know, Dark Phoenix has got his own things. Uh, Logan, having released two years prior, did, you know, it, it, it was something I would still very much appreciate. Uh, how do I put this? Logan... Logan spends the movie surviving, right? It's, it's a thing that a lot of stories have done. Uh, the situation between him and uh, Professor X is horrendous. They're, like, managing to... I think that's captured very well in the film. The way they live is not fucking fun. Both of them seem at their wit's end, and they both recognize the situation as that of they're just trying to stay alive long enough to make enough money to escape the world, almost, right? To get on the uh, the boat. And so when X-23 comes in and gives them both pretty much a nightmare to deal with, you still have the, the she like represents the future of, a, a future they didn't even think was possible. They didn't think that was going to uh, be a potential. I think that's like Professor X is, is so excited about it because of the fact that they both thought that mutants were done, like extinct. Um, yeah. And at a certain point in the story, about halfway through, it, it's pretty clear that Charles... The way he operates in that film is almost like he doesn't want to acknowledge all of the actual incredible crazy danger if it means you can't live, right? We, we've come across stories that it's like surviving and living are two different things. And he says, this is what life looks like. Um, this is what living looks like. It's something like that. He says, uh, this is like living, this having a home. This is what it is, what they have with that family for the brief time they have. And he says, you um, you can still do this. Like it's not it's not over. It's not done. And, and you know, Logan doesn't really take to that at all. He's like, eh. And it's because um, he's become so cynical and jaded, he's like, there's no room for anything close to what Charles is talking about. He's, like, delusional. And, of course, he's got the brain issues anyway, so it's kind of... Uh, melds in. And all he wants to do is just try and make them survive. And by the time you reach the end of the movie, right after Professor X has uh, died, Logan wants to leave once he thinks he's done, pragmatically speaking, everything he needs to with uh, Laura. And he wants to consider whether or not he's going to kill himself, right? That's what he has the adamantium bullet. It's awkward for him to talk about it, but let's be honest, he's gradually poisoned. He's uh, not much to live for, that sort of aspect. There's, there's a lot of discussions to be had. It's, the movie is pretty dark. It's not a happy, happy, happy movie. But by the time you get to the end, I'd say you'd have enough development between him and Laura that he cares about her certainly no less than one might about a daughter because not only about the, the biological... Uh, connection that she very well probably has his DNA to have gotten the particular uh, mutant gene, um, but how much he's had to care about her, and that there's like very few of them even left in the world. It's that sort of story we see it in a lot of things. I believe it's called Wolf and Cub. I keep saying this every time. I haven't actually checked. In any case, connections are drawn pretty quickly when it's stuff like that. Uh, you know, and he sacrifices himself a couple of times until the last one actually takes. Uh, it's not, you can't keep standing in the way of bullets, so to speak, without actually dying. This film is, is like his whole health bar is coming down further and further and further. And there are two lines at the end of Logan as he's dying. He says, so this is what it feels like, this is the second one. And, uh... That one, I think, refers to a lot of what Charles was talking about, right? It's been forever since he's had to... He has a life to live. 
It's always been horror, chaos, death, for the sole reprieve of just going on. But with Laura and the future of the mutants, is a, is a chance to save what the, the dream of like having mutants be able to prosper without getting hunted down in horrible ways and stuff. It's, it's like it's what Charles was talking about the whole time. It's like actually seeing the potential. Especially with, um, what's his name? Doctor something. The, the, the bad guys in that movie, they're all dead at that point. So it's like there's actually a real thing of maybe they can actually live and make a new life, that sort of thing. Um, so future generation of mutants is what I'm getting at. And there's a chance to save what was lost, fight for the living. And in a sense, he's experiencing the feeling of living through, um, dying. It's like he's going to die so that he, he's, he's dying as a result of living. Uh, Logan, he's, he's running out of like his ability to heal and everything else. Cause he's, and he's also kind of relieved about it to have done it in, in aid of bringing something to the potential that, uh, he and Charles both wanted. Which, which makes him feel at home, right? It's the kind of thing that Charles was talking about. He's, he's got lots of closure, lots of love, despite the fact that it's like a horrible scene. And at the same time, I think the line actually refers as well to him feeling what death feels like, because that's not something he would ever have experienced before. So it's like a realization. Um, and he can finally reach it. And in a sense, it's a relief, right? But, it, you know, at the very least, it's new. Um... Very, very meaningful. The former line, however, don't be what they made you, is one that hits particularly hard because I think it summarizes like the whole life that he's had. Uh, obviously, I don't know as much from the source material, but certainly from the films. He's got... Wolverine is one of the people that fights like uh, between good and bad decisions. A lot of the time it can be made out of just not caring or not sure if he wants to move in a particular way. Angry or calm down, that sort of stuff. Um... Countless people trying to push and pull him, you know, like Charles, Magneto, Stryker, everyone is trying to use him for whatever goals they have, ultimately pulling him all over the place, and don't be what they made you could refer not just to the people who put the adamantium in the bones and stuff, but just everybody who ever wants Wolverine slash this mutant that's powerful to be, to represent or to do a particular thing. And so he's tried to live his life evading that and making the choices that he thinks are right or even the ones that just match what he wants but that um now it's the most important thing to express to her to do that as well don't be the horrible monster creature whatever that they make you uh so she's like the next generation brutal upbringing uh, chance to sort of live life with far less influence of the people who would bring her into like a war or something hopefully um and you could say, like, she's truly his daughter in the sense of not just biologically, but the life that she's going to live is so similar to his. And so those two things being the last things that he says, I think are, like, perfect. Like, actually pitch perfect. I wouldn't have changed them for the, anything. Agreed. Uh, possibly the most meaningful scene in, like, all of Fox X-Men. It, it was very impressive. I was, I was, I was, uh, I couldn't stop thinking about everything that it meant, you know? Enough to make a man cry. <clears throat> Logan gets the respectful ending that recognizes and understands like the power of his story throughout all the films, even the shit ones, right? Because you can trace the uh, the storyline, whether they fully connect or not, right? There's, there's issues, but you know he's given great respect as what the impact of those films had on the audience and films that came after them. He was a hero. His time has passed. It was over. Incredibly special. And to close, as you mentioned earlier, on a grave with the cross turning to an X is, I would describe as incredibly... Uh, that is also perfect in terms of iconography. The imagery is amazing. Yeah. I would describe it as incredibly melancholic because it's, it feels tragic, yet entirely warranted and respectful. It's like really yep. sad, but perfect. Right move at the right time, and it ends the story. Don't be what they made you. So, we fast forward to 2024 and we have both Deadpool and Wolverine being made to appear as fucking flanderized clowns that Marvel's forced them to be. We have the foul corporate trash gods doing everything they can to push, pull, tear apart any sense of meaning either of these characters could hold because they're desperate to float a dying franchise with substance that they don't even have any understanding of. They didn't create themselves. They don't fucking know what it is. They are selling the ghost 
of like a bygone era, a world that the best they can do is photocopy it and hold it up and be like, you guys like this? They will go back to the grave, they'll dig up Logan's bones, and with no prompt from any sense of story, they'll actually, like, entertain you by bashing his corpse into the fucking screen. But don't worry, because while pissing over every last literal fucking shred of meaning they could ever have stolen from another artist's work, they will talk about how cringe they are, how disrespectful they are, in order to pander to the ends of the fucking earth to explain to you how weird and fucked up and nonsensical and disrespectful and gross and downright retarded it is to shit down your throat while stapling their assholes to your lips and wolfing down fucking laxatives. Like, it, it's the most nonsense shit. And all to prevent the death of their pathetic failing corpse of a universe. A death they have so thoroughly earned yet thanks to their empire managed to stave off with a literal corpse of beloved heroes Stories being all getting torn to shreds and made into a joke. Logan is back, everyone. He's back. The anchor being is back. The character you know and love so well. Every fucking characteristic down to the actor himself is back. And they'll use him till he's 90. Don't think about what meaning you could draw out of Logan. Doesn't fucking matter. Thank you so much. Let's, uh, enjoy the future. I'm not. I don't like this film. You know what? I understand, and I, I understand where you're coming from because I also don't like this movie. Makes me sad. Makes me a little bit mad. You know that. That visual, that that series of visuals, they, if anything, they belong at the end of Logan, but after a good like minute or so to have taken in what the movie did as a, as a goodbye, it doesn't. They don't fucking deserve to plaster it over this film. It's so embarrassing. It's like get the fuck out of here. Hey, I don't. I can't. You know. You. I just walking away from the film. It's just so. I'm just struck by the cynicism. I suppose what's frustrating, though, is that, you know, it worked. It's making a lot of money. It's really successful. Um, it's... And it, sh it, it really shouldn't... It shouldn't be that this... Um, that, like, this approach to trying to tell a story, revitalize a series, um, like, works. It just, it shouldn't. You remember how, like, they'll make it all of those comments about, yeah, we're not going to disrespect the ending of Logan. We're not going to, um, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to, uh, like, tread all over that. And then the fact that the film actually has him literally dig up his corpse and then use it to kill a bunch of TVA agents. Like, I don't know, man. <laughs> what? what? What's to be made of that? But, oh, it's funny. Look, you did a dance. Look at him go. I just, it's all so superficial and surface level, like this, this film, because uh, uh, Logan I can re-watch and recommend, especially in line with like, a, you, you could have like a watch recommendation for the Fox universe or whatever. But like this, this one, um, the best it has, and this isn't even from people, this is directly from people who love this film. It's like, it's, it's a mess of a film that I have fun with, and you're like, damn man, imagine what this film could have been. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's the frustrating thing is that there should not be you should not have the expectation or the belief that this is the best that you could have expected from a Deadpool and Wolverine team up movie. Um if you had fun, sure. Okay. Um but like why why does that why does that preclude the possibility that there was a better version of this story that existed? That there could have been a better version of this story that was coherent and meaningfully paid respect to its characters. Why is it that this has to be the best that we could have expected? And I don't know, man. I, I, get, I suppose it's just unfortunate, because if someone says that, it's like, okay, I didn't have fun no, watching I didn't it. Either. I, uh, I, I didn't have fun. It was very much a case of just sitting there kind of like, huh, all right. And then, like, as soon as, as soon as you walk out, thinking like, yep, that didn't really follow. That didn't make sense. 
But the thing is, is everybody seems to very much be on board with the idea that the plot doesn't make any sense. It seems like it's a little bit harder to get to the point of accepting that the characters were not treated right. No. Um, that both Deadpool and Wolverine were done a massive disservice by this film. Look, what 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 is what would you what would you point to as a meaningful, substantive point of praise for this film? I'm asking you specifically. <laughs> If if you had to give it your best shot, uh, let's see. It's gonna have to be. I mean, you know, the line um, "he wasn't, he wasn't like the right guy until he was." There's a concept in it. The uh, we were talking about it earlier. I would have loved to have seen in the in the scene itself to talk about. Like I said, to talk about the reality that no one likes to talk about. Which, by the way, I just realized, this is the fucking speech from Far From Home. It's where uh, Spider-Man needs to hear that Iron Man was not perfect. Why Why does everyone think that? He, he was a guy, he was full of flaws, he couldn't live up to the very legend that Iron Man is. If she'd done something like that, explain to him that he must be getting tired of everyone explaining how amazing Logan was, especially with how much he's probably living with, and then to admit that she just doesn't know enough about him, he knew a different Logan, like all of that shit. The scene itself, it's because it's its those two characters, and all they have to say is fucking hello and goodbye, and I'd probably already find the scene meaningful if they act it right. But um, mm -hmm. the line, at the very least, being something that I would like desperately dig for meaning out of, I guess makes the scene, you know, raise up a bit. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that might beat it. Um, I guess, because a lot of people are saying the acting, to which I would say, sure, but I mean, the acting was good in Multiverse of Madness. Like, the acting seems to be something that you can reliably expect to oh, be I thought you were saying, like, a good. writing thing. If it, was, if it was just an aspect I, of filmmaking, yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant, was, the ri was writing. Because, yes, Hugh Jackman was great uh, in delivering some really bad writing, unfortunately. Um... And, I mean, I guess I like some of the music choices, but, I mean, I don't know. Surely we can do better than that. <laughs> like, if we're talking about, you know, substantive praise for the writing. Like, man, I, I really, I really, really, really wanted it to be... I, I, I even clung to the, the the hope of like, oh yeah, but you know, like it's not entirely like a Marvel Studios production because it's got all of the other stuff tied up in it, right? Of like, you know, more producers and um, like production companies and stuff like that, that that would hopefully act as a, a, essentially to counteract what at this point seems to be like a fundamentally deeply ingrained problem with the way that Marvel makes movies. That's the only way that you can explain such a consistent string of terrible films. But the reality is that this film doesn't feel very much out of lockstep with what's um, been released consistently over the last three or four years. No. I don't know, it just, it just seems like it's filled with a lot of the... That if it was... Um, that given time, um, it will be recognized that many of the things in particular that have been singled out as points of praise will be referenced it, um, in the future as being very comparable to the kinds of trends that we saw in a lot of similar, like, big multiverse crossover films that have been released over the last few years. Because a lot of the fundamental building blocks are the same. But how much can you really say, well, yeah, you know, like, this film's got a lot going for it, when the plot, everybody seems to agree, is, like, down to its core, foundationally, completely and utterly broken. Um, and that the characters don't seem to be acting uh, consistently with the way that they were portrayed in their prior stories, which is a huge part of what this film is banking on, is the pre-existing continuity. Um, but the whole point of uh, making a sequel, the whole point of your story being set after another one, is that you accept and get to extract a lot of the material that exists in those prior stories, but you're also bound to what they established about your characters and your world. You don't just get to hit the reset button because you want to pivot away to some other um, set of goals that you have. But like, if you've got a case where the plot is insane, the main characters of the film are acting completely incongruent with, with their fundamental motivations or their prior character arcs, the themes are completely like a mess as a consequence. What, 
what is there aside from essentially very superficial surface level um, uh, points of praise, like about specific bits of iconography that are from the comics or specific music choices or a dance sequence? Never mind all of the damage that's been dealt to the prior canon, because again, it feels like something that's worth emphasizing. When you're watching Logan and you see the end of the film, in the continuity of that world, his corpse gets both metaphorically and figuratively dug up and then thrown at a bunch of the MCU sludge. Oh. Yeah. And as I said, it's deflating. There's, there's nothing we could say to. Uh further push this point to the forefront. Uh, me and Freaky went into this being like, man, this is going to be fun. This is going to be great. That uh, was the hope. The hope was you, at the very least that it would get some laughs out of me. If you, um, if you go to the real BBC coverage of the trailers, you'll see that I'm like trying to defend the movie as being like, this, this looks like it's got potential. We've got some good stuff here. And it's like, yeah, but it's fucking MCU phase five, or whatever. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, look, they're doing, they're going to be using an alternative reality Wolverine that made far worse choices to reflect, like, the opposite of what a Wolverine should be and is, and he's going to have to deal with people who knew a better Wolverine. He's going to create so all kinds of conflict with that, and there's so many options they could take that. And then, you know, like, it is the multiverse. You do have a small spark sometimes of, like, you know... There's no reason they can't have any of these particular characters that we know and love come in and do something really substantive and meaningful and well executed that makes you think, man, that's so cool that they got them to do that. Like, um, I don't really care if I'm on an island with it. It's just, I would rather have not seen Chris Evans reprise his role as the Human Torch if it meant watching him get nut-shotted, back-broken, and then stripped of his skin. <laughs> just, that's just not what I really I want to I'm, see. I was like, okay, well, that's. I that. think something that's uh, making me a little bit upset as well is the realization that um, I don't know, De Deadpool uh one and two in particular, the first Deadpool. I don't know. It seems like it has gone underappreciated, um, in, in terms of in terms of its qualities, um, and and how sound it is, and, and like how you know its success, um. Its success ought to be um, directly attributed to its quality rather than simply it being different than a lot of the superhero films that were coming out at the time. It wasn't just that it had meta humor or that it was edgy uh, or that it made jokes at the expense of and made fun of like trends in, in comic book movies. Deadpool 1 in particular is just a really sound, like, it, it's a really sound movie where they made a lot of really good decisions in terms of how to pace it how to establish the characters, how to balance comedy and drama, um, and that it's really unfortunate that it seems that Deadpool and Wolverine is being viewed as comparable or in line with the thought process and methodology behind the creation of that film, when that is not the case. This film is very much, in many ways, in keeping with MCU Sludge. Has yes. a lot of the same um, tenets of MCU Sludge, unlike the other Deadpool films, which felt like they were actually trying to be unique and provide something unique um, and had thought and care put into, into the crafting of those stories. But you should wholly expect that uh, the wrong lessons will be taken from this film, which is particularly catastrophic when this film has a lot of flaws, a lot more flaws than, um, than No Way Home. Uh, the lesson will be, yes, more multiverse stuff for legacy characters. Find ways to grab them, get them in there. Um, uh, and, and they might even have the lesson of like, yeah, you know, just have a little bit of edge. You know, sometimes the characters say fuck. And maybe there's a little bit of blood. Oh, yeah. That means that we're doing the right thing, right? Hey, X-23 put on her glasses. But yeah. She wore them in Logan, so. Mm-hmm. It is miserable corporate slop, and uh, absolutely every time they release something like this, it means that we could have had something fucking awesome, or even acceptable. Well, now cool. the opportunity is forever gone. There will never be yeah. your first opportunity to have Deadpool and Wolverine team up. Um, that's gone forever. Because if they try to make more Deadpool and Wolverine films as well, strictly from a financial standpoint, I don't see that they 
perform better. You know, it feels like it's definitely got to be a case of diminishing returns because the novelty is gone. That's really a big thing that's helping the film is the novelty of it all. But once that erodes, what's left? In the case of Deadpool, because it had novelty working for it, you had a really cool movie. In the case of this one, you've just got a very, uh, in many ways, very standard Phase 4, Phase 5 movie. Which probably sums it up, eh? Is there anything yeah, else you want to say about this wonderful very, movie? Very, very, very disappointing. So disappointing. Yes. God damn it. Um, obviously won't be ever thinking of this film as canon as Deadpool 1 and 2 and Logan are where the story finishes for both of these guys. Yes, that's <laughs> Especially right. yep. if we're getting Wolverine and Deadpool team up with Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man team up with fucking every other person you could imagine and Robert Downey Jr.'s uh, Iron Man to fight Robert Downey Jr.'s doom. Uh, that's something that Man, I think the Shad critical said mass on... Of sludge. Uh, oh my God. Shad said it on FNT that that's very likely what we should expect is that they will have the RDJ Iron Man fight the RDJ Doom. <laughs> like... Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's actually, yeah, that's not a bad guess. Um, it's just, man. The, isn't that the, the height of it? That's the, the Ouroboros yeah, has reached pretty, critical mass. Absolutely. It's... You thought that it was over? Nope. This film will, will spur them into the belief of, yes, we are making the right decisions. This film's success will make Marvel think, you know what? We're back on track. Brace yourselves for some sludge. Yep. It's um... coming. They got trucks full of it, rolling down the street, ready to blast you with it. Well, and this film's the red carpet, isn't it, for that? It's like, hey, you like this? Well, guess what? We're bringing up fucking everyone. Mm -hmm. We are so all back. Peak characters. fire cooking all day long. Yeah, let's fucking let's go. Let's fucking go. Well, it's probably a good place to wrap. <laughs> Thank you so yeah. much for watching, everybody. Hope you had some fun. This feels like a very, very unpopular perspective, but that's all right. Our main thing is to try and just be honest with you about how we uh, see work, we try and give you all the arguments that we think brought us to that conclusion. We're very much still people who enjoy a lot of where these characters come from, but that uh, don't quite like where they're ending up in uh, a lot of ways, mm -hmm. a lot of these sort of things. Next week on Saturday, since we will be an EFAP ahead for once. Isn't that crazy? Because Hot D Fap's coming out in a couple of days for the next two episodes. Um, we'll be doing... I'll put out the Acolyte Supercut, and then the week after that, we'll have... I think me, Fringy, and Rags will do a live stream possibly just having a chat, possibly doing a catch-up for a particular episode, but we'll be one ahead, one ahead of schedule, so to speak, so we'll just have that stream to tell you guys what's happening, because it'll be a week before the anniversary! which I'm going to have to do a lot of prep for because I haven't actually done anything yet. As well as inviting everyone. But, uh, yes, as for other releases, I'm still going to have to get some War Movie Arc stuff coming out, and uh, work continues on other projects. So thank Indeed. you all very much. Yes, the, the anniversary will be August 24th. We shall see you there. It is expected to be the usual affair. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. You will absolutely get to catching up at another time. Obviously, Rags is not currently with us. Uh, sorry he missed it, but it was a uh, very worthwhile insight from him while he was here. Appreciate the doggo. And, well, um, thank you as well, Bringy. And this, was a, this was a weird EFAP, kind of. <laughs> it was like therapy yeah. somewhat. Um, a little bit. We, uh, so, yeah, with that, we'll say goodbye. Thank you all very much, everybody. And we'll uh, see you next time. See you, everybody. Bye-bye.